Hello and welcome everyone. Week four Overwatch action here at the NECC. It's Chase Nuclear Nukem here once again back on the desk, back from a hiatus. And I'm here with my co-commentator, Berkeley Stevens. As he looks like he's chilling in a lunar colony of sorts. Berkeley, how's it going today? How's it up on the moon? I'm good. I'm your on-field reporter for this game as well as a play-by-play -play commentator. So I'll be right in the thick of the action giving you all the best, Nuke. I'm glad to have you back in the booth. Yeah, I'm I'm elated to be back, man. You know, things get crazy. I'm a little bit of a college student as well. Grad school kind of kicks a little butt, and sometimes you got to take some weeks off. But we're here today for Challengers Division, Yellow specifically, watching some games. We got Arcadian Knights versus Mount Union Varsity Overwatch action. Now, both of these teams in standings are tied in the NECC. Both are 1-1 one, one going into this week. It looks like Arcadia has a one-map differential going into the set, but as I understand, you did a little bit of casting last week on one of these teams. Tell me a little bit about how that went. Yeah, Nuke, Arcadia Knights, the only team so far this season to actually take a map off Champlain College Esports, the current rank one in their division. So that's what I get from these teams. That Yes, they're both one and one, but Arcadia have proven themselves against the team that's right now in week four, still the best. So they've got my eye on them as the favorites in this game, but still one and one early in the season, Mount Union Varsity. They're looking to play confident, play compact, play their game that they have so far this season. Unfortunately, they did lose their most recent game, but they G they beat Johnson and Wales Blue, and that's got a lot of upside to it. Yeah, it definitely does. And in the division, both are top eight. I think right now Arcadia's placed six, and Mount Union is eighth. Um, I did have a chance to chat a little bit with the Mount Union varsity coach uh, before the sets. I believe you you reached out as well. Um, but I, I had asked him, you know, we're mid season. What's the team focus going into this game? And how does it differ from the start of the season? You know, we're a few weeks in now. The focus may change. We may need to be a little bit more adaptive. What's that look like? He said the main focus going into this game, this is Verso specifically, is to keep playing confidently. Trust your teammates and play to our strengths. In the beginning of the season, we were mainly still trying to coalesce as a team, funny choice of words, after a few new players and role swaps. Um, that disequilibrium that you sort of embark on at the beginning of every collegiate season is different from team to team. Even in our teams here at St. Ambrose, we have a half of our roster of freshmen that just came in, and they're finding new ways to fit in with the team. With each university, you're going to see that on a different scale. So I'm eager to see how those role swaps play out going into this map. Yeah, and so much of this season is going to be rebuilding those teams that are coming off rebuilds like of course mount union is and a lot of these teams in this division in particular fall into that category a lot of these high level teams they'll start scrimming with their rosters early but the challengers division yellow these are fresh faces like season in season out so it's always just that game of adaption and making those small adjustments as a coach realizing what your team's strengths are and that's what they're hoping to figure out this week and they're up against a very good opponent again in arcadia where they're going to have to be tested on that. But here we go into our first map of the day, Oasis. Today, we will be playing Oasis, Eichenwald, and Route 66, best of three. But we are, as always, playing all three maps because map differential matters, folks. End of the season, it becomes very important. I've seen so many teams where it just comes down to one map win or loss, and they're out of the playoffs. Well, not even to just mention that, Berkeley, but it's more experience. You're getting that time in game that you desperately need rather than just playing out a you know, a best of three set, playing out all three of those games is vital for some of these teams to get the experience that they need for VOD review. Five, four, three, yeah, that's a good point you bring up. I mean, Arcadia is one of these teams where they'll play this brawl comp with the May and the Reaper a ton tonight. And this is the thing that they scrim on every single time too. So week in, week out, they're going to be improving at just this. Some teams we see flexing on all sorts of heroes. It's really hard to dial in a strat to the point where you're hardly making mistakes if you're kind of going about it that way but now we do see aj going right in against the opposing main tank pluto picking up the kill on anima the first one of the fight getting rid of the main getting rid of the reinhardt as well and aj doing all he can right up front to win the first team fight yeah arcadia recognizing it early though right they're backing up they realize they've not taken point they got the pick so that's much better than getting staggered early especially with these uh, uh, objective control points where you only have a certain amount of time to get there and that clock is running 
Yeah, already up at 10% and the Doomfist just looking for a rollout, running from the Reaper, not quite sure what he was doing there, but now the Brawl is very compact and Mount Union, they do have this stun in the McCree, so Latrick has to be careful engaging on this Reaper not to get flashbanged and then fan the hammer, that's an easy way to just take care of a Brawl comp just with one cooldown, but now it's going to be one ultimate, the Baptiste for Mount Union just creating a ton of space here and they've got so many alts lined up, that Shatter connects as does the grab, they are fully investing here, Nuke. And it's only at 35%, but they want this fight win so bad. Oh. It's still just a four versus four. Full and fat shatters. I mean, that that's what we see all season. It's what we look out for. Uh, this is beautiful. Great team fight from the side of Mount Union University. Arcadia tried to get in as much as they could. They did get a really good play, but ultimately they fought off of point. They weren't really able to get on point. Now they're pushing on, but it's given Mount Union a lot of time to group up. The McCreal's coming out on top, and it is going to take down Crusher. Nemo getting the trade on AJ. Pluto looking for the massive ultimate, the massive shatter, but Latrick's going to get picked, and we're just seeing a lot of back and forth. No one's really able to take point, and Mount Union, like we said earlier, racking up that percent. 73 now. They're fighting on point, and ults are coming out left and right. Yeah, tank ultimate's online, and we do see the grab tossed in by Bubba, but the B-drop, the counter, the shatter though, right over the top, Pluto just making a statement, wants this point bad. Wow, yeah, and Arcadia initially took this fight back off of the point because Union, Mount Union pushed out to them. They got a couple of picks, Mount Union had to overextend to do that, so Arcadia saw their opening, jumped on point, and then won the next fight through a bunch of massive ultimates. And now, actually, if you look at the alt economy for both teams, Arcadia sitting at two ultimates, both aggressive alts with the May ult and the Reaper ult. So they, they, I guess they have the bat field to maybe counter that, but it's Blizz time as it's coming out on point. Latrick trying to get the pick on the bat. He's gonna find it. They're looking to regroup for sure. Yeah, and that's just Mount Union playing their time, right? They've got 90% up on the board, and they know they're closer to the tank ultimates, and I think that's going to be the key decider on this first point. DPS ultimates have made a little bit of an impact here and there, but usually the Baptiste can counter with an immortality field, so Arcadia has to hope for more than that. And right now, if they can hit a big shatter, that would do just the job. Pluto has to play so close up here. Maywell already thrown him, but Nemo already goes down. Pluto just looking for a window here, and he's able to stun three. The Doomfist all coming down, and it's all Phrase in the feed. The McCree with a four-man high noon. 100% phrase in the feed. There was a lot going on there. We saw the ult from Pluto, and that would have been a great engagement had we didn't see Polar come in and really split up the team. Everyone was focused on the Doomfist. That allowed Phrase the time that he needed to get the picks and secure this first point for Mount Union University. That was a massive round. And what Huge. a big shatter and noon combo. Starting things off with a quad kill from a DPS ultimate. Very flashy for the final fight one of the game that really mattered. No touch was able to come in from Arcadia. And like I said, I'm looking at Arcadia as a tough team to beat in this game where both of these teams are one and one. I think they've impressed me the most this season so far. So Mount Union coming out firing like that is huge. Yeah, massive for Mount Union, especially since they're two uh, below them on the scoreboard. They definitely have something to prove going into today's game, and they did that in the first map. They showed that they can keep up the same level of energy and throw out just as much as Arcadia can dish. Now, we are seeing a couple of switches. Tell me, what are your thoughts on Nemo switching over to Hanzo? And we're seeing a bunch of switches over on Mount Union. Frey switching over to the Tracer and Polar switching over to the Pharah. I think Hanzo is a great counter against this Tracer. It's going to take away a lot of what Phrase is able to do on this hero. Latrick does fall early. So that's the Baptiste doing the hit scan work right there. And they've also got a D.Va to deal with Afar as well. So I really do like what I'm seeing from this Arcadia comp. But now Union coming back in with DPS picks of their own. They've got the res off on the Zarya 2. Chief is back in this fight. Now Union might end up taking this first here. And it looks like it will. You know what? I am seeing a lot of really great positioning from Mount Union splitting up Arcadia's team. Right there, we saw uh, the D.Va separate from the Hanzo when the Ferret Pharmacy came in. They really need to group up, especially considering that they had lost three before Mount Union even started fighting on the point. So Mount Union did the same last map with the Doomfist ult, which allowed the McCree to just flourish. I'd love to see Arcadia play a little bit tighter and under the circumstances play around each other a little bit more because Mount Union is quite literally picking them apart. 
Yeah, that's a really good observation. There's just so much head turning going on for Arcadia. They're not sure which way to look, what target to focus at any given time. A Tracer and a Farah can just be so much to deal with as we see Phrase just being a menace in the back line, occupying this pharmacy all the way. But Nemo leads off this fight with a pick with the help of the damage boost from Icy Nim. But it's not going to be enough here. The Diva D Mech scorched by a Fire Strike and Crusher goes down to Polar as well. The Barrage just for a little bit of bonus points, but it comes up empty on kills. And Pluto tries to swing this fight back, but I don't believe it's going to be oh. enough. Is enough to cancel the res. Pluto's starting to make some plays here. His team needs him to make a big one right now. Wow, and he did separate the Zarya from the rest of the team. If they're able to get the Zarya pick up top here, this could swing in the favor of Mount Union pretty, pretty heavily. Looks like they are going to get on point. That's 70%. I don't know, Berkeley. I really feel like Arcadia's got to use these ults to their advantage and get a little bit more value. It feels like they're throwing it out in fights um, just due to the hectic, sporadic uh, nature of the fights themselves. Yeah, that's exactly what that last fight was. Pluto was scrambling from the start right there and just wanted to be the playmaker of that fight in a time where it was just simply too late. He was in a spot where he had to die, had to reset get back with the team. AJ's Shatter comes up empty on kills as well, but it looks like Arcadia is still scrambling to get through this choke. Good on heels coming in. The barrage over the top finds oh. a 3k before being brought down by a tier. Resurrect will get the Reinhardt back in the mix, but AJ is altless, and it looks like Mount Union are finally on the back foot this game. Yeah, getting the res on Latrick as well, who was an MVP and getting three all, or three kills right there. Looks like they're back on point, and Arcadia looking not to give this up without a fight. However, they are going to lose two, both to Polar. Polar, now looking at the back line, going back on point, we are going to see the Diva Bomb come out from Bubba. It's not going to be enough, though. Latrick switching over to the legs to get back to point. The, the fasty runny uh, gets there, not in time. Nemo... We found him once again with that high noon getting a pick to end us out. Mount Union taking that second map as well on Oasis. Yeah, and Mount Union never gave up that point despite being barraged and it hits for a 3k. Like they just fall all the way back, use their full amount of space, and they come right back in the fight. DPS on the far, it gets a massive 2k. And this is the play of the game, of course. Pluto with the shatter. One of the few times this point was able to collect the point, but uh, that's what you have to do on Reinhardt make those big plays. Nuke, we're coming up next on Eichenwald, and it looks like Arcadia has to make a lot of changes. Where should they start? Well, I feel as though when you're playing in different play styles, not I feel, it's an observation, right? When you're under different play styles, whether it be payload or control, your team plays differently. And I've seen that very often, not just with our team, but with other teams in the conference, even, even in casting. So I think... If Arcadia is able to play together better, and if they're able to play around their tank line more when the tank line is creating those opportunities, we saw Pluto get that massive shatter. Had we seen a stun or something come out to really stop um, that Immort field, that would have been huge for the team, and he they could have got it even faster. I think if they're able to play around the payload going into Eichenwald, I think that we're going to see a different Arcadia on this point. There's also a lot of opportunity for booping on uh, especially going from point one to point two in Eichenwald. So maybe we see a little bit of a cheeky ball action. I saw, I saw that they were playing the D.Va. Bubble was on D.Va a little bit. So I'd like to see how they play around the map itself being Eichenwald. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And payload objectives do seem to be their better game modes. That's the map that they took off of Champlain College. Of course, we're going into hybrid next, but once that cart gets moving, that's where this team does start to shine, just keeping that momentum going. But we're going to be going to a short break before Eichenwald, so stick around. <laughs>
All right. I hope you grabbed your popcorn. I hope you use the bathroom. You only had two minutes. We are back in the action. We are ready to go. We got map two. I can walk. Coming to you. Berkeley Stevens, tell me what is true. What is true is that Mount Union looks very tough to beat right now. Their DPS and their tank ultimates are being used together incredibly effectively. And I think even though Arcadia was looking like the favorites to me coming into this game because of how they played against Champlain College, Mount Union seemed to just be so hungry for that win that they've been missing out on in week one that they just powered through control and they're looking to do the same thing here over in Germany. Yeah, over over in Germany in the Eichenwald itself. Going into the rhetoric that we were talking about earlier for Arcadia, we were confused as to what, what the play was, right? And after getting some notes, I, I did get some notes from Bill Rogers, the, the head coach over at, at Arcadia. Uh, genius, genius man. Um, he did say that their main focus this week is synergy. They're working around playing with each other. So even so, I really think this is going to be great VOD material for Arcadia, even looking at the first map in this series, because they're looking to play at a high level and execute the synergy well. I'd love to see them work on that as we progress through the series and see the development take place. But we are going to see Arcadia first on the defense. Mount Union will be on offense. And I know Arcadia's focus this week is on just that togetherness, right? That synergy. But that doesn't always mean six people on your Overwatch team standing in the same general area. <laughs> that could mean three of you team up in one part of the map and three of you try to control another, get that off angle fire going. That's going to make it so Phrase has a more difficult time getting in on those flanks when he has to turn his head both ways and manage 150 HP. Same can be said for Polar on the Farah, not getting as big of that splash damage alt charge on this Farah. Yeah, I, I think that we're seeing a pretty even fight between AJ Man and Pluto as well. Both Ryans getting up in their faces, swinging hard. Same with Chief and Bubba. I will say I'd like to see Bubba as an off tank, you know, turn around a little bit more on the back line and try to save and synergize with that back line. But we are seeing Mount Union push through this first choke very aggressively already at the tower and Pluto doing everything he can to make them back up and push this offense. And you can see Polar with the Mercy damage boost is always going around the different side. So now we're going to see Mount Union push right. Polar's already going to the left. They use the Amplification Matrix, and they're pressuring this pincer right now. Arcadia is forced to do nothing, but Bubba is able to get one pick. But Polar has swooped in. He's fully taken the left side. He is in deep with two picks now. It's a totally even fight here, and Chief is chewing up charge on Zarya, but still this team is getting backed down by Arcadia in just an incredible response, but it doesn't seem like Polar's going to quit. Wow. Wow, and Polar trying to throw out the ultimate to secure the point. Bubba's going to make it back in time. I'm not sure if I can say the rest, say, say the same for the rest of Arcadia as Phrase is going through the craze and hitting Bubba on point, trying to secure this win for Mount Union on this first point. Yeah, that was all Phrase. That was all Polar. I totally support the barrage late in that fight. Please don't all die to this rip tire. Those are two big kills. The point is up ticking. They'll get two ticks. I don't believe there's going to be a touch, but Latrick really tried to make one final stand there with that ultimate. Man, I don't know if this is Overwatch or we're just watching a street fight right now because they are out swinging both teams. There has been less downtime in this set than I think I've seen any other team play at this division. They're just grouping up and fighting constantly. I love to see the scrapping. However, I still feel like we're missing that side of Arcadia that really needs to group up and try to get the picks on Mount Union while also not foregoing picks on their side. Yeah, that is the key here because Polar is always in on these weird angles getting picked. He's got two in this fight. That's a massive boop. Is that Zarya gone? Did Chief just go off the map? Yup, yep. there's the kill from Crusher. So this fight is still very even. Arcadia Knights can use all of this second point. They really don't have to worry too much about stopping the payload here because once you're set up in this castle, it is so hard to dislodge a defense and the payload has to go so far that they really don't have to worry too much about it. And now that they've got two hit scans. Maui Union, for the first time, has to make some switches. This will be, I feel, in the set, one of the best ways to really test their synergy is on this defense, playing around each other on a choke point, right? There's a lot to play around when it comes to synergy on the defense. If someone tries to get the flank, you and maybe one other person needs to turn and try to uh, deal with the flanker. Um, but as of right now, the hard, the hard hold is what they're looking to do. 
Mount Union taking this point together. We're seeing a massive grab come out by Bubba. Crusher responding with an ult of his own. We are going to see Nemo die without able to pop the ult, but coming back up very quickly, looking to get back to point. Kyoba keeping the team alive for Mount Union in retaliation to all of Arcadia's ultimates. Great support there through and through from Mount Union. They had to respond to a Graviton Surge. That's not always easy when you don't have a sound barrier at the ready, but you did have a Rocket Barrage and Polar knew it. That'll take the pressure off right there when you can't peak that amount of damage. They also used that Immortality Field, so they came out of that ultimate with a fantastic response. Now they're holding Frontline trying to do their best because they have to stop Pluto from getting back out here. And the touch is going to actually not make it through, but ultimates are still being let loose. This is a massive overinvestment immediately from Arcadia, even if the payload is halted. I mean, without a touch there, that is just too little, too late, or in this case, way too much, way too late. Yeah, the pacing from Arcadia, maybe that goes into their synergy that they're working on, but I feel like the pacing is off a little bit. They need to be a bit quicker to the touch on that. Otherwise, it's all for naught. Like you said, they've already made the push. They've already gone in. What is there else to do but, you know, group back up and take it again? Yeah, I mean, it is going to force Mount Union to come all the way through this third point. The Graviton Surge is going to open things up here. Still need some damage before the Barrage is ready, but it's going to be huge. That's at least four down due to that ultimate, and they should easily roll into these last couple of kills. The payload rounds its final corner and heads toward the finish line. Call him Polar, because that was ice cold. Immediately off the Graviton Surge, going for the Barrage. That was massive from Polar. And may secure the map. Never mind, 0.6 meters left. They're getting back. Latric with one HP. The Mad Lad himself trying to get picks on the point. They're going to get some stuns, get some kills on point, swinging around Polar, taking it off of Crusher. And that is going to be the push from Mount Union with three minutes and three seconds left on the clock. Yeah, that is huge from Mount Union. I mean, the best stops came through for Arcadia on first point and second point once they controlled that castle. But on third point, you can tell not really sure where the best place to stand is there. They just kind of got rolled over by those ultimates. Not a good look either when you overinvest so many ultimates. Just trying to get back out and contest when it doesn't come through. That's just such a heartbreaker. That map really did not go their way. It's going to take a huge effort on attack to come up to something of that time bank from Mount Union. Yeah, they really had credited um, all of their defense to trying to defend at the beginning of that third point, the end of the second point, right before the touch. Due to that, Arcadia did not have very many ultimates to defend with. Mount Union, their ult economy has been on point in this series. They've only used, it feels like what they've needed. At the end of fights, I even look over at their team. Phrase and Polar will hold one of their ults and wait to pair it up with um, a, a grab or a shatter. Something big whenever the tanks, the frontliners who more consistently are going to get their ultimates because they're on that front line, they wait for those opportunities. So now we're going to see Mount Union on defense. Arcadia. Arcadia on the offense. Arcadia doesn't look like they're switching up very much about the comp. I actually take that back. We're seeing Nemo switch over to the Reaper and Latrix switch back to over to the McCree. On the Mount Union side, we're seeing the Chief himself switch over, or themselves switch over to the Orisa. So I, I'm interested to see how that plays on this defense with the double shield. Yeah, that's an interesting switch for Chief there, but you can really just back up and keep the pressure on with Orisa, so I do like that look of it. I think he'll be charging the Superchargers pretty quickly on the defense, just has to be careful not to overstep his bounds here, because Pluto is going to come up swinging every fight. Like you said earlier, Nuke, these teams are making power plays with every single team fight. Yeah, and Chief becoming very low. We're seeing uh, a tier 3 sub become very quintessential for this team as he threw up the bat field uh, in every instance he could. Latrick getting the pick on Kyoba in the back line, taking out the Mercy. That's going to be one of the main healers for the point, and this is where Arcadia should find their push. Yeah, they're taking a long time to get back in there, though. It looks like Latrick gave him an advantage, but now they're just pressured equally again at the choke. And Latrick actually falls. Now without a hit scan, Arcadia is going to have so much trouble dealing with Polar, who has that barrage online. They're doing the smart thing here and backing up. Yeah, they kind of have to. Even though they got the pick on Kyoba and it was the opportunity to go in, they really don't have the resources to be able to commit right now. F sitting at three ultimates, though, Mount Union only has two. They're going to have four or five coming up in a second. Arcadia needs to capitalize on the situation. Polar Ice Cold with the barrage in the back line. Take
taking out three on the side of Arcadia, and that's all she wrote is that is it, Chief. Rolling in, taking out Pluto and Bubba. That was a massive pull from Chief as well. That pull was as good as a Graviton Surge would have been. And right in the center of the choke, they just killed so much clock on Arcadia's first attack. They are still working with over two minutes, and they've got a full alt cycle about to be online in this fight. Latrick, though, falls early again. That is not what you want to see out of this team. It might be time where Bubba ditches the Zarya after this grab and goes on to the D.Va because Matrix could really help them get through these chokes. Right now, Mount Union just keeping the pressure on. They come through with two more picks in this fight, and that fully sends back Arcadia. A lot of this backline pressure is coming from Polar. I mean, look at everyone else. Sure, they have their ultimates. Polar doesn't. But Polar's at 70% and has already used the ult, I think, twice on this point, if not once. So... Polar just picking apart the backline for Arcadia. Look at that, even separating the team and killing Latrick on the push. Arcadia is in a comparable position. Mount Union recognizes the Shatter's coming through, the Arisa Bongo's coming through, and they are pushing through only using two of their ultimates. Yeah, that was massive. Uh, no, they used, they used three. Supercharger was still going there. But, okay, three ultimates three, sure. on the board from Mount Union. We are coming up on the full six, finally, for Arcadia. They have to be able to get something done with this because this is truly their last hope. I know there's a minute to go here, but this fight is it. This is the most crucial one. You can't drop a member early. You have to start this fight with an ultimate. Yep, and they're looking to do that. They tried to grab Shatter at the same time. Polar coming in the back line, taking out two. We're seeing the phrase craze come in as well, taking out two of his own. And Mount Union, between everyone on the team, the synergy that's coming through, it feels almost as though they are baiting Arcadia into these traps where they are predicting the ultimates coming out from Arcadia and retaliating with nothing short of aggression. They are taking them out and picking them apart piece by piece when they're looking for it. And now, similar to Disney and Pixar, we're about to play Finding Nemo in the back line. Looking for the die, 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 the Reaper all Death Blossom coming out, taking two. Is that going to be enough to secure the point for Arcadia? It looks like not. They did not have the resources to stay alive. And now they just find themselves with the Lucio, who was taken out by the Phrase Craze. Arcadia go down 2-0 here to start the game. So Mount Union will pick up the win here, but we are going to go... Go to Route 66. Right now, Mount Union, as a one and one team, they're looking like world beaters for this division because this guy right here, Polar, is making his presence felt every single map on the far in particular. This is the Hulk play. It's got to be just so beautiful. That is playing together. It's only two players, but that is a team play. Like, that is as good of an effort as six people can do. That's also smart how they played that because the Mercy was not attached to the Pharah and the Pharah was hiding up top, right? So they couldn't see where the Pharah was. They had no idea. And so when they pushed in thinking that they were safe because there was no Pharah, that's when the Pharah came around the backside and Polar hit him with the ice cold barrage. That was a great point from Mount Union. We started to see Arcadia pull it a little bit together at the end. However, they waited too long with their alt economy. They tried to use it all at the same time, and unfortunately, it was too readable, too predictable. Mount Union saw it coming, had the retaliation in order, and just smacked them back. Yeah, and they've done so well at that this entire game. Even if they go down two players, they're not afraid of just staying in the fight, backing up, using their space. If anything, maybe getting an extra ultimate out of Arcadia here and there, but they will just use all their space, all their distance that the map gives them, come back and hammer the fight. And Polar, sometimes the DPS that hangs back, the Farah, comes right in over top with big barrages like that. But Nuke, we're going to be going to Route 66 in just a couple minutes. So chat, make sure you stick around.
And we're swinging back into the action. We have game three on lock. Tell me, Berkeley, what are we going into? What are we going to see? What is the hope for Man. Arcadia? What do they have to do going into this game? You are so excited for this map. And let me tell you, if it is anything like Eichenwald, bring it down a notch. All right, because Arcadia, they have proven themselves in this season to be a very good team. They have played some of their best Overwatch very recently. Tonight has not been it. They've got to just simply at this point, start by answering the Fara. If it looks like Mount Union chooses to run that again, go at it with more than one hit scan because that Fara does get a pocket. That's a full-time second teammate dedicated to that DPS. You can't expect a McCree to get it done all on his own. So I feel bad for Latrick in this game that he's been like bearing the brunt of that task. Yeah, it's been very unfortunate from the side of Arcadia. They have gotten a lot of the picks that they've been looking for. We were talking a little bit off break, but it's not mattered because by the time they get the picks, the team is dead. Everyone's gone. And and Mount Union is literally just wiping their hands in the background. So as we go into Route 66, we're going to see a little bit more um, of a controlled... I would say choke points even more so than we would see on Eichenwald. I'm excited to see how Arcadia has taken this break and jump back into it. I've seen teams come around in a split second. All they need is their hype man, take a deep breath, and focus on that mental to jump back in. Maybe that's all they need in this short break and intermission. But we're only gonna time was only gonna tell. We are seeing a little bit of a comp change from Mount Union. The DPS here really flexing their capabilities as we're seeing Polar switch over to the Genji. Phrase is once again going to be on the McCree. And then over on Arcadia's side, where Captain Nemo himself switching back over to the Hanzo. Latrick staying on the soldier. Like you said earlier, Latrick finding a lot of value on the soldier. Do you think it's gonna be enough for this defense? I think they were fully expecting to see a Farah out of the gate here. At some point, they would have had to adjust it anyway. Right now, I'm looking at Polar. That's a very confident pick on Genji. And currently, it looks great to deal with a Hanzo and a Soldier. That is a fantastic counter. Totally skill-based, but Polar has already proven in this lobby that he's got the hot hand. So if he can make this DPS work, he's got the mana boost to combo with his ultimate. This could be fierce from Mount Union. Arcadia might not be ready for it. You're 100% right. Fierce, I believe, indeed. Mount Union holding this top choke, trying to get a pick on this uh, on this Mercy for Ice. Not finding it quite yet, but Arcadia giving up a lot of space on top of this gas station. They haven't dropped quite yet, which is a bit surprising, and they're allowing Mount Union the space that they need to get in. As they try to push in, even as I say that, Nemo taking out Polar. Polar's going to be able to get back pretty quickly, though, and now we just have the tank and support line on Palo. Yeah, and they managed to get a great pick there onto Latrick, so high ground presence takes a big hit. The Resurrect does come through, but Nemo goes down as well, so really that DPS is still negated. We are seeing a good push come through from Mount Union here. They almost have this nano boost online. They should get at this fight, but it looks like the tanks up in the front line are doing all the cleanup work they need to. They're not even going to have to use any ultimates to get this point. I would even argue that these tanks are going a little bit past the front line. We're seeing Chief a lot just push through. Everyone's trying to focus AJ because he's just a menace in the front. Chief is able to push through and get a lot of pressure in on Crusher and Ice Nim. And that's a lot for Arcadia to deal with when you have a Zarya in your back line and your front line's preoccupied. Yeah, Chief has been just making the stay up in the very front of this point right there with aj the whole time but always having a ton of charge in these fights and i like what phrase is doing this is what off angling looks like here but it's it's gonna bite him in the behind or it should he should get chased out and killed there i'm still so interested to see what on earth happened with phrase that he got away from that but polar will end up going down with the dragon blade i'd like to see this team come back in with a nano blade if they're able to win this fight some other way right here that's phenomenal and two headshots talk about phenomenal phrase he somehow makes it out of that terrible situation he was in gets back up on the same high ground and now he's got it under control he just has the second point under control and they are trying to push through doing what they can phrase with these gnarly angles, man, he is finding the best angles for Arcadia. And just like we said earlier, a complete menace to the team. And Mountain Union pushing up pretty clearly. They're going to have the same issue that they did last time. That is Arcadia. They're not going to be able to get to point in time. Let's hope we don't, don't see a repeat of what we saw on Eichenwald. And Mountain Union pushes this through to the end. I think Arcadia has enough alts here. They can pair one or two together. 
you know, pair that flux with the dragons, get a lot of value here and still have some ultimates for the push. And the flux comes in to lead it off. Arcadia have to make a hold here. AJ almost had the shatter online and no shield in the way, but he does go down. Polar's Dragon Blade comes loose, but no Nano to follow it up. And right now he's just swinging on a Roadhog, trying to cut him down, but like a sturdy oak, Bubba makes it out alive. <laughs> and now we're going to see the field come up. Nemo, that if you see a Hanzo behind a bat field, that's a bad time. You need to reposition and get out of there. Um, Arcadia holding this defense, however, they did have to use a lot of ultimates to get there. Phrase, we're seeing the Widowmaker all come out. Bubba trying to get a pull, but A tier 3 sub gonna take him out with the Ancy. And the massive grab coming out from Chief. And the Polar's diving through back and forth on the front line with AJ Man. This may be all she wrote for Arcadia as Mount Union is just rolling through this push. Yeah, and Polar looking so clean on the Genji here with those dash resets through the grab. That's enough of a combo you're going to need for that. AJ lays down the shatter early in this fight just to make sure that Arcadia comes out staggered and Freyus has already hit two headshots as I'm speaking. This team is so oh. mechanically talented on DPS. They're all brought down by the Flux, but no kills finished off. AJ does go down though, so the front line. They're going to be weak to end this game. It's going to be up to huge plays out of the DPS, like that headshot from Phrase for them to win the fight. And now we're seeing the blade coming out from Latrick, and this will deal with at least one of the DPS. Cutting down Phrase, trying to do more. His team follows up with kills, and the payload will stay right here. Wait a minute. Whoa, wait whoa, whoa, a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Remix, two, record scratch. Three. Look at this man go get him to an infirmary. He is sick, and he has an arrow in the head. That is too bad. That is just too bad. This is so much back and forth actioning happening on the point. Crusher trying to get back to point, gonna find it. And I don't think Kyopa's died once, been here the entire time and been saved by Chief. And a lot of this point, Bubba switching over to the ball, trying to get the rollout on point and get as much time stopped as possible. They have three minutes to hold. And that is a lot of time for Arcadia to try to push Mount Union off of this point. Yeah, this is a massive stall fest we're seeing from the defense. They've done a great job just to get it going this far because that has looked dicey all the way. I see them is brought down there with the Ana and the help of the Lucio. Polar finds another pick in this fight. Crusher gets in the mix as well. And this team is just trying to pounce on anything that touches foot on the point. And they're able to finally desuit this Diva, but not before another two members of Arcadia get back in the mix. And finally, it seems like the stall fest might be over. Nope. Right as I say it, the Wrecking Ball, the Lucio, the Moira, everyone is just back out. This team has no foot in them, but with two minutes on the clock, it looks mm. like Mount Union just puts an end to their suffering. Yeah, by the end, Arcadia had switched over to an entirely dive composition, really trying to hold on to point as much as possible and play around point. You know, when you have a ball and a Lucio stalling on point, that's the worst case scenario. That is that is frustrating to all end because they're on either side of the point. You can only deal with one at a time, right? But Mountain Union doing it expertly. I will say Arcadia did get a solid minute and 20 seconds out of that hold at the very end. We'll see if it'll do them any justice as they switch over to offense it's got to be tough mount union look good on everything they've played so far so at the beginning i was talking about arcadia making adjustments to mount union strategy but it looks like mount union can just play overwatch around that all night long comfortably so we're going to see them again set up on a similar comp as they did on eichenwald with chief switching over to the orisa for a little more staying power but Polar still bringing the firepower, this time not from the skies. Sticking with that Genji pick, trying to make it work. And I would say he's done a fantastic job doing so. I got to say, if you throw down the Arisa Bongos, you throw down the, the Mercy uh, uh, power spike, right? And you throw, uh, <laughs> you throw the Nano on the Genji, every swing is going to be detrimental to Arcadia Knights if they decide to pair that that way. And it looks like they will if they're playing around their DPS on defense. I was skeptical at first seeing Chief switch over to the Arisa, uh, especially on the Icon Wall play, but that added a lot of value for Mount Union. So I'm interested to see how they're able to hold this very oppressive choke point here on Route 66. 
I mean, we can already see how they're gonna hold it. Tanks down low, not even letting this payload go under the catwalk and the DPS off angling from up top. Phrase gets the damage boost in this situation and he's already gotten two picks, landing those Peacekeeper headshots left and right and Polar there with some Ooh. insane timing to finish off those critical members. We're playing Overwatch and Phrase is over here playing Valorant with the off angles and the headshots, looking for everything he can to add value as a McCree player. And that's how you should play. That is, that is uh, to a T, the Mount Union DPS is adding a lot of value for their team. That's not to say any detriment to the Arcadia Knights. They are giving it all that they have and they are getting very good picks that it's just not enough for this Mount Union squad. Yeah, they made a couple of changes here. Pluto over to the Sigma just so he can put some firepower in on those members up top off angling. And we do see Nemo fairly able to get out right there. Latrick going up to the high ground like he needs to. Trying to take control of this valuable space. Praise already leads the fight off with a kill with the high noon. And now the duels are going in right up against the Zarya. Landing the headshots on the shurikens. And now just trying to close out as many kills as he can. Taking the duel with Latrick as well with success. Wow. Look at... Polar. I, I love watching Polar shift his angles here and shift um, his levels. He's going up and down, making it look like and appear like he's disengaging and then immediately re-engaging. Re he took out Bubba and Latrick at, in the same breath on that up top defense. That was a great play for Mount Union and now sitting at three ultimates, four ultimates, I apologize, on their side. Arcadia gonna look to get some poke out here, get some ultimates. We're seeing Pluto switch again, this time over to the Winston. Polar getting to him immediately off the rip and now swinging through the entire back line of Arcadian Knights. We're seeing this Genji pull the most ninja tricks I've seen all season. Yeah, I mean, he is playing with all the confidence he's built up for himself after those first two maps. He's got no reason to pull back on the throttle, just keep the spawn hold going as long as they can. The team knew, right, that Arcadia just switched their comp completely over to this dive, so they don't have any alts, anything in the way to stop Polar. And the dive is good for control points. I don't know how I like it on this payload style map, but when you're in the moment and you have to play adaptively and react to whatever they're throwing at you, maybe this is the answer that they're finding. However, they are playing directly into an Arisa that's just gonna stop them in their tracks. Pluto just jumped up to the skybox right there. Mount Union just shot him all the way. That was really, really painful for the Winston player from Arcadia right there, just going up and taking as much damage as you killed on the way down. Arcadia will be coming up on some ultimates here. I like icing them coming online with the Valkyrie ult because that that gets them through the fight. That should sustain them for a bit. Polar's gonna have this blade online. Hopefully it's enough heals to get them through, but they've got to start the fight with that ultimate and then just go in swinging while they have the support. Completely agree, completely agree. I, I, I... I'm interested to see how that works out because now they have both of their support alts. They could add a lot of sustain, which is what we've seen from Arcadia. The massive sleep coming out from Crusher onto Frey's. Frey is going to go nine night The Shatter coming out from AJ, man, getting a little bit of a push-up, trying to create space in between the Arcadia players to halt this push. Now Union just come right back in with the ultimates. Latrick will have the blade, as will Polar. We'll see which one sharper, which one gets the nano, if any. The Arcadia Genji goes up and into the back line. The Supercharger gets cut down immediately. Has to deal with the McCree, able to, going back in, but for no more kills. Instead, brought down by the blade of Polar, and he puts it away as his team looks to win this fight in overtime. They've got three up on the board, holding them to first point again. Pluto trying to make a say with his Primal Rage, but it might be too little too late. Mount Union, with the picks from their Ana player, come through, and they look to win this fight. Three picks, and two of them, two of them were just swinging. That grandma know how to swing that fist, man. Taking out two on Mount Union's team. What a play from Mount Union. Mount Union, just, um, uh, I'm speechless. Great plays today. They played around each other really well. Is this what we're going to see at the end? Is this a tier three subs play? I think it is. I've never see seen it on a play of the game for NECC. Coming in, punch. hits a huge a anti. Punch. Oh, Mike Tyson, give him a ring. This guy's your next. Your next apprentice, I love that. The read, did you see the read on that tracer? That was wild. A, a tier three sub, honestly, you're tier one in my book, friend. Tier one, hands down. Yeah, that was a great play just to end the game. And that's probably how it felt like Arcadia just getting beat up a little tonight. That was not the night they were hoping to have. Again, 
from the start of the game, even through map one, I viewed them as a very strong team in this game, but Mount Union came to play tonight, Nuke. Yeah, they did. Mount Union just oppressive all around at not uh, even allowing any of Arcadia to get that first point. They held them at that choke the entire time. Um, we're seeing the defense, I, I think, is the strong suit, definitely, from Mount Union, not allowing really any budging room from Arcadia. Uh, their offense, Arcadia was able to hold them a couple of times on that defense um, a, a few times, but that offense is, is, is wild. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. Mount Union holding them to two first chokes in a row and winning control two to nothing. That was about as dominant as you could be in a night of NECC Overwatch. Nuke, player of the game, we're probably in pretty good agreement here. I'm going to go with Polar, but I want to know if you had someone else in mind. Um, You know, I would have to go with Polar across all three maps. I, I think it was definitely Polar um, creating a lot of value on that Farah and separating the team. The thing with playing around synergy right is you have to be together to play synergized or at least be able to coordinate and if you have a Farah barraging your backline or booping the team apart like we saw a few times that's really hard because now we're seeing them create space and de-synergize the entire team arcadia just un unfortunately was not able to bounce back when those situations happened and adapt to what happened yeah all night your, your like thoughts with polar mount yeah, Polar, definitely. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to get on the bouncing back point because that was something I think Mount Union as a team did insanely well throughout the night. They would go down in a fight. They would get two picks taken off or at one point on Oasis, a three-man barrage when they're at 99% to open a fight. And then Mount Union come back in and they're able to win a fight like that where you're only down to half your team. They played so well. They used the momentum of the map of the game modes perfectly tonight. Not just that, my final point that I'll say is I really felt like it came down to alt tracking. And, and that's something that you wouldn't really talk about on the front lines because it's not something that you see to be very apparent. But it seemed like Mount Union always knew when Arcadia had alts and what alts they were trying to use. So defensively and adaptively, they were able to react on the spot and get a lot more value off of their barrages and off of their shatters because they saw Arcadia trying to fish for the plays. Yeah, so if you had to give Arcadia advice going into next week, you're a coach, you're a program director, what piece of advice would you give them? Um, I think that they have a, a wonderful coach with Bill Rogers over there. If I were to say anything just off of my assessment, watching tonight, casting tonight, I really think that they need to do splits with their team. You know, 2-2 two, two splits, 3-3 three, three splits um, with their comps to make sure that they're getting that synergy down. You can get a lot of value out of playing ranked or even casual games if you have a focus going into it of trying to synergize plays. You know, when you first start out playing, say, a hog Arisa, right, and you get the Arisa pull into the hog hook, you may need to count it off a few times three two one pull three two one hook but eventually as you begin to play and synergize with your other tank just in a, as an example um you're able to get that timing down because you know exactly when they're going to do it i think that that's exactly what arcadia needs if they're able to lock in that two and three synergy that they desperately need they won't need to play around the full team when the genji's in the back line or when the fair is up top they just need two to three to take it out and pick it apart yeah, that's a great point. We were talking about that earlier on Route 66 as well, right at the start. And I think another thing they could do just to adjust their brawl comp is either learn a brawl with either a D.Va or a Brig. Those are two completely different looks you can give your brawl comp where you've got that threat of taking to the skies, of challenging a DPS that is just controlling flanks. It really just turns the tide of a game. If you're playing Zarya, they can really just get in behind your team or over top in the skies if you've only got a hit scan. So... Learning a new variation of Brawl Comp tank-wise, I think, is another good look for this team. But, Nuke, I do believe that is all for us. Where can the beautiful people watching this find you on Twitter? Find me on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Chase Newcomb, C-H-A-S-E in the U-K-A-M. Check out my website, www.chasenewcomb.com. <laughs> Berkeley Stevens, tell me, where can we find you? All right, well, I wish I was on your website. Um. Kind of sad that I'm not after all this time together, Nuke. But you can find me on Twitter at alt underscore charge. And up next, chat, we've got Blue Gold Esports B versus Rio Grande Red Storm. So stick around for match number two.
What is up, friends, and welcome to week four of NECC Overwatch. My name is Bull Skunk, alongside Infernosis, and uh, we're here to guide you through some collegiate action, our first game of the day. We've got Blue Gold taking on Rio Grande. Yeah, I'm really excited for these two rosters. They're both in this Navigators of Engine under Cyan, and uh, they've set themselves up. Unfortunately, haven't found the most success so far here, Bull Skunk, and that's kind of been a little unfortunate for them, both of them with a record of one and two. Though we do see in week one, that was the last time Blue Gold managed to win. Otherwise, for Rio Grande, they managed to take it in their last victory, but it was unfortunately a forfeit, so they haven't really had a victory while actually playing just yet. And so you don't get that typical momentum, right? You know, if you're coming off of a, of a big heartfelt win uh, from week three, maybe you carry that into week four. But with a forfeit, it's almost like you you lose some of that rhythm that you might have gotten into. So it's yeah, both these teams looking to kind of bounce back here as we approach the midway point in the season. Yeah, we'll have to see how it necessarily pans out, obviously, with big losses on their board. They're also going to have some couple things to think about in terms of changing things up. Do they bring in some of their subs to play in instead? Maybe there's some miscalculations. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I think these two rosters are here to have some fun, here to play, and here to play competitively as well. Getting officially ready to go, and we will start to see these heroes get picked up. Of course, here in the Navigators Division, when we're looking for comfort. We're, we're looking for synergy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be spot on with the meta if it's something that these teams are familiar with running and, and can find their groove in. I mean, like, that's, you speak to that. You, you, you're good at rush, I and mean, we're seeing a little bit of the Cowboy and the May right now for both sides. Uh, so this is going to be some methodical gameplay. It's be all about coordinating the May walls and finding the yeah, you see them start to rush towards the center. Be dangerous. You're going to see both sides look to maybe contend towards the outer edges first. Typically, high ground will be taken, but they'll take the short ground instead. Be able to keep that Reinhardt shield up, keep the damage off of them, but the May Wall will separate the distance and force Raspberry to have to step forward and actually go into the melee brawl in the center stand. Yeah, it was a great wall from MX Thick. Zappy lucky to get out of there, but the shields are broken. Raspberry taking so much damage, though, Blue Gold can't pursue on the lost shield from Zappy as we get a little tiny overwatch with both my walls up, both Reinhardt's going in swinging. Give me a plus one to blue goal as they push the advantage. GS Morrison able to pick up a pair, a pair of key picks and they pick up control of this objective as well. And yeah, take control is very important. You'll see Cowboy looking to get some more stuns out. He's trying to escape, but Gold Assassin's not going to be able to do so. And we forced away. Bad position to play in. Now they're going to have a staggered spawn. And it's going to be up to Blue Gold now to play a little bit more aggressively. They can hold this front round, eat up some of these fire charges you see tossed forward, and it'll allow for them to charge up some of their ultimates. But GS Morrison having their ultimate as well, the high noon ready to go. They'll take the high ground. Now looking for an option to keep them at bay, but you'll also have that mail go down. That spot to be in the blizzard, very dangerous to continue with. Yeah, and Rickster just now getting the sound barrier online. Fortunately, Blue Gold mostly able to kite out from that blizzard in the response from Jess Morrison. Again, opening the fight off strong. Uh, and Raspberry doing the same. Throws down the shatter, laying waste to Rio Grande. And this is going to be another fight cleanup. They're going to continue to build percentage and find some exit picks. Next thing has been spectacular with the walls this entire time here, and you can only imagine it's going to continue with their great way that they stagger the opposition. Rio Grande are in a bad spot. They need to make sure that when they engage into this objective, they're making sure they're not wasting ultimates in the process, and each and every single one of their picks will actually go through and be fruitful, and that's been a bit of a problem for them because they're not able to find picks whatsoever. They're going to separate. May Wall will go down. They're going to step around the outside edge or maybe even wait for the middle stage to start in for an aggressive stance, and Assassin's looking to go for the stun. Will hit, but no one's really there to back up, and another Blizzard drops immediately drop on the, drop the beat keeping the hp up not gonna matter like you said eating immediately yeah goals johnny on the spot that was step one out of the way but they still have to find those picks you were talking about and nobody can seem to get past the peacekeeper of gs morrison zappy tried to respond what a wall denies the charge nevertheless we able to pick up one and morrison is finally out of the hair royal grand they got the raid boss off the battlefield they've got to get this thing flipped soon though that's about to be in Max is trying to look for an option and continuously freezing out the opposition's D.Va. Ghoul will eventually be d and they're going to buy their time taking and reading them out, but they're still going to live. An entirely bad position for him. Mech back in play. Focus will get a D.Va bomb off, though. It's going to take out one of the opposition. Now going to dive in to get some damage off, remove and stagger some of these last few players, but it's overtime, and each and every kill is quite fruitful, and everything starts to matter. Zavi's made back to the fight. Aragorn was able to get that blizzard down, but it wasn't able to really find a whole lot with it. Right now, Zappy's just trying to hang on for dear life, but Logos has just been ravaging the lines of Rio Grande, and it's going to close out 100-0. to zero. 
Very strong showing for blue gold here in our opening round of the day. Round one was an extremely strong performance from them. They held on and started to get a little bit dire there towards the end round end where uh, managed to keep themselves alive for a pretty good period of time, but uh, spawn stagger like we've talked about, and you're kind of in a bad spot where you're forced to just play for time, and no one's able to really come back and make a big enough difference to give you a chance to actually play against that. At that point in time, maybe just kind of think about what you need to do here on this second point, and figure out what exactly is going to work out for you. You do see some changes go through. Theory will pick up an Ana, Azura's going to switch to the Baptiste. Maybe that'll be enough to get the job done. I will tell, but the side of Rio Grande, this round is make it or break it. Uh, I worry without the speed that Zappy and company are, are just going to be at an automatic disadvantage. Blue Gold are going to be able to race to this point, set up exactly where they want and control the important parts of this garden's map. Uh, we do have thick going on over the tracer, so you don't have the Maywalls to worry about anymore. Uh, dueling the newly swapped Agrigorn, who is on the Soldier 76. And you can see right here, Blue Gold has the positioning. They've moved up to the high ground. Now they get to choose when they want to drop down and engage. Like Jim Morrison, who was lethal in there in the first sub map, can just sit up here and freely raid down shots. Ryo Grand have no room to work. Bad spot to be in. Ryo Grand are able to hold on to their lives for a little bit, but once Blue Gold drops, which you've seen them do, it's just going to be pushed off site, forced to fight in a back position, and it will be the final side of Blue Gold that gets control of the objective first. Now Ryo Grand's going to have to think about what they need to do next. You do have some ultimates that may near their stage. Azura's looking to get that garage door up. He'll be trying to assist his team with a little bit of extra damage, but it's not really coming through just yet as no picks for either side are officially going off until just now. The nice melee one-two punch on the MX Thick. Raspberry follows suit with their own fire charge, but Still, better position for Ryo Grand because they just found a second off Gold Assassin. Yeah, Blue Gold were able to get aggressive in the back of that. Gold Assassin made a pay for it a little bit. And now here comes that Ant Matrix we are talking about, but it gets misplaced. The stairs kind of threw Azura off and she just throws it way too deep. And they're not able to find any value off of that one. All the while, Blue Gold are sitting here building up percentage and they're going to have ult of their own to work with. Rickster's out of the fight, but Blue Gold don't really need the speed at this point. They're going to throw down the Shatter. They're going to throw down an Ant Matrix of their own. And despite the early picks from Aggregorn, Blue Gold are starting to light this up now. Gold Assassin's able to get one. Is somehow surviving with one tick of health. MX able to finish off Assassin. And Blue Gold, it's, and the trades go back and forth. MX Thick, the difference maker with the Pulse Bob, finds the auto, finds the right heart, finds the Baptiste on top of the previous finish. MX Thick with a great engagement there. How many times are we going to talk about MX Thick here, Bo? I mean, when you're talking about the fact that they're playing on May early with their phenomenal May walls, now the Pulse Bomb able to clean up the last few players that were trying to stagger away from the site. Ryo Grand have their money cut out for them to try and deal with not just Blue Gold as a whole, but MX Thick's DPS potential. And Blue Gold are just going to step back up on the high ground. They know what they need to do. They're going to step back up, keep themselves in good position. There's a couple ults ready for Ryo Grand to work with, but first and foremost, to actually be able to contend and use those, especially that Reinhardt Shatter. They're going to force them out the high ground. They'll do just that with a very sick successful diva bomb as it takes out raspberry no reinhardt left for blue gold yeah the immortality field comes in a split second too late uh it may not matter in the end zappy's trying to throw down a shatter but they just cannot whittle through this line the firepower coming out of blue gold is way too much dealing with every single member of rio grand as they try to make their way onto the objective now the dead eye coming out breaks zappy shield and Logos and Rix will break Zappy's spirit as Ryo Grand will fall to a second 100 to zero, dropping Oasis. Blue Gold going up 1 0 in the series. Now we're going to see how Iconwall necessarily pans out for him. Blue Gold have looked spectacular when it comes to defending a point, but they're also going to have to show how necessarily they fare on the attack as well. Iconwall is one of my favorite maps here, Bull. I'm, I'm sure you don't know that as you've never actually met me before, but I love that map. I'm a bit of a Widowmaker main, which means I have poor taste. Eichenwald is very strong in the middle section for your streets phase to deal with Widowmakers, but sure. with the way that MX Thick has been playing so far, I really just want to continue to see them pick up the May, pick up the Tracer play, and I want to see them just pop off and continue that dominance in the field. Oh yeah, great understanding of the map and how to use that high ground, and there's certainly plenty of that high ground in Eichenwald. We are going to take a short little break. When we come back, map two, see if Blue Gold, Blue Gold can close out the series. We'll see you in a moment.
Well, map one going handily in favor of blue gold two 100 to zeros on Oasis on the back of MX Thick and GS Morrison putting up a heck of a performance from the DPS rolls. Let's see if they can carry that into map two. We're headed to Eichenwald. Another thing we want to point out is how strong our Reinhardt players typically were. We did see a bit of a um, unfortunate happenstance for Raspberry as they got taken out by the Diva Bomb in the end, but the rest of the team just shows up, does what they need to do to get the job done, which was to wipe out the opposition on the point, and they didn't seem to struggle doing so. They used their ultimates wisely, they knew where to use each utility, and they forced them off the point and staggered their spawns once again, which was the big point there in round one for that last map, and they didn't even need to do it for map two because they just took them all out in very quick succession. Uh, and I think the closest that we saw Rio Grande come was on the opening map on University. They got two opening picks, uh, including GS Morrison, and still weren't able to close out the fight. The, they just uh, couldn't finish it off. At a 4v6, Blue Gold bring it back. They fight it back from that deficit. Logos on the Diva in that particular fight was outstanding. And so it's Rio Grande need to get better at confirming the kills after the initial engagement. Now, for Eichenwald, when you're trying to attack this first point, one of the biggest problems is this bridge stage where you're trying to get under and, you know, around. Some people will actually go over the top. That's I know that's a strategy a lot of people have employed uh, before, but uh, you don't have to see how it necessarily pans out. You can see already for Ryo Grant, uh, they're going to try and go with a Sombra, maybe get some backline presence to keep the opposition on their toes. I guess the biggest question is going to be whether or not this Brigitte and Zenyatta is going to be enough heals to keep their team alive as they dive the backside. Well, fortunately, I mean, Zappy, Agrigor, and Gold Assassin are all playing very self-sustaining heroes, very self-sufficient. So it's the heal packs could be enough if they play their cards right. Zappy has to stay alive, though, has to stay mobile and create a lot of distraction. Give room for these two DPS to move in and find uh, a good target to hunt down. We'll look for uh, Agrigorn, excuse me, to get some good manual hacks to open this up, but Gold Assassin gets picked immediately, eating those Hyperspheres logos. Just does so much damage on that Sigma. And uh, Royal Grand need to back out. I mean, the Tracer is such a linchpin of this composition. It's the bulk of your damage gone. Uh, Fireheart, look at this, doing work on the Baptiste. That's what you want to see out of your supports. My heart is absolutely slaying that back line. She's able to step up and do the job of DPS and your healer. And now you're going to see Blue Gold take a bit of an offensive stance, keep a little bit further at bay. We've seen this consistently from them. They like to play on the aggressive, even if they are necessarily in that defending role. And they do an exceptional job of doing that. And what we saw from the feed, it wasn't MX Thick we can necessarily talk about, but GS Morrison now will have that Junkrat ult to be able to step up and go as the Rip Tire is readily and available now officially. The biggest question is, when do they pop it? When do they decide to fully engage in the situation? Because Ryer Grand are not even making it past that initial corner. Two more will be felt in quick succession. They're going to have to take another step back to rethink their strategy. Yeah, Gold Assassin is still trying to go in and poke, perhaps to try to build up a little bit of a pulse bomb. Uh, I mean, I think at this point, you're, you're, I mean, you've got to save the Transcendence for the Blizzard on the other side. Blue Gold with a lot of weapons in the war chest right now. And Aragorn is going to fall early. Zappy struggling to get any work done as well, barely making it through the choke, already at about a third health and still under a lot of pressure. It's going to be the Flux to close out this fight, comboed with the Blizzard, and that, I mean, that's going to be all she wrote. Both tanks are frozen up. It's only a matter of time. Nice, Maywall. Who leaves just enough of an opening, and Raspberry charges in a little full-heartedly and gets burned down. So, Ryle Graham may be able to turn disadvantage into advantage as they move on to this point, but both of their supports are now out of the fight. The Raspberry is a bad position to be in if you get a little bit too overextended. We saw exactly that. Agrigorn's going to set up a teleport, maybe give themselves a position to step away if necessary. But Ryan Grant's attempting to step onto the point, being denied quite handily by Blue Gold still. And Raspberry is officially back into the fight. Both tanks ready and available. And Ryan Grant didn't take a big enough, uh, I guess, leap into the point when they had the advantage. And now they're going to be fighting a full six on six team fight. Very quickly made six on five as Logos and GS Morrison find themselves some extra kills. Sound barrier coming out from Rixford to try to counter the Ant Matrix from the attacking Ryo Grand, but it does a good job of it. Maywall perfectly positioned to deny the value of that Ant Matrix as well. And uh, once again, the healers from Ryo Grand just fall, suffering, cutting the legs off of this composition. Back to spawn they go. 
Tappy is just being toyed with in this back line. They're buying time as Blue Gold is uh, keeping their opponents still, forcing them uh, to eventually be felled, but staggering the spawns even further, which is just going to bleed that clock against Ryer Grant. They've only got 54 seconds to work with, and that's going to be a huge problem for them as they continue. They have one ult, now two. They can maybe step up. Agrigorn has the EMP, looks to do it, will drop it, and now for Blue Gold, they're going to have to take a step back. They've got no shield for cover, but they're still finding kills. We know one would think, but they just continue to brawl it out. She has Morrison to able to get a couple kills before the Pulse Bomb finally lands, but the Junkrat is not too terribly affected by the EMP. He just continues to rain down spam into the attacking Ryo Grand, and they're not able to capitalize on that beak EMP. Now, we're still scrambling here a little bit, which might favor the attackers if they can find more picks, but Raspberry has other plans. Getting anywhere near that Ryan Hammer is just resulting in death. Two picks already for Raspberry on the Reinhardt. Now the tire from Jess Morrison looking to close things out. That'll find two as well. Such a devastating ultimate. It's been holding on to that for quite a while. We'll be very successful with it. And finding a third on top. Ghoul taken away to the wayside. Now forced to go in the respawn. Zappy, last one left standing. Trying to stay alive, but being forced off site continuously. The contestion may be there. Pulse Bomb will be tossed. It'll be a successful one for Gold Assassin. Taking out MX Thick. The Logos and Raspberry are not far behind. They're just swinging and gunning on the site. Nothing that the opposition can face off against. Finally see your Diva make it back, but Ghoul's gonna get d quite quickly. The Riddick Lux will drop, force back down. Ghoul d now forced to fight. A bad position, they'll be felt very quickly after. I mean, they had a sound barrier to use, Blue Gold did. That they, you know, they're dropping in celebratory fashion at the end. You know, Rao Grand, you know, of course, you're gonna give it your all. You're gonna throw bodies on it, but that round had been lost about 30 seconds prior. Uh, there was no coming back from that. They just didn't have the ults there at the very end to try to bring that thing back from the brink uh, and blue gold with a very convincing defense and uh, not only need 33% to take the series, though we will still play map three if they're able to do so. Well, we'll see how Nestle pans out. Blue Gold now get to attempt the attack, and quite frankly here, they only have to get this first point, which they don't even have to get all of it to get the jump done. Ryo Grand have to hold on strong from what we saw them do previously. We don't necessarily know how they face on the defense because they never actually got control in our first map. They didn't see a single point flip to their sides. Blue Gold held on 100 to 0 every single time. Now the question on my mind is going to be, what can Ryo Grand bring to the table to hold them back? And one of the decisions they're making, same thing for Blue Gold, is to bring in Echo to maybe assist with some aerial play. Uh, I mean, I, if it were me, I would love to see the uh, the Sim Bastion strat, but alas, we are going to get Hanzo and Echo. I mean, that's a lot of damage coming out. Uh, well, some pseudo spam, but also has the ability to focus fire, uh, especially uh, with the Hanzo. You know, you, of course, you can get those tree trunks in the head. It's an insta kill. Also, some great shield break potential to bust the bubble on the other side. I don't know if they're going to be expecting this dive comp coming through. This is a new look from Blue Gold. We've yet to see the dive comp come. Rio Grande, sorry, Rio Grande attempted something initially. They had a bit more of an aggressive stance with their D.Va trying to rush through, but it was not successful in the slightest for them as they continuously got denied at this bridge point. Raspberry is also low. Blue Golds are going to need to get that heal up. He's going to be able to dive back in in quick succession. Like you said, the shields will get burned quite quickly, but it's not necessarily an issue if you do have the ability to eat up a lot of the competition. Two kills will drop, though, for Rio Grande, making it a third. A successful charge will... Basically, put a damper on the Blue Gold's attack, and they'll have to force this reset. And have to be in X thick, waiting an extra couple seconds for that respawn. And what happened there is Blue Gold were trying to play, play that comp, uh, which is fine. You can absolutely play Winston comps in, in a rush standard format, uh, but you can see him switch into the Reinhardt now. I mean, there was never really a staging, never really looking for a target, never trying to separate the attention of Ryo Grand. It was just trying to bust through the front door with a Zen and an Ana. Uh, and so here we, we got the Lucio out. We've got the Reinhardt in the battlefield. This is going to fit the style of what they're wanting to do much better. They can just charge right through this choke. They're going to do just that. Now to bad spot. Just Morrison's the one who finds the first kill. That's Zappy out for the count. Not a good look for Ryo Grand. And it's just continuing onward. Raspberry may be low, but so much healing potential behind them. Now they're going to have to fare onto the site. Raspberry quickly healed back up. Ultimates may start to pop up for Ryo Grand, but they're losing their lives before there's even a chance to do so. Blue Gold find three more off the top. Just two left standing. Make it one it looks to be this point's gonna go handily in favor of blue gold only one failed push before they took it all 
Uh, and that was just a beautifully executed attack, just speeding right on top of the defense. Pounce on Zappy and decimate the Reinhardt. From there, Ryo Grand are just backpedaling the whole way. But guess what? You got speed on the other side. Blue Gold are able to rush them down. Uh, some wonderful shooting coming out from the DPS yet again as uh, we get a little a clip of G Mo GS Morrison here. Uh, these, these two DPS have been absolutely outstanding, but uh, for me, it was the coordination between the supports and Raspberry on the front line was the, the big difference maker uh, on that attack, at least. You could, I was a little bit worried for him. You know, I won't lie here. Uh, when they made the switch, they'd already given a lot of ult charge, about 50 to 40% on average for the you know side of Raya Grand, but they held on. They didn't even let them get the ultimates back. They just completely went to sight. Right. They took control of their push. They took control of the situation. They got past the bridge stage, which is probably the hardest part of that area, obviously speaking, and they just dominated in all levels of field with Raspberry able to stay alive. Like you said, that support being greatly coordinated. They took control of uh, the backline situation they did not let themselves get dove in the process and everyone was just performing at a peak level it was not much for rio grande to do yeah i mean the only option for uh, rio grande there would have been to disengage to quickly back up and let blue gold spin their cooldowns and and try to not get any value out of them and then you save your own for a, a second engagement and counter pushback it's the only answer to that but blue gold on fire right now riding a big old wave of momentum we're going to take a quick little intermission. When we come back, map three, we're headed to Route 66. See if they'll carry that momentum into a full 3-0 sweep. We'll see you back here in a minute. Man, this has been a, a speed run here so far. Blue Gold are taking zero prisoners in Phrenosis. Yeah, it's not been uh, a very long, convoluted matchup now, has it been? Blue Gold <laughs> it's with... pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, very swift map one. Map two, I mean, they, they held strong and then took the first point, and that's all they needed. Not even the full first point. They needed the first pip of the first point to get it. I mean, what, what more can you say? Map three, I think we we've switched over, so it's blue gold on the attack first i believe is that what we have yes sir which means that this one will last a little bit longer even if it is a one-sided affair they'll have to go all the way through on their attack to last point but the defensive side could be another one of those short ones if they're able to continue to hold ryan grant back and i believe blue gold chose to go on the attack here which i, I find interesting ryan grant chose to defend okay okay excuse me i have i stand corrected uh so that makes a little bit more sense uh, I was I was like, okay, man, you are feeling uh, emblazoned if you're going to just, all right, we're going to go attack first and really take it to him. No, no, no. Okay, so Royal Grey want to try to make a stand first, see if they can hit, hit their mark. And it, what I've heard is if you can defend in the same spot, 
the the second team nine times out of ten will win because you you know exactly where you need to place and and where to use your ultimates. So we'll we'll see if if Royal Grey can make a stand here and perhaps stop the bleeding because uh, I mean this has been a torrent right now. It's been a, it's been, it's been a matchup <laughs> to say the least. Now with Ryan Grant, they're on your blue side. Make sure you don't get that one a little bit too confused. Uh, starting off, we're going to see how Blue Gold fares out. They're looking to continue with semblance of that dive that they kind of brought out initially there on Eichenwald and their attack. They had switched fairly quickly. Raspberry, she didn't really like the look that they had previously, but there's also no, I guess there is a bridge. There's no close bridge that we had seen previously uh, that's as uh, holdable, so to say. Ryan Grand will still hold strong. They're bringing a Widowmaker. You can tell I'm extremely excited about that. The double sniper comp. Uh, this may be five or six seasons ago, but it's already going to start off strong. They'll find a nice shot early into Fireheart, and now we're going to contend a little bit further, but a Tracer will dive, and Aggregorn's going to be extremely low, but will manage to make a short-lived escape. Possibly no. A recall will go through. You'll still have yourself in a good position if you're Ryan Grand. A nice up uh, opening pair of kills from Agrigorn and Gold Assassin respectively. Perhaps the double sniper is their look. They're able to find, you know, some some good vantage points right out of the gate. I'm a little concerned with them sticking around on this low ground. I feel they're they're vulnerable to the high ground attack. As you can see, Blue Gold are gonna move in from above now. GS Morrison looking for that sniper, but Gold Assassin and Agrigorn strike again. Agrigorn standing still in that unfortunate barrage that came through from G.S. Morrison. G.S. Morrison was trying to anticipate that play, but it didn't actually go through. Another kill will drop. This one will be cool to take one. A quick one accession by G.S. Morrison, who's been fairly popular so far in this match and is continuing to do so. Mix Thick continuing to dive that back line. And it's going to have to be another full reset now for Ryer Grand. They've lost some semblance of control, but Blue Gold are getting pushed back further and further because this support combo mixed with their frontline tanks are holding strong in this bridge. Blue Gold also have the close respawn by a significant margin. Uh, so the trades that we saw happening there uh, are going to favor Blue Gold. Uh, Aggregorn returns to the fight just to get pounced on by Raspberry. Uh, GS Morrison still continues to put it in work from above, coming up on that barrage. Uh, interesting dive there by Raspberry. They'll be anti and be finished off because of it. Same thing with Fireheart. Cool was able to find that kill. And GS Morrison's continuing to dish out the damage from Errol and up above. Looking now to catch the Hanzo off guard. We'll be able to do just that. And now Ryer Grand don't really have a great DPS line to deal with. Agrigorn steps up, able to find one, but now needs to find essentially everyone else if they want to stand a chance. Which your mind will be, unfortunately, triggered. But from the back line, going to get dove on quite quickly by the Diva. They'll be dealt with quite easily. Nice play from Logos, uh, able to hunt down Agrigorn. Uh, but that just came down to Ryle Grand had to back all the way up to the corner. GS Morrison had free line of sight because we saw uh, Agrigorn go down earlier in that fight, a second time, that is. So knew they didn't have to worry about the Widowmaker. GS Morrison able to get in a good position to just pepper down those tanks from above, and it really opened up point A form. Now Blue Gold have some ult working with going through Agrigorn going over to the tra uh, the Genji and immediately takes care of the Tracer on the other side. The smart switch, I think, at this point in time, this stage is a little bit more difficult to deal with for a Widowmaker. And even when they were rocking the Widowmaker before, and like you spoke about, they weren't really utilizing the top of gas. And so it kind of became a problem for them as they were quickly dove upon by GS Morrison in MX Thick. And it's just too much damage for them to contend with. But they'll be able to find one, unfortunately, very short-lived as Raspberry and GS Morrison continue to pile on the hurts. The high ground. Fully in control now for Blue Gold, but you do see Gold Assassins looking to contend. It's not going to happen as a revive does go through as well as the Barrage. Barrage picks up two, followed up. Hey, I'm really bookended by some directs. That's a 4K for GS Morrison. Nicely done from the skies. Gold Assassin now going over to the Cowboy to try to contend with this far because GS Morrison has just been wreaking havoc. There's been zero answer. It'll be very dangerous position. Raspberry's popping the problem here. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe just to keep him back. Maybe keep him at bay yeah. for a little bit. Just trying to get the reset on their ults. I think they're going to switch. I think that's what we're seeing here. I mean, holding the cave door to ensure you get caps, not a bad idea. And considering there's not a whole lot of high ground to work with going indoors, the swap to the Reinhardt does come through. Much more linear position. And Raspberry can just bulldoze through this point C. Try to drive this thing all the way home. Lots of time on the clock and still support ults to work with here for Blue Gold. Nick Six going to come over that pulse bomb quite quick as well, which will be very dangerous because they been such an exceptional job of diving the back line. Just Morrison switched over to a soldier. You do have a dangerous position as Kaskul is going to drop the flux down. He's going to maybe keep 
GS Morrison at bay, but it's not happening just yet, and they're continuing to just push forward. Blue Gold do not have care in the world initially, but the shield of Raspberry is destroyed. And alas for Azor and the rest, especially Ghoul, who finds two, to start dishing out the hurt and start to push the med back. Rickshaw's going to want that transcendence back. What we saw there was a layering of both of those support ults after the Gravitic Phlox, and there was nothing to protect against the Ant Matrix, especially once Raspberry went down. Now, Ryo Grinder coming up on this uh, Nano Blade, and Rixor could have saved it with the transcendence. As it stands, it's going to take a Herculean effort to kill Agragorn before they can find the value out of this blade. That position, anti oh, huge anti. through. That's huge. Attacks everyone in the opposition. There goes the blade. Agrigorn's looking to step up. Does find one. Takes out the opposition of Fireheart. Continuing to deal some damage, but can't find a second off of it, but did. Get some tag off onto Logos. Now you can have GS Morrison, who's completely trapped out. They'll have their ultimate as well, but it's very short-lived. We'll have to try it in the next life as Agrigorn steps up with a dash. Yeah, Ryo Grand, it's hard to, to pick out some some stars because they've struggled in our opening two maps. But Theory, Theory is really starting to stand out to me. We're, we've seen just a lot of great work from the Ana, building the Nanos quite quickly. Uh, some great Bionades there, super impactful Bionade to open that last fight. And, and I mean, they've managed to eat a lot of time off the clock. Blue Gold only have the Visor currently to work with, but they'll be coming up on a few more ults as this fight progresses. Ant Matrix out from Azura trying to end it quickly. Our Green's been a team that's been losing some of these engagements and have been taking some bad positions for it, but they're still consistently, constantly moving this point. They do not have a care for half the times they're losing their lives. They know they can quickly respawn, get back into the engagement. They're staggering themselves quite well. Diva Bomb will be tossed out. Will it find impact? Finds three oh. over the top. A massive hit. They're continuing to go further as a Pulse Bomb will find the life of Zappy. Just one left standing initially. It's going to be Acker going. He's looking to stay alive, keep some contestion. But still, just con constantly moving towards the last point. We're in in-game. Will they even make it back in time? I'm going to try to with the Flux. That was just a beautiful bomb shatter combo. Now you got GS Morrison on the high ground with his tack visor, just peppering down. Uh, just able to do so much damage. Picked off Theory, which would be the only source of sustain. Blue Gold able to push it home, and they've got a healthy time bank to boot. Blue Gold have looked spectacular for this one. They're going to take that one healthy bank like you spoke about. Ryer Grand now have to figure out how it's going to work out for them. What they need to do now as the sides flip, what's going to be successful for them. We've seen them in the last two maps. Things haven't been uh, handily in their favor, so to say. But I've seen some glimpses from them. Agagorn has really come out of their shell in this map. I think you can agree with me. When they initially played the Widowmaker, finding first pick, Gold Assassin was spectacular on the Hanzo. But when the close range engagements came through, Akagorn switching to the Genji with some good assistance. Then the switch over to Doomfist was finding impact. But unfortunately, Blue Gold were just uncontested when it comes to that close range engagement. They knew what they needed to do, and they got the job done. Ready for battle. No, I mean, it, that was the best luck we'd seen out of him. The double shield was the best luck we had seen out of Ryo Grand all day. Uh, look, theory impressed me on top of that. I mean, Ghoul did a lot of work on that Sigma as well. I mean, there was. I mean, nearly five minutes on the clock when Blue Gold entered point C, Ryo Grand were able to chop at least three minutes off of that bank. So all in all, not a bad defense. Uh, definitely seemed to be finding their footing a little bit. Wasn't a total roll. Uh, now they know the benchmark. Now they know what, what time they have got to at least come close to beating. Try to get in the vicinity thereof. But uh, they're going up against a double shield comp of their own coming out of the defense from Blue Gold. And I like this positioning a lot more. Uh, Blue Gold sitting up on top of Big Earls. They're going to have the spam of GS Morrison combined with MX stick in the air on this Echo. It's the better position to be in, in all honesty. you got to be very... For sure. Uh, it, it's just a strange strategy to play a little bit too close, especially when you're rocking the double sniper previously. It worked for a short period of time, but you need it for a longer, more extended period of time. And that's inevitably where you start to see it kind of fall apart. I think Agrigorn's going to take a step back and probably switch up. Not really wanting to stick to the window. They'll do just that. Give an echo themselves. But first pick will handily go to Blue Goat's favor. GS Morrison has been spectacular in this one, but Gold Assassin's not going to be out just yet. Finds one more, but a resurrection's going to bring MX Stick back into the count. It's still going to be in their favor. Yeah, I mean, goal went down early, and once you lose your Zarya in this double bubble comp, there's not enough to support Zappy, and you're relying on Zappy to build up the nano boost from Theory. So that was just goal went down, and Ryo Grand didn't really have the tools to try to dislodge this double shield composition. It makes Thick had plenty of time to work and to find uh, quite a few picks. Uh, does get uh, taken down by Theory there in the end. A great pick from the Ana player, and that's going to help build towards that nano boost. That nano boost is really what they're looking for to start a strong engagement. 
It was an interesting play to get that aggressive, and the anti, once you have that, you should take a step back. I know you were being pocket healed, but can't be done if you're low HP, but a lot of the Raya Grand side are low HP, and Zappy tries to jump in off of it. No one really there to assist. They haven't stepped around the corner just yet, and Fireheart Shield find the kill. Now in a bad spot. Akragorn's gonna step in, trying to get some damage oh. off, but it's not really doing too much, because double kill drops for GS Morrison, and it's just continuing to dish out the hurt. Blue Gold are keeping them at bay quite emphatically. And using only one ult to do it, uh, Fireheart with the Ant Matrix was all it took to to just shred through the ranks of Ryo Grand on that one. But hey, good news for Ryo Grand, they are starting to come up on that Nano Boost. It's taking a little longer than you might like, uh, but this is going to be their best opportunity. Need to get the rest of that 10% up built for Theory. Uh, Zappy needs to be very cautious of their life and really try to get this Primal Rage built up while they have the Nano Boost applied to them dangerous spot you're trying to look for that first pick to give yourself the advantage pushing forward but rixer has been spectacular with the resurrections and it's just not Nire. giving the space for ryer grand you tire now coming out it's going to step all the way through the back line and underneath oh no Azura is going to be taken out early and now in a bad spot as their front line doesn't have the dps they sorry heals they initially anticipated they're gonna have to take another step back this cool is not even mecked it's in a bad spot overall MX Thick now dropping the duplicate onto the Winston inside the tiny room. Uh, has chased Ghoul all the way back to the choke. Eats a big bio nade. It could be at least at risk of coming out of the dupe. We'll get taken out of that. Actually, I think just time ran out on it. Uh, Ryo Grand, though, managed to weather the storm a little bit. They've got 75 seconds left to make something happen here. We still yet to see that nano engage. Oh, and there he goes down. Disastrous start. It's not a bad toss, though. I mean, he did find a little bit of impact, I believe, under two of the opposition, but. When you get dealt with that quickly, there's not really much to back it up. And with only one minute remaining, it's going to be harder. You will have a Dragon Strike go through. Well, the Assassin got a little bit of damage off, and GS Morrison may be separated from the fight, but still handily dealing with it and able to escape just barely with his life in the process. Still, the fight on Big Girls too much to contend with. And Ghoul's going to be demacked once again before the fight even can officially start for Ryo Grand. Yeah, this is coming dire straight for Ryo Grand on, on point A. Agrigord with an opening pick, but Rez still available. Rixor pops that Valkyrie. Should be able to get that off. Agrigord, I think, just trying to make a hero play happen here. Uh, is going to come in with the duplicate. I believe that was the Sigma they grabbed. Ooh, interrupted. Uh, Logos is ultimate. Nice shot from Agrigord with the accretion. Especially for a DPS player, that accretion can be very difficult to, to predict its pathing. Uh, Tyre's gonna take Gold Assassin out though, and Blue Gold still on the back foot, or still in command of this fight, rather. Rio Grande on the back foot, and with the dwindling seconds, Theory has yet to pop this nano boost. I mean, doesn't really find the target. You can't just wait for the perfect opportunity if you create it. They're not really able to give themselves the space to do so. Zappy's going to fall. Theory didn't go for the boost on them in the process. Ghoul did get one Diva Bomb off, but it only takes out GS Morrison. They were quick on the refrag through. Ghoul's going to find one more. Tank going through, but it's going to be Rixer who goes for the resurrection. Now you have your front line continuously in this fight. The bomb goes, will go down. It's now just a fanfare of kills that should drop the side of Blue Gold as they have the DPS to follow suit. Akragorn may find one, but it's quickly refracted back by Raspberry. Logos with so another into Theory. Too much damage, too much to deal with. 150% damage on the battlefield. Additional damage between the Ant Matrix and the Supercharger going out. And uh, Ryo Grand, once again, doing a good job of never say die, uh, give it all they got, leave everything on the battlefield, which is what we're seeing here. But this does feel inevitable. Uh, the sound barrier is there. Might be able to turn something, but they need to get some kills quickly. I mean, Theory needs to get in and be able to pop this ultimate. They've yet to do so. Another Riptire will come out from GS Morrison. They're trying to find a target. They'll go for Ghoul, who had just been demacked prior. And no one's able to snap onto the point. They all get forced back, not just by the Riptire, but all of the DPS that Blue Gold was just bringing to the table. It's just too much for them to fight against. Another victory for them. This one, they got a little bit further than a lot of people probably anticipated after the performance we saw in Map 1 and Map 2. But I think a very strong performance nonetheless from both sides. I liked what I saw, but... It's just that first initial push that came through from them by G.S. Morrison specifically was just spectacular and really hard to face off against. Wonderful play on the far. And no doubt G.S. Morrison had a giant impact on points A and B and uh, really opened up the battlefield for Blue Gold to be able to just push it through and, and kind of waltz all the way into point C. Now, yeah, they did get slowed down a little bit by the double uh, shield composition once they got into point C. Uh, but G.S. Morrison had helped them build such a giant time bank. They had the time to go through a couple ult cycles until they could finally just muscle their way through brute force it. On the other side, Ryo Grand, they 
uh, without being too harsh, didn't didn't seem to really understand the wind condition of the double bubble composition. With that composition, you need to get as many nano engages as you possibly can in your four minutes on point A, and then in the subsequent times that you're given. It's it's about the flow of getting your Winston up top. They take a little bit of damage, drop down into safety, heal them up, and just get that nano boost up as quick as you can. And as soon as you got it, you nano engage with that Winston. Let them build primal, rinse and repeat. You know, with ideally, you get a couple of support ults, you get your primal up. And then that allows the time for you to start cycling your own ults. That ult cycle is incredibly important, is pivotal to that double bubble composition. And unfortunately, Ryogram were just never able to get it done. And when you're they were a little slow like you had mentioned to even charge up your on ultimate so they didn't really have the ability uh, in the first place to get it as swiftly as they would have wanted to go for a cycle but they couldn't even begin the cycle if you're not going to pop it and that was kind of the biggest factor exactly you can't use it if you don't have it it's just wasteful at that point right you need to be able to use it don't wait for the perfect moment create that moment use the spacing in, in you know conjunction with your front line being ready to force yourself forward with that double bumble composition like you spoke about if you're not able to create that space naturally then you need to start working with your team in scrims and in practices to get yourself situated to be comfortable with that uh, coordination to work together as a full force we saw a little bit too many times where Ryan Grant's Winston jumps into the fight and loses their life in an engagement when there's no one else to assist we saw one when they were at that front bridge where they jumped in and they didn't even have health. They weren't even healed at the process. They were at critical HP and they still dove into the under the top of Big Earls and they right. lost their life two seconds afterwards because there was no assistance with them. They didn't have themselves coordinated and there just wasn't a big enough support backline for them even after the push came through. Uh, I mean, the very opening engagement on Royal Grand's attack, Ghoul goes down, and you still try to engage without the Zarya bubble. That Zarya bubble is extremely important for keeping, giving that Winston time to get up there and just get a little bit of cleave uh, and, and get in position to where you can safely drop back down. And Theory did such a great job on the defense, was building those ults nice and quick. So we, we know the capability is there. Uh, on the offense, though, it seemed to, seemed to just fall flat. Couldn't didn't trust themselves to do it. I'm not quite sure what the issue was. Perhaps, you know, perhaps they were just feeling a little discouraged by that point in the series. But, uh, I mean, there's some good things they can build on. I look forward to seeing them again further down the line. But, hey, this is this has been all about blue gold today. A very clean 3-0 sweep when it's all said and done. Yeah, and blue gold played that one really well. They understood the assignment, so to say, like you had kind of did that earlier. They knew what they needed to do. We saw them switch when they stepped into the final phase past streets. Uh, they they knew what they needed to do from the absolute get-go. When something didn't work on Eichenwald, they immediately rotated over. Uh, it felt like they were just kind of testing the waters initially with that first strategy, and once they realized, hey, we got shut down quite emphatically, we'll switch it back, right back to what's trying to what's going to work, and it worked out for them in quick succession. And that's kind of how it felt like in every single map, except map one where they just what what worked was what they picked up first they didn't need to make any switches whatsoever they were just confident from the get-go but everything they brought out everything that they switched to and attempted to coordinate with their side was successful they caught the opposition off guard and it's kind of just a difference of coordination and chemistry for your sides blue gold moving up to two and two uh on the season with that so you know, going through week four you've gotten yourself back up to to 500 and you can just start to move up from there so you know blue gold able to kind of get back on the horse after losing the last two weeks in a row so that's a uh, I'm excited to see more of them as this season progresses because that was emphatic that was a a dominant showing uh gs morrison really stood out uh, I, I think MX Thick might actually get my my player of the match, though. Was there a little quieter uh, there in that uh, third map, but extremely dominant in maps one and two? Hey, who can he talk about for map three? It was just GS Morrison, right? I mean, GS Morrison on that far was was most standout player for me as, as far as Route 66 goes. And and the only real things that you can kind of think about for countering a far or a chunk rat is going to be, you know, something that can, can maybe counter explosive. So uh, playing Ghoul on the Zarya was not a terrible strategy. You can charge really quickly and start to get that uh, um, oomph behind you, so to say, but they didn't take sure. full advantage of that. Ghoul lost their life right. really early in the first place, like we had talked about in their first push. They just didn't utilize what they had on the table. They didn't play all their cards, and that's inevitably not how you want to play poker, and they lost in the end, and it's just such a spectacular performance from them. I gotta agree with you, though. MX is never the player I'm gonna give it to. Map 1 and Map 2, just way too much to deal with. Spectacular performance. I could not imagine to see more from them. Well, that is going to do it for this series, but we got plenty more NECC Overwatch coming at you to continue through week four. We're going to take a little break. We're going to get that next game set up, and uh, we'll, we'll return with some more Overwatch shortly.
Wasting times where I like to do But I don't waste time when I'm with you Used to being alone in bar But when I'm down it starts to pour And oh, oh I can't do this anymore Cause I just wanna help out Not something to throw out Show you I can go out, come out of myself doubt And I'm not trying to fool you I would like to show you I change When I change, I was stuck in a room With nothing to lose, but now I'm not sure I was lost Lost in space, but now I found my place. I was lost in space. I was lost in space, but now I'm in place. I know you. Give me a chance. I don't have any words to say.
What is going on, everybody, and welcome back for some more NECC action. I am Septal, and joined by the handsome and wonderful and talented Bull Skunk. We're going to be bringing you just one game today, and we are a little bit sorry about the break. We had to get some things figured out with the players in the back line, but we are rooting, tooting, ready for shooting, getting ready to jump into this. Bull Skunk, what do we got in store? Well, we are heading to the Emergence Division uh, for this next matchup. So one step up from what we saw in our previous match. And uh, as we take a look at the standings, CMU walk away with another loss. I mean, that could be devastating. Well, at Concordia University, the team currently sitting in ninth place. They're playing uh, Pittsburgh State, one of those 0 3 teams at the bottom. Yeah. They're going to be 2 and 2. I mean, uh, unless a, a complete upset happens, they're going to be 2 and 2, which means if CMU Academy loses this, they're also going to be 2 and 2. And suddenly they find themselves skip, uh, jumping from fourth place all the way down to eighth or ninth. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you said, that's going to be a colossal jump practically all the way down. You're going from the top to the bottom. So this is going to be a crucial moment for a lot of the teams, both that we're seeing on stream and off. We're going to be jumping in in just a minute. The map pool is Oasis, Eichenwald into Route 66. So three maps that we know and love. And Oasis, I'm very excited to see because... Uh, I say this about control points every time is usually each of the three stages can call for a different team comp, right? And I feel like Oasis is really one of those stages that does that. And it also gives us a great indication on where our teams are comfortable. So we're, we're not talking GM players here. Emergence is our, our second tier uh, in, in our five-tier system. And so this division, I'm really looking for where are these teams comfortable. As you can see, the Reinhardt coming out is we're going to start off on City Center. Uh, you know, you definitely have some high ground coming out. And, you know, Carroll University looked to be kind of maybe changing things up a little bit, possibly showing us some double bubble. Uh, CMU Academy looked pretty fixated on this Reaper Cowboy Brawl. Yeah, absolutely. And that Reaper Cowboy Brawl is something that we've been seeing a lot recently, um, just in kind of these engagements, so to speak. The Cowboy tried and true usually on these teams looking to win it up. But the double bubble, of course, I think is such a hit or miss comp it all comes down to the synergy between the tanks of course that winston and that zarya pez on the winston here gonna be getting hyper aggressive meeting twice up close and personal here twice able to land almost every booster onto them atm separated from that winston has to drop down gives up the free gives up the high ground basically for free just to stay alive going for the re-engage but here comes all the cmu from the heavens and pez is the first to fall lionheart not far behind the tank line for carol is gone cmu they should all but get that first cap uh, Laskardo trying to bring it back, but will get whittled down by cute papaya. And it's this backline. Little Duck and Grim Reaper just do not provide enough raw healing for what the double bubble uh, composition is trying to do. There's a reason you almost always see an Ana with this composition. You need that extra healing. You need that nano boost to engage. But with that said, Carol University taking a lot of space and looking to still back this point right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. And speaking of the point, I mean, it's about to be ripped in half thanks to these dragons twice already finding that kill onto Pez. Transcendence forced off from Grim Reaper here, trying to keep the team up and alive and after that, Lasker Du picks up Lionheart. This is going to be a great opportunity to see what kind of can be done here for Carol. They lose one fight. They're getting ready to turn the second one around. Only 30% for CMU, so really not as much as they probably would like. And that just was a great comeback. Uh, Carol University lost Pez first, but they're able to focus down. KTM doing so much damage up front with Silent breaking that shield. Lionheart just gets chewed to pieces. And with that, CMU Academy fall apart. Uh, but they're, they're coming back here. They've got a coalescence to open up with. Here they come. Yeah, that coalescence is going to be huge here, but Cute Papaya has to watch out. They need to make sure they don't get melted down or kind of eliminated early, but it literally does not matter because Rayaway here on the Reaper are going to be storming in, picking up a triple, both tanks and the brig down the drain. So, Carol, I mean, there wasn't even like a fight there. That was just Rayaway coming in, finding eliminations when they mattered most. It looks like even Silent is not going to be able to make it out twice with the double melee kill. 
Lionheart went down early, but did manage to build up their ultimate. Got that Earth Shatter ready to go. Also created enough space to get Railway in the position to where they could cover that gap against Silence Hanzo, against the Soldier of Lasker Doe. Uh, able to provide some clutch picks. So despite Lionheart going down, they did their job. Oh. Now the self-destruct is going to buy a little bit more time while Little Duck's Rally is armoring up Carol. Yeah, short distance uh, Bob there. I really thought was going to get at least one person with a huge bubble coming out from Pez. Keeps the team alive now. There's the high noon. There's the bead. There's the primal. And it looks like it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Lionheart and Laskardo both fall. Silent, Ooh. though, picking up another kill out of that Moira, making it all the easier for Carol to re-engage. CMU ticking upwards of 80% here in just a moment. But Carol may have finally done it. They may get that recontest. However, we are in last fight scenario. Silent and KTM putting in some work here, Seth. Look, I mean, you just as I'm talking about him, Silent is lighting up the kill feed. The senior from Carroll University, uh, absolutely on fire right now, has another set of dragons ready to go. But hey, right away on the other side, you've got the Dancing Death coming out from the edge, Lord. We'll see if they can get close once again. Lionheart needs to stay alive a little bit longer. Dragons are out. Yeah, Lionheart definitely seems to be the first one to fall pretty consistently, just like that. Yeah, Lionheart taking offline. There's no main tank for CMU to engage. And Realistically, Carol should be able to win this fight without a second thought, but as Pez goes down, now there's no main tanks. This is going to be a lot harder for either team to really engage. I think we're going to see a lot of people falling back, maybe some old fires here and there. Brutal taking offline, and Pez now swapping onto the Rhine of his own. Yep, said they've had enough of the Winston to come go shield to shield. Uh, just play close quarters inside this choke. Now that they have control, I like the swap. Uh, KTM continues to hold down the fort on this front line, despite the main tanks going down early. Oh. Coalescence engaged, team, you coming back. Twice, just diving in blindly there, able to get a lot of damage onto the Hanzo, but no kill quite yet. Lionheart finds that crucial kill, removes the rally from the fight, forcing the transcendence from the Grim Reaper here, trying to keep the team alive. Pez picks up a kill off the back of it. Cowboy finally out of this fight, and it looks like it's going to be... Oh, oh nice. nothing from Rayaway there. The Edgelord does not get even a tick of damage before being eliminated by Laskardo there. Lionheart finds that counter kill onto Pez. So this is probably the last opportunity CMU has to turn this around, but it's twice loses to the back. I think this is going to be all but having the little bow wrapped up on top. Rayway got a little anxious, got ahead of the pack. I think saw all that timer starting to approach 99 and uh, felt like they had to make something happen then and now. Went in and just gave it away. Little Duck with the rally online, saved it for the beat. CMU not able to get anything done with that extra shielding. Carroll University, they weathered the storm. They had plenty to strike back with. The big grab from KTM to close it out. Really impressed with KTM Zarya so far. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. We saw the Zarya, you know, you, you play kind of two different play styles when you've got a Reinhardt or a Winston as your counterpart, right? And I feel like KTM did a very good job on both of those just being that general, almost third DPS, really backing up the folks when they needed it most, utilizing the bubbles in the best moment. And while we've got a minute kind of out of the game a little bit, I just want to I just want to take a moment to appreciate the uh, the juxtaposition between Little Duck and Grim Reaper on the uh, support <laughs> line for Carol. I think that's absolutely hysterical. I do not think you could get any further apart than those two names, and that that gave me quite the chuckle. So I wanted to bring that up. Oh, and you know, you've got a cute papaya on the other side. That's, that's... <laughs> A lot of a lot of adorable names, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some good names going on here. I like it. I like it. So now we're gonna see CMU gonna be sticking. Now we're on the legs instead of the cowboy. So Rudel trying to make a bit of a difference. Lasker Doe on the May. So I really want to be keeping an eye on the DPS here, especially because the tanks were looking at a mirror matchup. But as I say it, you know, it's gonna be immediately just taken off line. Lionheart picks up a double kill, and Carol, they don't even get to play the game. I mean, they just walk right into their own death. Has a nice attack there, brutal coming up with some some clutch picks, uh, and that's a player who's listed on their roster as a tank player coming in, picking up the soldier and showing some great impact. There it is, lighting up the feet again, taking the speed off the table, really not allowing Grim Reaper to disengage. This is going to buy some extra percentage for CMU. So props for Brutal for coming in on that. As a, a you know, we're talking about tank players, you know, trying to off roll, and you feel like you you kind of do it in secret a little bit. Brutal out here, just showing it to the world. Yeah, Brutal is. But putting their money where their mouth is for sure, showing us that they are a very well-rounded and capable Overwatch player. 25% already in favor of CMU. They're going to try to force us to that third stage, try to keep Oasis alive. But Rayway finding Pez is going to be exactly the way to do that. Main tank gone. Carol might be able to get a kill or two, but realistically, they should probably tuck tail because winning this fight without a Ryan shield is going to be very difficult. Yeah, they're struggling to close this gap. And even as talented as KTM was in that first round, uh, just could not break through. Certainly not Banant Matrix in your face. 
So nice job from Luna there. 50% already picked up. Carol University will have a oh uh, Dana Boost online. Obviously opening up with this Deadeye. Twice. Gets a little anxious. Runs out of DM. Gets d max. This is a great opening. Grim Reaper has the Nano. Anticipate's going to go on to the Reinhardt. There it is. Yeah, perfect call there. Grim Reaper doesn't even put that on the Reinhardt. The Shatter comes out as well. So I think we're a couple too many ultimates in here, to be honest. That was three already. Last Grado has that Blizzard. Might use it. I hope they don't. I hope they save it for the next engagement. And oh, 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 we, we no. saw the thought process, but they just could not move fast enough. Lascardo goes down, and Carol, they commit three, four ultimates. They still four lose ultimates. the fight. Yeah, the rally was invested later into that fight as well. So four ultimates into that and could not find any joy. Now, granted, CMU were able to strike back with plenty of their own, uh, and Carol did force them to use those. So we're pretty much at a neutral. Lascardo does have that blali uh, that Blizzard, excuse me. It's the last hope for Carol to make something happen here in the second sub map. Yeah, I mean, now we're never we're looking at 98%. Somebody's even got a touch. There's the Blizzard actually going to find some great leg, leg room in the middle here, able to really get aggressive, move forward. And now they've got to find the kills off the back, but they didn't get any total freezes. Lionheart already finding Little Duck. And Matrix turns into just Immortality Field. So a lot of abilities being used by CMU, but still, they're using them exactly how they need. A massive grab. However, no follow up. The grab coming out just a little bit late. Five grabbed, zero dead off the back of it. ATM just cannot carry hard enough. One kill in favor of Carol, but nobody's able to touch fast enough. That is going to be stage two in favor of CMU. We're going all the way to Gardens. I mean, the, the Blizzard, it bought a lot of space, but Carol University weren't able to follow up on it. I think they right. needed to keep continuing pressing the issue and force CMU all the way off the point. Because uh, it, it did, it opened up that center area for them to work with, uh, despite not getting any total freezes. Uh, and then maybe KTM gets that grab up a little earlier because you're putting down more damage and you got reinforcements there to follow up on that big grab. The grab was huge. Uh, but I mean, just as you, as you mentioned perfectly, not enough follow up too late in the fight. Uh, now we're looking at the same compositions as, you know, Lionheart was on the Reaper, I uh, was on the Winston in that last one, sticking with it here for round number three, Pez sticking with the Reinhardt. Uh, Team, you looked really good in this Winston composition. Yeah, I have to agree. In this stage in particular of Oasis is going to be crucial here because Winston and D.Va both love to utilize that high ground, right? And that's exactly what this stage is built for. So Lionheart getting hyper-aggressive here, going down to half HP, but might be able to outlift Pez, who falls even lower than that. Still, 6v6. Already, somehow, KTM's at 80 charge, but the pressure coming out, it looks like Carol, they're going to have to be the ones to tuck tail and run. They lose the coin flip. They need to re-engage, but... Until they re-engage on that high ground, this is going to be an insanely difficult to win matchup. Too much damage coming out from Railway and Brutal. Really nice job from them. You have the extra shielding from Carol. Uh, now the fight taking place on the low ground, but Little Duck goes down. You can see CMU kind of just starting to surround Carol. Carol has backed up all the way into the hallway. Oh, wow. And a boost is going to come out onto KTM. They think this is winnable. They got that kill onto Railway. Oh, no. Let's see if KTM can pull this out. Yeah, I mean, this is all the, the world is on KTM's shoulders right now. The Winston, he's angry, but he's not angry enough to take a nap here. Brutal is going to be able to find that kill. Turns into two, turns into three, Brutal. turns into four. Brutal. Link, and you miss it. Two thirds of the team just ripped off the face of the earth there. CMU, I mean, the name, living up to the name, it is brutal out here. Tank player, friends, listed as a tank player, comes up with the big clutch tack visor to close out what was a massive first engagement that one seemed to go on forever set this force control super important for cmu now they have the high ground yeah they have the high ground and we see a rally coming out from little duck here a bit of an aggressive play and oh twice eats the graviton surge just giving cmu such a leg up already brutal takes the other soldier out pez falls 4v6 in favor of cmu they lose ray away but i think the damage has been done this is CMU's fight to take once again. Cute Papaya going for that top frag support slot. Takes out Little Duck there. Silent and KTM not far behind. CMU, they may have done it once again. They have found some great footing, and the engagement ends in their favor. This team has woken up. What a huge eat from twice. I mean, that was like Pac-Man. I mean, just gobbled up the big, the big orb. Everybody turned blue and went running for their lives at Carroll University. Uh, that, that was an absolute fight winner. 
KTM has done excellent work on this Zarya, taking that out of the pocket, she completely swung the momentum. Carol now trying to approach from below. Oh. They've got some ults to work with. I'm looking at the shatter. Bubble's already been used. Yeah, and the shatter went right into it. Bubble was used and he shattered directly into the side of it, so nobody picked up off the back of that twice. Finding Lasker already. A massive primal turns into an impossibly oh, even death bigger blossom. death blossom. Array away is going to get flash banged out of it. Pez finds that petty kill at the final moment. Takes out Brutal with him, but I mean, they only losing one on the side of CMU. They've got 20 seconds till they win Oasis. Carol, I, I don't know what they can do here. I mean, even the short stint that the Death Blossom was out, it managed to pick up a pick, managed to do so much damage. Uh, just going down through the low corridor, going into Reaper was just not a great idea. Right. Uh, did not work out for him. And then obviously Pez wasting that shatter into the bubble. Uh, unfortunate, Carol not being able to get the value out of their ultimates. Nano boost out on the Pez. Let's see what he can do with this one. Yeah, poor Laskerdo has just not been able to play the game yet. Getting eliminated at the start of every fight. Pez finding two turns into three with the help of Silent there. Pez decides that they finally want to play a little bit of Gardens here on the side of Carol. However, they used every ultimate they had to do it. Only one ultimate, or excuse me, two ultimates on the board right now. One for each team. It's really going to come down to that mechanical skill difference here. Pez uh, with a much better shatter that time. Got the nano boost, got three with the shatter, really opened up the fight, worked much better around the bubble of Lionheart. Now KTM has it another grab. Let's see if Twice can eat this one up. Uh, I mean, you know, that'd be Twice in this sub map. So, hey, maybe it's in their name. Maybe they can call it into action. It's going to be a battle for high ground. I anticipate KTM to use this one early. Yeah, if the grab, okay, I was going to say, if the grab's eaten, this it's is big. just going to be a fight for CMU, but the grab's going to be colossal here, able to find the D.Va, take her out of mech, and Lionheart's already gone as well, so the tank line essentially gone for CMU, they're able to turn things around in favor of Carol for just a moment, but Carol, they've really got to start fighting this high ground, they keep giving CMU so much free space, and for no reason, but here they come, finally doing exactly what I need them to, that's going to force CMU off the high ground, and give Carol just that very small but such impactful competitive edge. Now a Death Blossom from Railway going to make an appearance. Looks like it's not going to be able to find anything quite yet, but with the help of Brutal, one will fall. Pez trying to save the day, finding two once again, but two have been traded out already on the side of CMU. Twice going to lose that mech. Pez falling to 55 HP. This Winston might be the one to save the day, but no, Lionheart has to go. Looks like 65% and counting for Carroll University. Huge play from Grim Reaper, getting the Nano Boost onto Pez at just the right time during that Death Blossom. Put the heals back into Pez's favor. They're able to get that Shatter out five. Those really two important picks amidst the chaos in the middle of that fight. Big play from Grim Reaper. Looking at the DPS ults, KTM almost with a yet another grab. Yeah, that last grab was able to make enough of a difference, right? Twice wasn't able to eat it, but... Twice still on that D.Va, so the Eat is always a fear, always a possibility. Silent might, oh, I was going to say might go for a high noon, but when they give up the high ground like that, I don't think we're going to be seeing anything. Yo, from the low ground, we're going to pick up Lionheart. The other grab coming out just a moment late, but Carol, they're still going to clean up off the back of it. At Matrix use here from Luna, she's trying to keep the team alive, and it looks like she may have been able to help them live long enough. Three kills now in favor of CMU. Little Duck has that nano online, able to help Grim Reaper stay alive, but it is the support line versus the world right now. We're going to have to see how long they can stand. They know it already been used on the little duck. Little duck has a Winston as well as oh, Brutal on the sword to contend with. Big job for Grim Raper and Brutal's gonna take them out. Little duck doesn't have the sustain anymore. KTM is back on this ball. CMU firmly in control. But uh, I mean, uh, Carol really yeah. needed to get that rally up. If yeah. Little duck can get back and get the rally up, maybe. Otherwise, I think CMU've got this one. Absolutely, Carol. I mean, the support line doing a great job living just as long as they needed to, but with Luna picking up a double kill there, a very bloodthirsty support, removing whatever hope Carol had of taking this map. CMU now, they're going to be able to take a waste with, you know, I not quite a reverse sweep, but they lost stage one and were able to win stages two and three, giving themselves a 1-0 lead in the series. It was really close. It was so close on all three maps, really. Uh, it Switch it over to the Winston composition. CMU just looked way more comfortable on that composition. They tend to control the high ground a lot more. This is the fat shatter we saw from Pez. Uh, one of two pretty good shatters from Pez in this one, but in the end, not enough to give Carol Uni the, the dub. It is CMU taking that one. And I think it's worth mentioning here that Carol came in with an eight and one map record while CMU Academy were coming in with a seven and two map. There's only one map loss differentiating between these two teams. Uh, but that one map loss meant a series loss for CMU. So now maps to maps, these two teams are tied up and, uh,
we're going with Eichenwald and Route 66 as we progress through these series. Both can be excellent Winston maps. Oh, absolutely. Eichenwald in particular, I talked about earlier how Winston really utilizes that high ground, the same thing as Diva. And second point, Eichenwald is going to be a, the perfect formula to bring that Winston to the table. So I really suspect we are not, we have not seen the last of everybody's favorite monkey here in Overwatch. He's going to be making an appearance once again, but Eichenwald, I feel like I want to talk a little bit about the DPS lines, right? Especially on the side of Carol. They feel out of place, so to speak. Like they haven't really been able to pick up their momentum quite yet. And I feel like if they can, even for a moment, kind of get to that high level that we expect that we've seen from them before, that's really when this series is going to get close once again. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I think, well, we are going to take a short intermission before we get into map two. So uh, y'all go hydrate, but don't go far. When we return, I can Valda. And we'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back, all you tanks, healers, and damage dealers. Still Septilence and Bullskunk here. We are one map deep, one that ended, and I wouldn't call it a shocking manner, but one that I think I really wouldn't have expected after stage one of Oasis. However, CMU finding themselves up 1-0. We're going to be jumping into Eichenwald. And like we talked about before the break, Eichenwald is, uh, I don't want to call it a Winston-only map, but it's definitely one I would expect to see some Winston on. Yeah, certainly if you can get past the initial choke. Uh, point B is just kind of Winston's playground, but a, a good rush composition. We saw uh, Railway pulling out that Reaper, a Reaper alongside of Winston get into that that zombie comp, as we've seen before, uh, and play in a very just rush forward style fashion. Uh, could certainly serve them well. I thought Lionheart looked looked quite significantly better yeah. uh, on, on the Winston versus the Reinhardt. Uh, just seemed to understand the flow. There's a, a, a definite rhythm. 
to the way you play Winston. And it seems to suit Lionheart very well. I don't know if they're more comfortable in that hero or if it's just a style thing. Something I'm certainly keeping an eye on as we progress through this series. We did get a side swap here coming in, Sep. So CMU taken to the attack. They'll be in the red jerseys first. Uh, looking at the defense, we're going to some good old Ryan Zarya for this defense. Silent picking up the Hanzo. Yeah, I also want to point out as well, not only have we swapped sides, we've actually swapped a player as well. Immortal Wind's going to be subbed in here for Carroll University on my favorite hero in the game, on the Junkrat. So I'm very excited to see what comes from that. But like you said, Carroll, they're going for the tried and true. They're bringing that Ryan Zarya to the table. And I think this is going to be good because I commented earlier that I felt they weren't matching the damage that was being brought to the table. But Junkrat and Hanzo, I mean... I don't know. I don't know who does more damage than those two. <laughs> also, an interesting little note here: Lascardo has gone from the DPS role to the support role, and it is actually Little Duck who oh, yes. is uh, taking a seat. So a little bit of role swap on top of it. Uh, CMU Academy are coming out with the Rhine Diva. Uh, twice continuing that aggressive movement, just clearing off the high ground. Railway is sticking with his uh, Reaper. So we're going to get the Reaper May oh. as opposed to maybe the Reaper Sombra. Silent opening up with a great pick, though, and slowing things down, uh, both literally and figuratively. Yeah, I, yeah, quite quite literally, actually. I always say that playing a Reinhardt without a Lucio, you may as well be throwing the game, right? Because Reinhardt, he just does not have the utility to move. He needs to get up close to personal to do damage. And normally he's punished for that very reason. But Lucio gets to remove kind of that nerf, so to speak. Makes Reinhardt a little bit faster. But his Q Papaya is removed two times in a row. It's just almost impossible for Lionheart to do much of anything. Going to be taken offline by KTM. The rest of the team, not far behind twice, makes it out with the skin of her teeth. But she's getting chased. She's got to keep going. And it's the speed factor oh, wow. is doubly true once you put a Reaper into the mix. Yeah. Railway needs that speed as well to close the gap. And not only have Carroll University managed to shut down Keep Papaya twice, which has prevented CMU from executing on their game plan, but look at the ult charge from Keep Papaya. If we're at only 37%. That's, that's got to be all barrier. passive. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, that has to be all passive. Oh, oh no! Oh, Q Papaya three times in a row. We have yet to have a complete team fight as this Lucio just the worst luck in the world. First a lucky headshot, then right into a dragon. There's a Reinhardt kill in there somewhere. That is just a rough start for CMU here. Already half of the time bank gone. There's a bounty on Q Papaya's head. And like, yeah. we're almost two minutes in, and Q Papaya's not even at 50% yet. Now here comes the Nano Boost on to Pez. Oh, oh! Pass. Wait, Pez shattered! Wait! Oh, did, did that no. cancel shatter? Pez shattered. I thought I saw the hammer go up right at the second, but I thought it wasn't going to count. I thought it was one of the ones you did it late enough. You know, it wouldn't steal your ult charge, but no, Pez. Pez dropped the hammer and hit... I mean, I guess the hammer didn't drop, right? All of the Reinhardt did. Dropped and hit the ground there. Devastating for Carol. Now, it's all right, because even if CMU takes this, you burned a lot of the time bank off, but losing a shatter like that is never good. What a way for Keep Papaya to get back into this game. Yeah. Finding some revenge after falling three times. Keep Papaya with the aggressive move in the oh, final wow. blow. I mean, it didn't do all the damage. But now, CMU Academy have a lot of momentum, and they've managed to get themselves back into this ult rotation. They've got plenty to work with as they approach Street Phase. Look at Twice up here, already controlling high ground. Not going to let Silent get set up. Yeah, honestly, I would expect Lionheart to swap out of the Winston here after Shatter, right? You're going to go for Shatter. It's a pretty fast-charging ultimate. You can get some real progress with it. So I would expect to see an Earth Shatter make an appearance, but I would be surprised to see Lionheart kind of maintain the Reinhardt really? game play. Now, ATM gonna bite the bullet pretty hard here. Twice is caught out by a Rhine charge, but she gets to just boost her away. Here comes a follow up from Lionheart, not able to catch anybody but returning to the team, returning to the point. Might eat a sleep dart, but no, Grim Reaper will, I guess, beat himself there. Gonna be the Grim Reaper taken offline by this Rhine. These wheels, they started moving, they have not stopped. Why don't I just picture the Spider-Man meme, but it's two Grim Reapers pointing at each other? That's exactly how that feels. <laughs> uh, big kill on KTM heads up play from Railway. Uh, that would have been Grav Dragons coming out in that previous fight. Yeah. Uh, now, they did use the old, the sound barrier. So, CMU, the, they're going to be relying on either aggression or this immortality field to defend against the Grav Dragons. Way, way down. Oh, no. right in the back. Oh. The Death Blossom. All right, you know, you, you see Carol go for a crazy play. They see they put up the grab, they put up the dragons, and then it's Ray away. You steal not only probably the play of the game, but the team fight as well. Three from Ray, two from twice. So everybody taken offline there. Immortal was killed in the middle somewhere as well. So that was a complete and total team kill for CMU. They used two ultimate, or three technically to do it. 
Now moving into this, Immortal wins. This is a Junkrat's playground here. Point three, I can wall. Might be able to really slow this down. Uh, but back to that final fight, great play from Railway. That was getting yeah. aggressive. You had to get ahead of the Grav Dragons. That's exactly what they did. Oh, wow. Here's a big shatter from Pez. Oh! Brutal just literally steals all momentum. Freezes Pez in his tracks. The charge doesn't get to make an appearance. He doesn't get to hold up the shield. And losing the main tank like that, Immortal only finding one kill. I feel like you need to find a couple more in Carol. Looks like they might finally get that opportunity. KTM goes for the reload, but Silent there to clean up these kills. ZMU, they just get caught completely in their tracks here on third point. Nice shatter from Pez. Uh, and uh, the Brutal's Blizzard tried to stop the follow-up, but it just was not quite enough. Not only is those small quarters great for Junkrat, they're great for Hanzo as well. Yeah. Silent used that dragon when KTM used their Graviton Surge. Silent already has another one online ready to go. Tight corridor, oh. good place to use it. Starts off with an opening kill here. Yeah, an opening kill, and that's a crucial one at that. Brutal taking offline now. Ant Matrix from Luna, some dragons from dragons. Silent just to reopen the space. Force some mortality field finds one kill already, and it's the main support. That's probably the best kill you could have found at this point in the engagement. But Crim Reaper also falls. Carol, however, fighting tooth and nail to win this team fight, and they're going to be able to do just that. The Baby Diva, the sole survivor, and they choose not to stagger. An interesting choice. I, I like it. It's honorable. It's honorable. You know, let's just keep the team fights going. Uh, you know, Remake does damage, by the way, so, you know, perhaps yeah. really a little wary. Uh, you know, didn't have quite the precision to let them Remake and then get that extra 600 ult charge back. You know, I better just dispose of them. Focus on your comms and how you're going to win this next fight. And that's going to be Grav Tire. Oh, boy. And they might not even start with the Tire in this fight as the Baptiste taking offline again. I'm going to say Luna, she's getting cute papaya to here. That's two fights in a row. That, that oh, no. supports the main to fall, but twice might be the one to turn it around. Here comes some action here. The support's now offline for Carol as well. It's going to be an incredibly difficult matchup. Cute papaya finds a counter kill on Depez. And tank gone. Immortal might have to pop that Tire just to make some space. Minute 45 left on the clock. This Junkrat, 36 HP, and he's still peeking corners. He even finds a kill! Laskardo is also <laughs> going to pick up an elimination onto twice. Ray away, hiding in wait. This is going to be a crucial elimination to get rid of. And Ray gets scared off. So both Reinhardts go down. Pez did use their Shatter, got some value out of it. But it's much harder to push oh, no. without a Reinhardt oh! than it is to defend. Yeah, Ray is just going to get caught. I knew he was back there. That, I knew that wasn't going to last, unfortunately, for Ray away. Um... But yeah, so on the defense, you can just hide behind corners and yeah. use that and peek. Uh, it's harder, much harder to push without the Rhine. Blizzard out, countered Great. by Lasker's trance. Great transcendence coming through there. An amazing job keeping the team alive. Silent finding Cute Papaya with those dragons again. Even one elimination with the damage ultimate like that one can make all the difference. Twice picks up Pez, also twice now on Zarya. I think for the first time off Diva, Brutal is going to pick up a kill onto Lasker Doe, but the trade was made. Lionheart sent back to spawn as well. Only 50 seconds on the clock. We entered this with four minutes and 18 seconds. We are down to 45. Yeah, Carol, I mean, it just really oh, put no. the whole war. Carol point save, and here comes the Death Blossom. No! Ray away, not here to stay. Immediately boosted away by Immortal Winds there. Just a great opportunity here for CMU, but they've got to use this Rip Tire. They've been sitting on it for a there while. Is. There it is. Death Blossom takes out both DPS. Zarya falls as well. I don't think this Rip Tire is going to get the chance to make an appearance. We see the Ana desperate to touch the cart, but she's not he's able to do so. Low. 19 seconds left, and I think Carol just sat on that Rip Tire a little bit too long. Yeah, we were uh, we, we did our our best similar impression there. By the way, there's a throwback to, to season one of Overwatch League for you. Uh, with a there it is. Uh, OG fans will know what I'm talking about. But uh, CMU able to push it home. Uh, Carroll University did manage to get that, that that clock down quite a bit. Didn't quite get it to overtime, which is what they were really right, hoping for. Right. Um, but hey, to, to take it down from four minutes plus to 19 seconds, you know, that is a that is a morale lifter right there. That's the difference between just feeling totally defeated going yeah. on your attack and feeling like, hey, this is absolutely winnable. Yeah, because once the card starts rolling on a third point, I think uncontested, it only takes about 40 to 50 seconds to complete. So realistically, there could have been you know, a three and a half, four minute time bank online, but Carol really turned it around there. They were really able to find some great engagement, some great eliminations and burn it down to less than a minute. Like you said, overtime, a little more ideal, but 19 seconds, that's, that's pretty darn good. It's doable. Absolutely winnable for Carroll University as they go on the attack. They're going to be running into a Reinhardt Zarya composition once again. We're going to get a little bit of the old uh, Ice Cowboy 
here on the battlefield. This, this tight choke, especially in the beginning, is so dangerous going up against a May. Pez needs to be really, really aware and cautious of these May walls coming out of Brutal. Absolutely, and Brutal, I mean, the May walls, I think, are going to make him make or break this defense, right? You want to catch off a main tank, maybe a support, but if you get rid of the Reinhardt, that's... That's just said and done. So I really want to see Brutal play it slow, play careful, and try to play these chokes. Getting too aggressive, I think, is going to be the Kryptonite here for CMU. Carol, they're going to be rolling in. Speaking the Devil, what a May wall there. The Reinhardt caught out, has to left shift, and it's still not going to be enough to keep him alive. A one-for-one -one trade, Immortal Wind's taken offline by Brutal, and CMU, they've got the numbers. There it is, Silent able to trade it up once again. We are looking at a straight-up 4v4 with a massive spawn advantage for Carol. Absolutely huge. Uh, and despite a great start for CMU, dangerous, dangerous spot for Walls because the Baptiste has to go all the way over the arch to get the yep. mortality field down. Uh, and it wasn't enough to save the main tank. Looks like both Reinhardt's going to make it to this battle about the same time. This is about to get really messy, Sept. Yeah, this is going to get messy for sure. I think we're going to be really looking at this Junkrat to make a world of difference. Getting to spam from the corner there, dealing a lot of Watch. damage. Immortality field gone. Now we're going to see a Shatter once again down the drain. Lionheart not able to find a darn thing. Lasker, though. Lasker? I wanted bloodthirsty supports, and I am getting them today. Not only Luna, Lasker Doe as well. Pez and Silent cleaning up the rest. We might as well change Carroll University to the janitors because they are cleaning up this mess right here on Eichenwald. I think they're going to cap with even more time than CMU had. Holy cow, Lasker Doe. Oh, I mean, the hardest picks to get in these Brawly compositions are your opening pick yep. and the most important one. Laskardo comes up with not only the first, but the second as well. And it just makes for an oh. easy 64. Good start. We're going to get a recontest, a very quick one at that on the high ground. Look at this. Three kills in no time flat. That ant matrix. I mean, that was a bold move. It got the job done, though. As long as it works, it's not a stupid idea, right? And Luna, she made hey, plenty exactly. of space. Got a great opportunity. And all of a sudden, not even a fight. And CMU, they're back in they're back. In the driver's seat they are back in control of this fight and what an excellent way to just stop the momentum in its tracks so now seeing you has bought all of this space they can choose wherever they want uh -oh. to fight from and they're choosing to get real oh, aggressive. Five man man shatter. Shatter, though. oh man everybody but everybody but brutal there i believe now from the back line silent hidden weight i mean lived up to the name silent is a mouse there able to get a great opportunity a triple kill i believe with that attack visor and now, Carol, they get to move this cart once again. Four minutes on the clock. I wasn't quite... I thought Brutal might have got hit by it, but it was just the Discord orb was covering up the Oh, stone. perhaps, yeah. Um, I honestly didn't see, though. It could have been a five, could have been a six. Either way, it was quite huge from Pez. But that's... I mean, here they have... Look at these quick engagements. CMU have the barrier to run in with this as well. Oh, boy. Here's a grab from twice. Oh, it's colossal, actually. I'm shocked we're not going to be seeing any action come off the back of it here. We see the high noon coming out, but... No kills quite yet. The beat drop from Q Papaya trying to keep that team alive. Lionheart already falling, Fire. though. Here's that tire. Let's make it a big one. Two of them going to kiss go. themselves goodbye. Head back to that spawn room. We'll see them again in about 15 to 20 seconds twice. And Luna down. Silent traded out, but Carol, they've just got the numbers advantage right now. They hold up that Ryan shield. They sit pretty, and they should be able to walk this in. It's so close. But, I mean, hey, CMU are fighting tooth and nail. Lionheart eventually falls on the back end. Oh. Immortality field won't last long, man. They, they wow. did it. I, they did it. I think. I, I'm shocked. I think Railway we saw Carol. Out. Sorry. I, I think we saw Carol get a little bit too aggressive there. I talked about how they needed to yeah. hold up the Ryan shield and sit pretty, and they did the exact opposite. They gave us yeah. the antithesis of what I said they needed to do. So, <laughs> maybe, so maybe, maybe they need to just be a little bit more cautious with their holding W. Oh, because it's going to bite them now. Uh, yeah. Now CMU can go back and reclaim this high ground. Uh, it, it looks like they are going to send at least a few people up there. You got the Lucio back, preventing any back. Got the entirety of Carol just charging this point, though. Yeah, I mean, CMU, they have high ground. They have heart control. They have spawn advantage. But what they didn't have was enough bodies on point. Carol, they just walk it in. They tap it in, give themselves a birdie here on second point. And it's going to be three, a little shy of four minutes on the clock. Carol, they've got this shatter, but Pez, no pun intended, has been so hit or miss with these Earth Shatters. This one's going to have to be huge. Last one we saw was pretty big. If if he could do it again. Um, oh, great kill from Laskardo once again in that last fight. Table to take down the Lucio. That is not an easy shot to make. Yeah. Ant Matrix up for the defense. Pez is looking for the shatter. Yeah, Pez is looking for it, but your soldier's missing already. Shatter oh, finds no. squat, finds absolutely nothing there. The immortality field from Grim Reaper also down. Carol, they've got no ultimates. They're coming up on a couple, but 
They use Transcendence there. That's an ultimate they're going to want back. Oh, man. Shatter gets interrupted, waited way too long, just standing in front of the Ant Matrix. If you're going to do that, you need to just do it immediately. As soon as that Ant Matrix comes out. Yeah. I uh, just kind of stood around, wait for the shield to break, then decided to shatter. Transcendence wasn't able to keep him up either. Feral University it may just need to take a dry fight here. No, they're going to go and invest Ant Matrix, but Laskardo's down. Yep, Laskardo down once again. This is going to be very crucial as Grim Reaper is the next to go. A great Earth Shatter from Lionheart there. Absolute cleanup crew from CMU. An amazing job there. Feral University walking back with uh, two DPS ults and a grav. So certainly doable here. Uh, Keep Papaya will have the sound barrier up to defend against it. But it's, I think they need to just slow down, just like take a breath yeah. and and discuss how they want to approach this. Look for the right opportunity. Make something happen. Like, don't stand around all day, but don't force it either. Yeah, forcing it, I think, is where Carol's really started to struggle, right? They keep forcing these fights. They keep forcing these engagements when they didn't necessarily have to. Now that bomb, uh -oh. big enough. Lasker Doe is going to turn into the Lasker Doe now as they lose that Zenyatta in a crucial moment. Pez also falling. And I mean, CMU, they just get to hold W here. And Alaska don't. Uh, yeah. well, I, I, I don't know. The clever uh, pun eludes me, Seth. Let's up. No, I think yours is better. It's on the tip of my tongue. I think yours you is know? better. Alaska don't. <laughs> That's good. That's clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, they use the tack visor, but they do hold on to grab. So Carroll University don't invest too heavily into that after losing Lasker Doe early. But it's gives them you a chance to get their rotations back into this. So they're running into another Ammatrix. Luna got huge value out of the last one. Yep. They will need to play very carefully around it. Yeah, the Ammatrix is here. The grab from KTM and the way they keep looking at the ground tells me we might be seeing that grab here in just a moment. A high noon picks up squad there. Ray is going to be was at 25 HP taken out, but here comes so many trades back and forth. Rip tire not going to be big enough. Brutal giving their life to pull that tire and finding nothing with the beat from Q Papaya just made beyond a world of difference there. Amazing coordination and a great opportunity here for CMU to keep up this hyper aggressive momentum. A uh, perfectly timed sound barrier to counter out that tire. Uh, and I think Brutal had done enough work that uh, Carroll University were going to struggle to win the fight anyway. But nevertheless, tip of the hat to keep Papaya. Also to Luna, another perfectly timed, well-placed amp matrix that allowed Brutal to just clean up shop. That was super crisp. Uh, and uh, Luna's been outstanding on this Baptiste here so far. Now it's Grim Reaper's turn to answer. 35 seconds on the clock, Seth. 35 seconds, so there's no world where Carol gets this with nearly as much time as CMU or any time, honestly. It looks like they might not get it at all as a phenomenal shatter comes out from Lionheart. This feels so reminiscent of Oasis, right? Where Carol, they felt like they were kind of in charge for a majority, but it felt like they were in the lead in those final moments, that final stage. CMU turned it around, and here on... Point three of Eichenwald. It looks like they're doing the exact same thing. Uh, Luna just continues to impress me. Look at this already over halfway towards another. Uh, that was an awkward self-destruct. Yeah. I don't know what uh, happened there. That was weird. Yeah, that was just weird looking. Uh, but a Matrix like, is too far in the back. You're not getting enough space out of it. Uh, just a little preemptive kind of jumped the gun on the Ant Matrix. Now the TAC Visor is the last hope for Carroll University to push that home at all. Yeah, I think we've talked about that so much. You know, just kind of pushing the envelope here a little too far. They keep getting a little too aggressive, using things too early, and that's really been a thorn in Carol's side. I believe this is going to be their first loss of the season if they cannot walk this card in right here, right now. Brutal Ooh. finds two, two more go down. Rayway finds that fifth elimination in the blink of an eye, and CMU takes the series. Could be two, could be three zero, could be two one. We've still got Route sixty six, but regardless, CMU are some guaranteed victors here tonight. And that is your two and one team moving yeah. to three and one on this season. They will not get pushed down into that red zone. They are going to stay firmly up in that third, fourth place slot. Uh, and oh. now we only have two undefeated teams left. Carol Uni will be three and one as well. So just on the back of two map wins, CMU have propelled themselves up these standings, are now firmly in the green. And, and what an outstanding performance from them so far. A uh, big hole, we saw two big holes really on point C, but it was CMU with better discipline, better ult usage, and the support. Holy cow, Luna right now is my player of the match. I have been thoroughly impressed with her play today. Easy agree. Easy agree. Luna has just been on top of it all. Every AM matrix has been nothing short of colossal. Even if they haven't gotten kills, they've made that space, right? And that, to me, yes. is usually what that ultimate's more about. If you see kills, that's great, but making the space, it's that fight opener, that space maker as well, and that 
because of everything Luna has done and more. I believe we're going to throw it to one more super short break before we come into Route 66. So we'll be right back with you folks for Map 3 in just a couple of minutes. everybody welcome back from map three i hope you guys missed us as much as we missed all of you at home we love doing this for you guys so having you guys watching is always our favorite part of this but we're jumping into my favorite map of this of the map pool we have today route 66 i don't believe we're swapping sides but we're just, going, just kind of looking at the map as a whole you know putting the teams aside are there any team cops that really get run pretty often here on route 66 Oh, I mean, this is one that varies pretty drastically. Yeah. Uh, the, the Eraser has become pretty common on defense. Actually, you can set up on top of Big Earls. It's still very effective once you reach point B, and then is, again, super effective once you get inside to that point C area. So that's that's one of the strongest competitions I've seen as far as on the defense. On the yeah. offense, I mean, Winston's still very viable. Wrecking Ball is a personal favorite on this map. You tend to see a lot of Wrecking Ball in higher levels of play on Route 66, but we've seen much more rush-based compositions. Can right. be harder to pull off on this map 
because you don't have access to oh all the high ground, no matter how you want to path. It requires a Symmetra to really close the gap against the other comps. Now, from what I'm seeing here, Carroll University is going to pull out a, a Brawl composition, though they do have Silent and Immortal that have some range capability. We'll have to wait and see where they decide to set up, because that's going to tell us a lot about what CMU are going to do on their approach. Yeah, so Carol, they, I think you made a great observation there. They've got some distance, right? They can shoot you from afar. CMU cannot do that. No hero on their team, other than maybe Zenyatta and Genji's primary fire, is going to reach very far. So CMU, they're going to have to get hyper-aggressive. They're going to have to be punching Carol straight up in the face. This is going to be this is going to be interesting. At least they're on the offense, so they have kind of that, that contemporary advantage, so to speak. But I want to see kind of what comes out of this Luna swapping out of the Ana. I think that makes a lot more sense as well. I think CMU is really going to struggle on this initial engagement. Oh, unless you can get on the back line. That's what it's... Oh, uh, no. Lionheart's down, though. That's what yeah. I was worried about. I feel like the tank line for CMU, uh, they overextend just a little bit every time. You know, just a little too far. And sometimes they pay for it. Sometimes they don't. CMU, they had that very brief advantage. They've lost the Winston. Genji's down as well. I'm really surprised to see a Nanoblade right now. I'm really surprised to see that's what CMU's going for. Uh, Carroll University did make a swap as we're seeing the red T come into play off tank and KTM has oh. moved to the main tank role. Uh, so it's the first time we've seen red T in today. Uh, Carroll University after losing maps one and two, uh, hoping this can be the change uh, that, that might bring a W into their win column. And they're looking to make this kill box right on the point. So CMU trying to circumvent that and go dive on these supports. Yeah, doing a great job at that. Both tanks just full sending into the back line. They know removing the Lascardo from the engagement is going to make this nice just shot. so much easier to win. A great shot from Silent there, a headshot onto that Genji who could not run fast enough. Another one onto Brutal there. So Silent making beyond a world of difference will be taken out by Q Papaya, but the damage has been done. Robert, he's online. Yep, the big Omnic Butler ready to go for Silent once they return. They'll be able to use that to contest. Uh, I do believe there is time, though. There's not a Lucio on the battlefield. This is going to be close. Yeah, this is going to be a close one for sure. I think, yeah, we're going to see the re-engagement come through right before this. This is going to be that real fight where it's going to turn the tides here. Either CMU runs away with this and they get to keep that advantage. And it looks like that's the storyline we're sticking with. So I'm not even going to tell you the other one. As CMU comes through here, finds every elimination they needed except for the red T. But I don't think she even made it to the fight in time. Yeah, she's back there by the gas station. So this is going to be a much slower burn. Trying to make it out with the mech is going to be the crucial option here. It looks like she's not going to be able to do it. Oh, man. Maybe D.Va just left alone. Oh, that's disastrous. Truly. Uh, I mean, either you got to find a way to get that mech back, like, now. Uh, and then you sacrifice dead. yourself, and you are so far out of the fight. So either way, it takes a lot of time off the clock, and Red Team does, uh, I guess, decide to sacrifice himself. I honestly didn't see that, uh, how they went down. But Diana. it's going to be a 5v6 here. Now, on the other side, CMU did use their Nano onto Lionheart. So this is going to be a dry blade coming out from Railway. Yeah, I I don't know why they would do that. I don't think pulling Genji Blade without a Nano is ever a good idea, personally. But, you know, I'm not a Genji player, so maybe they know something I don't. Railway here in the back line has been arguably the most consistent DPS that we've seen today. So really trying to make that count here in map 3. Grim Reaper getting hyper-aggressive, trying to give Lionheart a run for their money. And... Able to do just that, the Primal getting no value. Uh, I didn't find any kills, but it definitely displaced this defense enough. Where yeah. Twice yeah. and right away we're able to push in uh, and follow up and find the separated defense from Carol and kind of pick it apart at the seams when they're little individual duels. Uh, and wow. so it's it was it did its job. It wasn't flashy. It didn't light up the feed. It wasn't a fearless Primal. It still did its job. <laughs> and now we've got the the Nano Blade ready to go. And, I mean, hey, you've got options. I mean, it, it, the Nano worked yeah. on Lionheart the first time, but you do have that Nano Blade option. Oh, so lethal. Absolutely. Oh, so lethal indeed. I mean, lethal to everything but in Transcendence, which Carol does not have online right now. And honestly, Immortal wins. Get back on that Junkrat, right? Making a huge difference. Attack oh, Visor, no. not that great of an ultimate, but the Blade, not able to do Ma. Never mind! Oh, I was just about to say, only able to find one kill, and they immediately found two more. The Red T doing her absolute darndest to keep this team fight alive, finding three of her own, trading it out. DMU, they actually have to tuck tail because of that. The Red T just single-handedly turned that fight. 
Brutal dashed right in front of Railway as the Nano yeah, went out. See it. And the Tracer gets the Nano. Railway's Boosty still able to pick up three, but then Red T just turns it up into another gear, gets the rematch kill onto Luna, and goes on to just dominate. Big Bionate onto KTM. They get the Nano, but they don't get the heal boost from it. Yeah, absolutely no heal boost coming out quite yet. Now being stuck with a Pulse Bomb, KTM offline, not able to stick to that main tank very aggressively. Immortal still on the legs, and I've got to say, I don't like that pick. I really think Junkrat makes such a positive impact here. Oh, we saw Brutal go for the health pack, but Grim Reaper gets to send them back to the spawn room. Silent traded out, DPS lines one for one here. Three and a half minutes for CMU right now. That Bionade was, could have been map winning from Luna, continues to impress me and make a case that she is player of the match right now. Uh, keep Apaya going down early. The soldier might be able to find some value with this tack visor. I see a lot of uh, 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 what reticles, I guess, on the screen. A lot of markers. <laughs> yeah, a lot of markers indeed. Now, Lionheart already finding a primal kill onto a mortal who I am crossing my fingers. They swap onto something else here. We hear the nano boost come out as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah the nano Lionheart. making an appearance onto Lionheart. Transcendence already gone from Grim Reaper. And the wins, not even the nano can keep Lionheart alive. Carol just collapsing on top of him, man. Mortal Wimps swapping onto the Reaper here. And that's why we see a, a Zenyatta on both ends of the battlefield. That Discord right. orb is, in my opinion, the second best cooldown in the entire game. Number right, one right. would be Immortality Field. Uh, number two has to be these Discord orbs. Look at the Reaper. Even with all the self-healing, they have to get out of there because they're Discorded. And they can't stand a chance against that D.Va. Only semi-related, but I think one of the most impactful abilities in this game is, of course, Sombra's hack. I think she is. Manual hack would be up there, too. You, you're yeah, manual right. hack is absurdly strong. That is, But definitely in terms of support, you've hit the nail right in the head. Transcendence, one of the best abilities in the game. Q Papaya showing us exactly why. We hear Bob make an appearance there from Rayaway, and Q Papaya trying to keep that Bob alive. Silent still has uh, the aim Bob of their own, not making an appearance quite yet. A nano from Laskardo on to KTM, who is already antenated, so no heal boost and no damage boost, as you do not get to swing that hammer from the afterlife, my friend. Robert now making an appearance from Silent. That's going to be enough to scare CMU away once again. Better late than never. Uh, Very true. As far as Bobbert, and, and Bobbert indeed uh, found some good impact, so we won't question the timing there from Silent. Uh, as it was enough. I mean, that one was down to the wire. Yeah. I thought Luna's Bionade was going to be enough to turn that fight, uh, especially with the uh, Transcendence engage. It looks so good at the start. But Carroll University able to weather the storm just just enough in that oh boy. man and Bobbert. There's a self-destruct going over the top and the engage with Lionheart. Lionheart engaging there with the Diva Bomb, trying to find anything, but it's going to be Rayway who picks up that opening kill. The Red T commits a bomb. Trying to, I probably just for the remake. Yeah, I got a remake straight away. Trying to keep this a full 6v6. Brutal down. Now 5v5, a DPS missing on both sides. This feels so reminiscent of Eichenwald. A huge time bank going into third point, and maybe you're going to cab with less than a minute online. This could be the turner, though, for Carol. They could put a point on board here. I mean, if history is going to repeat itself, it means it's that much more important for CMU to finish. It Absolutely. came down to the end, and one team finished, seconds. one team got close, but no cigar. And they are seriously running out of time. One last chance. Nano boost available for Luna. Lionheart going over to the re uh, to the Reinhardt, rather, uh, as they move into this point. The only thing they have to watch out for is going to be that oh. Death Blossom, perhaps even a Nano Death Blossom. Nano is out. Last I didn't see used. where it went. I, I also did not catch where the Nano was. Nobody's lit up by it either. Perhaps it was eaten by the Red T. I don't even know if that's possible, to be honest. No, it could have gotten canceled. Yeah, perhaps it got canceled there. I really did not see what happened. But either way, not making an appearance like it needed to be. Twice has that bomb. The final ultimate here for CMU. Silent going to be committing everybody's favorite aim, Bob. But it's going to be really difficult to turn this around, even with the help of that Omnic. Daryl there just playing the long game now, trying to stall for as long as possible. We are in the overtime. Lionheart falls, but Laskardo it out in the same breath. Grim Reaper with the Transcendence trying to keep the dream alive. Brutal here is starting to not miss a shot. However, Silent not going to miss a shot clean on to Brutal. We are in the overtime now. Immortal wins the only ultimate online right now is that Death Blossom. Not sure they're even going to get the chance to use it here. They may not need it with twice yeah, D-Max. There thinking. is nothing to eat it up. It's just the pilot D.Va twice holding down. They managed to get back in mech. Nope, not Huge for long. Huge play. Oh, they're immediately back out of it again. Immortal wins is all over. The right heart goes down. There it is. The heart is going nowhere.
Yeah, the second you begin the remech animation, your opponents can start doing damage to the mech. So it's it's very easy, especially as a high damage dealer like Reaper, to just dump those bullets in, make it a mindless activity, and get that diva right back out of mech. Really does help engage and increase that stagger time. Also, the Bionade onto a Reaper, I think, is just like a low-key broken combo. Uh, sure. I don't mean broken in a bad way, but it's super powerful. Let me right. let me correct right. myself because it's going to amplify that vampire healing. I mean, just talk about invincible. That's yeah. They immediately just get so much health back. Immortal Winds was feeling quite immortal. Was was standing head and shoulders above the rest there in the very end. It was just such a difficult task to try to dislodge that reaper. Is really what I'm getting at. I mean, that, that held down the fort very nicely. Uh, it came down to the wire. Uh, unfortunately for CMU, they're not quite able to push it home. But hey, you know what? They're going on the defense now. They're going to bring out the Reinhardt and the Diva. They know exactly what they need to do, how much they need to hold. Gerald University, we'll see if they can break it open. Does look like CMU are going to opt to stand on top of Big Earls with the Reinhardt. So I mean, just a lot of spam damage going down in the choke. Uh, their kill box is going to be directly in front of Big Earls here. Once, yeah. the, once Gerald University gets to this spot, uh, I'm be curious oh. to see when they engage. Oh, okay. This is an interesting move. I think Lionheart's going to try to bait him in because their kill box doesn't really move, right? I mean, right. Brutal's, no, the, the kill box is in the same position spot. here, though. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Silent here on the Widowmaker. I think we're currently in a scenario in Overwatch where I would honestly rather see an Ash with a damage boost on her th than a Widowmaker. I think that would just be such a positive impact here for Carol, especially in terms of momentum. Ash, even if she's not hitting headshots, she's doing insane damage. She's got that dynamite as well. Widowmaker doesn't have that same advantage, right? So Silent's really going to have to be hitting these headshots. We haven't seen any quite yet. But the kill box, we're seeing Carol. They're walking right into it here. Let's see what CMU can do to turn this momentum back in their favor. Just the threat of the Widowmaker does force Brutal off that high ground right, and, and creates right. a little space for Carol to work. They're pushing forward now. KTM almost has a shatter Ooh. online already. That's certainly going to help. Able to hit even one with that fire strike. Would have turned it around, but they did miss both the targets available. Brutal. Now down. Here comes a mortal from the heavens in the back line. That's going to be a lot of damage. And a what is that? Huge. Four man earth shatter coming off from KTM. Carol, they are rolling even stronger than CMU before them. This is also the same time last round we saw a total mayhem kill. Weirdly enough, we just got another one around the same spot. So not something you see every not something you see every day, but something I'm glad I saw twice today. Uh, a, a little, a little present from CMU, a little, little death from the grave. But uh, anyway, you slice it. Carol is still able to push up that point despite the little moral victory from Rayway. <laughs> yeah, Rayway with the moral victory, but Carol, they're looking for the real one, right? They're trying to end this <laughs> series in that two-one. I love killing people with total mayhem. I think it's hysterical, but I know people hate it. That's that's like the number one way to tilt somebody is kill them with total mayhem. It is. <laughs> Woo! Golly, I've been on the wrong end of that fight. Let me tell you what. But Silent now going to be able to find that headshot kill onto Ray. So no total mayhem, no rip tire, nothing. None of that junk rat kit going to be making an appearance here yet. Carol, hey, I said this on Eichenwald, but I got to say it even more here. They have started moving this cart. They have not stopped for even a breath, even a moment. This has been Carol all day long here on this run. Uh, no more Jay Silly action at all from Royal Way, actually. You're going to go over to Tracer, get back into this fight. Sound Barrier out from CNU to try to engage, but they don't really get anything out of it. Okay, oh they boy. do find Last Grado, a huge pick. Grim Reaper popped that trans, but it's a little too late to save the Baptiste. Yeah, Transcendence popped, but a little bit late there. We always say better late than never, but sometimes it is better to never do it because that Transcendence would have been a lot better for them in this next engagement. Immortal wins with a double kill from the heavens, just Sending it deep into the back line, able to find two, but I think they're the only person back there right now. Grim Reaper picks up Lionheart. This has been such a long fight. It's been so back and forth. Brutal finds Immortal. I think CMU comes out on top. Yeah, I think both teams just kind of falling back to their respective corners. Uh, bo both prize fighters kind of beaten and bruised and looking for the yeah. cut man right now uh, as the bell is about to ring on the next round. Uh, coming in. CBCMU looking to start this fight with some jabs coming from Luna in the form of a coalescence. self oh boy. rock to actually be the opener. The other throw it in the haymaker. Let's see if this can get the job done. Did Brutal just 360 high noon off the bridge there? Is that what I just saw? <laughs> I believe so. What, what a courageous thing to do. Your team's only up by one in a team fight. You just miss a flashbang and a diva bomb kill. And you're like, all right, let's go. 360. No. 360 dead on right now. <laughs> there Brutal it is. Does Brutal does find a kill, gets traded out pretty quickly. So I'd say CMU, they've done a really good job of catching out Carol time and time again. They found Lascardo twice, they found Grim Reaper once. So they're keeping the supports in line, but Carol, they need one kill 
really turn this one around. Brutal is uh, an airbender over here, Mr. Twinkletoes. <laughs> is going over, going over the soldier now. So they're, now they're going to get back with that wind-like speed into this I love fight. This window. Just, just to keep that pun going. Uh, yeah. Speaking of wind, there's. I was just about to a, say, speaking yeah. of wind, we've got a, <laughs> we've got a window making an appearance here. Lasker Doe is going to be able to keep things lined up, and here comes KTM. That wrecking ball we talked about earlier, such an aggressive threat, not able to line up any kills. But I really expect Immortal Winds to pull that tire here if they don't go down. Seven turns to four, turns to nil. Ooh. As Luna will be able to find that kill once again on Moira. Now, what is it? Their fifth support that we've seen from them today. I. I literally don't even know anymore. Luna, whatever support they're on, they're making a world of difference here in favor of CMU. This time bank has been whittled away. And once again, when I said better late than never, I was referring to the DPS ult, specifically Bob. All right, not to these transcendents. <laughs> Grim Reaper, that's twice Grim now. Reaper took it to heart. Late, late, right? I'm sorry, Grim <laughs> Reaper. I did not specify. That is on me, my friend. That is on me. Uh, you need to be using those transcendents a little bit earlier in the fight. Uh, not when you're already down to that's two of your most, Im oh. most important olds going to waste. Nice immortality field's gonna block that uh, pulse bomb coming out of railway though. Yeah, immortality field. Now that's tough. This is in a tough spot because if railway gets aggressive enough, you can definitely farm a pulse bomb in 30 seconds, right? You can get another Certainly. pulse bomb before that immortality field makes an appearance. But Ray already has not been giving us that level of aggression that we need. Immortal going for probably a rip tire off the rooftop here, had I to guess, but KTM, the one to make a lot of space, making noise in main, oh. sends, sends Lionheart into the stratosphere there, boops that Winston straight up the mob now. Carol there throwing every ultimate they have in four, and oh, there it is, the lighthouse gonna get traded out for the tire, but the Junkrat traded out all the same. The red T tries to knock Brutal off the high ground, but she can't quite find her footing. Brutal now finds the red T. We're down to sub 60 seconds here, Bull. This one was all twice. Twice opens up the fight with an early kill on the Lasker Doe. A hyper aggressive diva. I mean, listed as a DPS player, mind you. Right. Uh, right. And then follows up with two more kills. I mean, once the Baptiste is gone, team is relying on Zenyatta healing. I mean, I, I suppose. I don't, I mean, I'm confident that Immortal was on the soldier a second ago. Uh, but I suppose you might have some soldier heals with that. Nevertheless, right. in that previous fight, it wasn't enough to keep Carol in the fight. Twice, a big hero plays coming up with the triple kill in that last engagement. Now has self destruct ready to go. He's gonna throw that early to start this fight. And Mortality Fool's taking oh. care of it. Gets two. That's the domino. That is the domino that needed the fall there. Holy cow! Great timing on that immortality field. We saw Lasker Doe go a little bit too aggressive there. Right? I guess too defensive. Put that immortality field down a little bit too early, and that made all the difference. That is probably the last full fight we're gonna get. Five seconds. Uh, it's going to be a scramble to touch. Okay, Lucio's going to get first touch. It'll be Immortal Winds getting second touch. Coming uh, in now. Uh, Grim Reaper needs to make it to this point. If there's any hope. Okay, there's Grim Reaper. has a transcendence. Oh! Pulse Bomb eaten up. This is possible. This is doable for Carol. It's doable. This is a now or never moment. The final strike to begin. The DMAC on it twice as well with the beat. Force from Cupa Pie. The health advantage, of course, in favor of CMU. Popping every ultimate they have and more. Primal, Tac Visor, the Cowboy, he's gone. Zenyatta, he's gone. That is going to be CMU. They they saw defeat there for just a moment. They saw a loss. They kicked it up to 11, and they have turned it around. Brutal, in particular, on the legs with a 3K. Able to keep the dream alive. CMU walking away not only with a victory, but a 3-0 victory at that. What a statement game from Central Methodist University. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah, these teams were two and one. Uh, CMU was two and one coming into this. Carroll University undefeated. And they both had similar uh, opponents coming into this. They played two of the three opponents were the same exact opponents. A really good metric on how they stood. Uh, and only one map separated the two squads at the top of this game. Now, with this game done, we are halfway through the season, and CMU have put an emphatic victory in their column, really launching themselves up in the standings. That was, wow, they came out with a vengeance here, Septal. They came out. A vengeance, I think, is the best way to put it, Bullskunk. That was an amazing performance from them. Things were rough on Oasis. They lost stage one of Oasis. I was like, oh, no, things are looking a little bit shaky. Then they brought on a Winston, and they literally just did not pull a, pay a single punch afterward. It was absolutely brutal in yeah. favor of CMU. And I've got to say, we talked a lot about Luna being that kind of player of the game, so to speak, the MVP. I think I want to change my answer. I think Luna did a great job, but twice on the D.Va. I mean, yeah. just, just... A, a, a haymaker if I've ever seen one. Probably the most aggressive tank player that I have seen in ages, and I love nothing more than aggressive tank gameplay. So twice, really, to me, 
made a huge difference for CMU there, especially in the latter half of the series. That's a, Oh, I think my headset might have cut out there at the very end, but uh, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I think there might be a little recency bias on that. Uh, I still think Luna had a great overall performance. So I'm going to stick with my pick. So we'll give it kind of a joint, uh, a a joint MVP. All right. So that's, uh, I'm going to stick to my guns, uh, but I can't argue with it. I mean, it's, you're hundred percent correct. Uh, But both of those players had fantastic games. Uh, uh, I mean, tip of the hat to CMU as a whole. I mean, what what a great day for them. Yeah, absolutely. Just a phenomenal performance from them. Coming out strong and, like I said earlier, not pulling a single punch. But, folks, we're going to throw it to a super short break. I am done for the evening, so it has been fantastic. It has been great to be here. Bull Skunk, pleasure as always. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Sure. And we're going to be have, we'll be right back with Tropic Theory in just a couple of minutes. Don't go far. We'll NEC see you in just a couple of minutes.
each other up boys to all saints and impress and here it is our final night alive as the earth burns to the ground
Tonight at the NECC Overwatch, ladies and gentlemen, there's a civil war in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's Purdue Black versus Purdue Puce here. And on top of all of that, that interschool, literally interschool rivalry, it's a land. They're playing together in the same space. I'm Corbeck and alongside me is Tropic Theory, and we have a heater of a match on our hands here tonight, Tropic. Oh, Corbeck, you know, we are already on week four of the series so not only is the pressure kind of getting on with you know map differential is definitely going to become more important as we go but like you said sister v sister teams coming in for this so you have that pressure but on top of it all as well when we check the leaderboard of our champions division there are six different teams ranks four to, to nine i believe that are all mm -hmm. tied with map differential and here Maps matter, as you can see from that leaderboard, and Purdue Black and Purdue Puce all fall into that with Purdue Black being ranked number five currently, and Purdue Puce being ranked number, number uh, actually, flipping that, actually, Purdue Puce being ranked number five and Purdue Black being ranked number eight. So the pressure is on right now, Corbick. It most certainly is. And in terms of record, I believe Purdue Black is sitting at one and two right now. Their mm -hmm. opposite number here to ninth, their nemesis, as it were, or Purdue Pews, who are sitting at two and one. So a slightly stronger scoreline coming out from the Purdue Black side or from the Purdue Pews side. It's also worth pointing out that Purdue Black, I believe, is almost exclusively made up of sophomores and freshmen. Only one senior player on that team, whereas over on the side of Purdue Pews, you have uh, i believe a mixture of seniors perhaps a junior and if i remember correctly at least one graduate student yeah. so always always warms my heart to see a graduate student taking part in some competitive activities having done the same myself at one point in time in my life <laughs> uh it's always fun honestly and you know with being with that being said they definitely want to go out with a bang as we start ilios oh, yeah. or oh, excuse me oasis coming through right now and you know for this map corbeck we have this we have 
these different choke lines where I'm definitely going to be expecting exactly what we're seeing right now with D.Va coming through. And I do love a good Battle of the Hammers for this first map. A battle of Hammers indeed. Both Reinhardt's being shown here. Eonic and Frameshift coming out on both, uh, both coming out on the German <laughs> tech, I should say. Oh, flubbing my words already. That's not good. You know, I was just thinking though, Travik, it is interesting. I wonder how much of a sort of strategic playbook crossover there is between these two squads because these compositions are looking uh, devilishly similar here. Yeah, very similar. And we are, oh, actually, we're going to change to the with this reaper so i definitely am looking at onyx shield a little worried right now yeah there's good my wall coming in really early on from sub one but it's ionic who claims the first kill and a very unfortunate death there for serpotic really early on clem adding another one to the pile there in the midst of it all and monster has escorted his team into a very commanding early start and Purdue Black really coming in strong here with sub one on this May. And, you know, we're definitely seeing right off the bat that wall being so important in these maneuvers, uh, really blocking off where Purdue Puse really has to really be careful of sub one and hopefully bait that wall out as we saw here. Yeah, the immediate engage coming in. The tank leading the way there. Frame shift, just trying to get him a bit of room. You see Lord Flee Feline putting in some shots on the backside, but Suat here with the amplification matrix will buy them just a little bit of room. Ooh, a bit of an overextension there from Marshmallow means they'll lose the tank. Suat's going down as well. And a unfortunate series of events right there. Monster Till trying to keep the team in the fight, but not a lot he can do. Uh, excessive number of bodies here from Purdue Puse as Monster is finally put down one baby diva remaining but the pasta lose the mech at the end that's a bit unfortunate yeah definitely a bit unfortunate coming through but you know purdue black have these ultimates to really continue being proactive about this even though sub one did get uh staggered in the end there that that blizzard can be so important with claiming uh you know just area of effect for the area for the thing and we also have that wall that can be so strong with maneuvering oh but oh, oh, what, what a shatter to start him off here an amazing may wall though coming out from sub one prevents too much of a capitalization mm -hmm. unfortunately sir Potic does get caught there and booped off the edge of the map a danger when you're playing on the top floor here of Oasis, Marshmallow takes one out, but dies himself, a worthy sacrifice perhaps given the situation. And they're still trying to fight it out though. A couple of bodies left here to deal with. The current one in the sights is Lord Feline, then quickly swapped over there. They'll lose Sleuth, who does manage to keep an ult out of all of that, but that's the only positive takeaway from this particular engagement. You know, framework, Frameshift had such a massive shatter, but Sub One's reaction, again, with that, with that, ice uh with her ice uh, capsule just save the whole team being able to block that being protected from themselves and then go through and wall off the enemy team so to keep their team alive and now pretty black have these ultimates to really continue playing aggressively but i'm looking to, to both of our baptiste players here to really protect the teams from this plethora of balls coming through oh someone jumping forward there there tropic lucky to survive the stun as the bomb comes sailing in as well zd pasta will go down a very good immortality field there from zuhat keeping things alive a death blossom dropped in by lord feline lord feline getting two in the midst of all of this but marshmallow returning the favor with a well-placed bomb and a very equal fight between these two teams unfortunately about to be a little less equal as marshmallow does secure a kill onto the healer and then follows it up by taking lord feline out as well frame shift here on his last legs fighting back as valiantly as he can but it's a relatively even matchup it looks like a lucio diva fight on the point except there's a may here to tip the fight in favor of purdue black and we're really seeing the importance coming through with having a may on their team uh you know we have that freeze to really be able to have that target focus coming through and though lord flea line is making a big bang with the reaper and these shields coming into onyx uh you know the ability to really block off folks with that wall and really divert uh where their path of travel is going to be is just so important it's already another male coming through 
Both immortality fields have been used here as well already before the fight has really got going. So both of them are on cooldown. Sub one holding on to that main ult, but it'll be the amplification matrix that comes out early. They've got a high noon in the pocket as well, but they're trying to capitalize on the space of that amplification matrix placement. Marshmallow gets one, Clem gets another. The high noon coming out from Sleuth finds nobody, and the flashbang falls short. The sound barrier too late there to save frame shift. Oh, I'm sorry, to, uh, it, it was perfectly timed, I should say, to help Ionic ensure the death of frame shift. I got confused at what Lucio I was looking at there for a second. <laughs> I mean, we pretty much had a 99 to 99 type of fight here. We are definitely seeing both of these teams coming in hard at each other, and the pressure coming in would just be that sister team coming through. I do love this map right here, though, because we have... These are, this is more of like a brawly map coming through of Oasis. And I'm not even surprised to see Lord Feline swap to that May coming through because blocking off those, those, uh, those points, those close corridors are going to be even more important. Yeah, the May did really feel like a decisive yeah. factor in those last engagements. It was the, the May walls, the blizzards. It was just really mm -hmm. hard to kill her as well. That felt like a critical part of their success. And well, they're going to try and go for it again here. An early engagement onto the point goes Frameshift and the rest of the Purdue Puce team. And the Ooh. good May wall coming up there to yell them out just a little bit. But again, it's Marshmallow, who's just constantly in the back line causing problems. Eating Pasta will strike first, though, as someone does go down. Frameshift gets Monster here and that should be enough i think to win them this fight a little bit of aggressive play here from sleuth maybe trying to make amends for that last uh missed high noon right there but they don't barely need it tropic before they'll secure the point you know we're definitely gonna see even with that fight alone that lord feline and sub one have quite a bit of pressure coming through to really have those walls in a perfect place to have that initial engagement that initial death potentially on the team to really give them give their team an edge so i'm definitely seeing sub one and lord feline but lord feline 77 percent and counting for that blizz it's a very far forward amplification yeah. matrix but purdue black not able to move up into it instead they'll go the long way around and try and come in with an amplification matrix of their own suthant wants to use it he puts it down immediately but he's dead frame shifts clear curing the kill a maywall there mitigating i think a fair amount of damage as well another maywall coming up on the other side it's ionic clem monster all the kills going the favor of Purdue Black. They'll go ahead and start juggling around the last defenders here, and that should clear the point in their favor. And you know, their Purdue Puce really, I like the fact that they almost gave gave Purdue Black this point, knowing that they have the ultimates to utilize. And though Therpotic did utilize that, uh, the amplification matrix, that is a quick ultimate to continue to build as we come through. And so, the one thing that they will have to look out for is sub one's wall and blizz coming through which there it is oh, oh a bit of a dangerous scenario there for twister f5 nearly got caught out unfortunately he will land they do still lose the diva mech though to the high noon but they will continue to fight here the shatter coming down unfortunately finds no one frame shift getting battered around on the front line here like a cork on a stormy sea can't quite find his level at the moment charges into the midst of the enemy team and like many a tank player before him meets his unfortunate end oh man yeah uh coming through and you know what i'm really looking at monster right now with that amplification mate or excuse me with beat coming through because pretty puce again they held like their sister team did last time around to really be able to engage this time around but oh sleuth going down that is definitely gonna be another reset and just more time and percentage added for purdue black right now Oh, a feather in the icicle cap there of sub one to get the early kill, but the ult banks are building up to an absolute yeah. ult fiesta here. Any moment now, Tropic, I feel like we're going to see the, the full unleashing. And we begin here with Lord Feline, who loses the blizzard. The same cannot be said on the other side. The high noon coming in from Kleb secures the kill on a frame shift as well. Just a series of deaths here. And at the end of the day, it does look like Purdue Black will have the better of this encounter. Clem and sub one in the midst of everything. Now they have to go for the fast regroup. And you know, I'm definitely looking at Z ZD Pasta right now to really get that ultimate on, get the bomb onto point, really have that crowd area con uh, control coming through, and Frameshift is going to be the one that has to get on the point, but the wall! 
Oh, what a wall. Sleuth will roll in on the side, though. It might be the hero play they need. He'll get Monster. Suhant did get a kill in there as well. Another Diva Bomb falling in. They now have body presence on the point, though. Serpotic using the cover here, trying to heal up the team as much as possible. A good kill onto Suhant. There goes the Onik down as well. That might, been a, might have been enough. It does look like the dam has broken, but at 99%, we are in perfect fight territory. And we're seeing the same composition come out uh, with Lord Feline back on that Reaper. And, uh, you know, that really packed a punch in the end. They're really just taking down the tanks, and then everything came after that. And Frameshift has that hammer to really continue this momentum that Purdue Fuse has right now. Yeah, it'll have to be a hell of a fight here, though, considering the kind of ult differential that's about to come online. Monster leading the team forward. Does have the sound barrier. Careful, he's overextended just a little bit there on the outside edge. I know what he's trying to set up here, pooping that Reinhardt back, but it ain't coming. Clem instead finds Lord Feline to start things off. Here comes the Blizzard in as well. Marshmallow securing a kill. Sleuth making sure it's not unanswered. Sleuth trying to find another one in the back line. Can't kill his opposite number before the peel is is there and that will i believe be oasis done and dusted oh purdue black you know i have to say that that may really made a difference in each and every one of these fights you know we were looking at lord feline to really match that and we did see that match coming through on this map but that la the very first first uh map on oasis we saw how strong these walls are and sub one definitely was able to really get that initial initial engagement for the team and i mean even there 10 blizzard kills yeah that's a lot i that's a mm -hmm. lot of blizzard <laughs> it's very cold <laughs> Uh, lots, of snow. <laughs> lots of snow, very cold indeed. And I mean, Clennon as well to Clem on the McCree, who I feel like provided just a consistent source of damage through all of that. We saw right there with the play of the game. And those were the kind of scenes that we saw repeated again and again. So starting off this matchup, Purdue Black comes out screaming on Oasis, collects the 2-0, the lower win rate team, putting one in. But will their luck continue? Join us for our next map right after this break. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC. I'm Corbeck. Alongside me is Tropic Theory. Purdue University is associated with 13 Nobel Prizes, but unfortunately tonight it can only have one winning Overwatch team in this matchup between Purdue Black and Purdue Puce. And it was a uh, it was a thrilling first map there, Tropic. They were they were giving it their all. There is no love lost here. 
You know, I was expecting the pressure to be on with not only the leaderboard coming in with so many teams being tied with that map differential, but also with sister teams. And I honestly, Corbic, I can only imagine the talk coming through. Uh, I will say the encouraging comments <laughs> for both the teams since, you know, they are at, in LAN right now. They oh, are yeah. having their own LAN event. They're right there. They're staring each mm -hmm. other down in the in the <laughs> heated Boilermaker esports room, which I assume is like a boiler right now of pressure, dare I say. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting that it was Purdue Black who stepped out in front because if he looked at records and whatnot, we would have thought that Purdue Puce would have had a relatively good time of it. And obviously, there was some close stages there on Oasis, but Purdue Black kind of just handled themselves better overall, I would say. And you know, those control maps are so important with the speed of, uh, of you know, the percentages. And Purdue Black really did well with utilizing their ultimates proactively and being up in each and every fight. But, you know, with Ike involved, we have this different map terrain coming through. The payload adds a different aspect of it. And so what I'm really looking for right now is how, you know, Purdue Puse is going to really break through this this uh this choke point because again we're seeing purdue black even sub one on that may and that may can be so important with that wall with that initial choke point yeah it really can be i mean i can wall first point is defined by this bridge area they are through the may wall coming up just a little late there and i think that's going to be a bit of a problem because the fox is essentially in the hen house now can they close the distance frame shift trying to do so having a little bit of a difficult time of it the two reinhardt's jumping around right there like the floor is lava but the immortality field forced out early here from suhant that said serpotic also has to use theirs both of the immortality fields down very early unfortunately ionic is down early too and another tank might have just walked into the trap surely marshmallow will lose the mech right there he does and now sub one i mean reclaiming a kill but sleuth getting one pack on the other side clem doesn't let him go for free but i'd say that more than enough work has been done no you're completely right and you know sub one messing up that wall to initiate uh it really hurt them you know that is when purdue pew said let's go wall is down we can really utilize lord feline's damage to take down those those tanks and we did see that you know onic and frameshift have that difference of ult charge so frameshift is definitely going to have that bang coming through for this next ult fight uh, ult fight they are indeed clem here rolling up to the high ground does have the high noon from that spot but he won't find anyone with it the dead eye ultimately finding no one clem taking a little bit of damage right there too forced to back up they're putting an admirable amount of pressure on this high ground position but sub one he's got a surprise and the surprise is a blizzard it is not eaten the sound barrier invested here a very good one indeed unfortunately frame shift will still go down that's even though they've even stevens here at least for a second before sub one and marshman combined to get a couple of kills and break that divide and win the fight and purdue black that is exactly what they're looking for right now we have 430 on the clock coming through for purdue puce so they are just looking to continue to burn down this time bank but purdue puce have the ultimates to really continue to win these fights with lord feline and even zeta pasta to really have that area effect control with that bomb Indeed, well, they're beginning to push their way forward here. Down comes the paratroop drop from above. Is it going to be enough to succeed? No, the Death Blossom coming in there. Suhanth is down early. Iana quickly following their support into the grave. It's unfortunate that Reinhardt just not able to stay alive in the midst of all of this. Clem continues to be a constant source of DPS, but it'll be Twister F5 who makes sure that he stops his little reign of terror. Twister F5 collecting another one at the tail end, finishing off Baby Diva. And, uh, you know, especially since we've passed that choke point, I am questioning sub one's choice for May. Even though we have that blizzard, we saw how important that blizzard can be. And I'm almost certain that they will most likely be probably going to utilize this right now. They might well indeed. Clem tries to open up with the dead eye, but it finds nothing. Nobody even daring to look at him. Sub one now pushing forward. Another blizzard could be coming down the pipe. Good shatter right there. Somehow catches oh. Twister F5 in the midst of everything and slams him into the wall. He'll be down. Lord Feline, though, clapping back almost immediately, not giving a lot of room to play. The shatter coming out from the other side now. It's Serpotic, who's doing their best on the Baptiste to just clean up some of this damage. An unfortunate drop there from Sue. <laughs> 
Hoth. He tried to escape. Unfortunately, he just hit his head on the bridge, came back down. But at Marshmallow, still fighting here. They're still going to try and contest this, but uh, too little too late, I believe, is the word I might use. Still, one Reinhardt dropping in. Not enough, though. Ionic will go down. Clem makes their attempt. The sound barrier has to be invested right there just to keep him alive and in the fight. The ice block may try to keep it going, and they do manage to buy just enough time. And here comes lots of members of Purdue Black filtering back onto the point, not really giving him any room in either direction. Monster hopping around on the door like his life depends on it, which it did. Unfortunately, he is down. Ionic goes. Marshmallow goes. Still, Suhans is here. Clem trying to jump back in and finally finally Tropic a door is open <laughs> oh man you know they had that spawn advantage to really continue to keep it in and right now Purdue Black is looking really great with ultimates to really spare and sub one once again that wall is going to be so important because we are in this close quarter area where they can potentially just block off somebody and get that initial initial kill for Purdue Black to just initiate but as I say that their pot just kills him Oh, Sleuth using the high noon as a, a zoning alt right there, just pushing the enemy team into a little position, a cupboard under the stairs, dare I say it, where they are, unlike the main character, Harry Potter, just hammered into the dirt. <laughs> and they will continue along on their way. Purdue Fuse, you know, they, ha they are just going at this so aggressively right now, and killing members of Purdue Black before they were even able to utilize those ultimates. Once more, though, the Snows of Despair are unleashed. Yet another Blizzard here coming out from Sub-1. Some good to target focus there on Z. Pasta shuts him down. Clem finally getting the better of Lord Feline. That opens up to get one on a Twister F5. And I believe that is the back of the resistance broken here. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the time bank, though. Tropic, plenty of time to make something happen here. No, definitely plenty of time, especially since Serpotic, you know, is continuing on this Baptiste. I'm sure that Sudath... Uh, Sudhoth uh, went ahead on that Moira just to get back quickly. Um, but, you know, with that elimination of that immortality build, we have some potential free ultimates, if they're able to plan right, um, that really could be beneficial for the refuse. Well, Clem coming out with the high new and will secure oh. the kill on the frame shift, who's just battered away into the May wall. That's one ult down, two ults down in the bank. They actually used the sound barrier there as well, I believe, and the shatter was thrown in that fight. So they've used every ult they have, Tropic, and, uh, oh, that might have been a bit of a misplay. Bit of a, yes, you are completely right. But, you know, Purdue Puse held their ult, went in with a dry push, and now they have every ultimate that they could potentially want, and hopefully they do not utilize them in one place. But one thing they will have to keep out for is sub one's area of effect blizzard coming through we've seen the big blizz coming through but what where did that what was luth doing what happened there oh, i don't know <laughs> i think monster might have monster might have had something to do with that just judging on the position of where that lucio was i don't think he got credited for it but he was uh, he was sneaking around back there dropping and he's still there oh yes Threat is he real. is <laughs> oh that's <He> cheeky <laughs> being a monster right now but oh got the revenge though <laughs> there was the revenge sleuth returning the favor right there they're trying to push forward through the door the coalescence slowing him down a little bit there's the blizzard that you warned about tropic being invested here and that might have actually spoiled the dreams they're dying attack here just kind of iced over at the tail end and now they'll just go ahead and clean up the kills marshmallow there finishing off zd pasta and ooh, still still two ults left in the bank but a looking a little unbalanced now not in favor of purdue puce yeah it really seems that potentially purdue puce might have hit the panic button on some of these ultimates really thinking that maybe we had an ultimate or we had one person down but it really turned into a bloodbath with Purdue Black seeing this opportunity consistently and just going aggro on them. Well, oh, at the, the final bomb. assault began, the Maywall comes sailing over. No one found with the bomb, though. Ionic. Uh, getting taken out here. It's Lord Feline's time to shine. Pounces on the first of his victims, continues on. Sleuth now contributing damage from the back line as well. And they've opened up a lot of space, but the cart with still a distance to go here. And it looks as though maybe a regroup is coming down the pipe. I like the fact that Purdue Black ha oh! oh! Kill Corbeck! 
Oh, Marshmallow there finding Sleuth. That'll slow it down. Clem with a lot of room to operate. Clem gets whipped, though, by the Fire Strike coming on the other side. Monster and Ionic, though, securing some kills. Even Suhanth getting in on the action. The Damage Orb finds a victim in the midst of all of this chaos, and that should end it. Not able to close the distance there, Tropic. As hard as they tried, Purdue Puse left at 66.65 meters. Ooh, man, the target focus coming through for Purdue Black. Really, also the patience we have in that last air, that last fight. We saw the patience that they had, that they had plenty of time or, you know, at least to get around that corner to regroup, come in strong. And that's exactly what we saw. We saw the team coming in, utilizing their spawn advantage and the patience to then utilize those ultimates that they built up, uh, you know, and they did a great job, Corbic. They did do a great job here, and Frameshift is calling for a PC check on uh, <laughs> sub one. Doesn't trust it. <laughs> Sus was the word that came out of Sleuth, and yeah, May has I think again on this map as well been kind of the dominant factor here uh, yeah. in a lot of these fights. If you look at that big push that that came down the line, Tropic, it was really just one Blizzard and a well placed May wall that kind of spoiled the entire pot. And that's what we're really, see really seeing, the importance of having May on, their May on their team, especially in this environment. We did see a little shakiness coming through from that middle portion of the map because that really isn't necessarily a May-friendly map, though it uh, may or terrain. But in these initial choke points for that last and first point is where I'm really looking. You know, sub one will be able to potentially just block the damage to have their team go around that right er that left area well, ZD Pasta bringing out everyone's favorite Russian here. Zarya oh. will make her appearance. The bubble's coming out already. Unfortunately, it's not the yoked Overwatch 2 version of Zarya just yet, but still, <laughs> an effective off-tank position. Monster doing a little bit of juggling there has been quite apt at doing those sort of things, and it actually Sleuth who dies early on, claimed by Marshmallow just one more time. Clem here in the midst of everything. The Immortality Field actually invested in this fight. Marshmallow continuing to just be an absolute nuisance, ravaging the back line, losing a significant amount of of health and falling back and you can see the slow walk of shame there from slew trying to get back into the fight in time but unfortunately both the tanks are down this amplification matrix actually doing some serious work that'll be the last death i think serpotic no there's still a bit of a fight going on but i feel like the majority of the team has left the building oh suda with that quick baptiste ultimate coming through uh really keeping the team alive as you know, Purdue Black just continues to aggressively engage onto Purdue Puce right now. I, though I do did like ZD Pasta, I love Zarya coming through. Uh, we're just seeing that diverse diversity with D.Va, with having those boosters to really be able to engage quickly, engage on that high ground, and that's definitely going to come through beneficial for this next point, Corbic. Indeed it is. Sleuth firing down from the top deck. Now they're trying to hold the high ground position that Purdue Black was holding last time with about as much success. They're forced into the drop here. The high noon coming out almost immediately. Serpotic forced to use the immortality field. Sleuth trying to set up for a high noon of their own on the flank. Won't find it before Frameshift is dead. Now Sleuth in some serious trouble. Rolls back and has to get the health pack. And there's just no front line to speak of here for Purdue Puse. Instead it's Ionic oh, chasing fun. down the Baptiste as Marshmallow sends a a bomb sailing over the top to claim two and the road is open to the bridge oh man you know zd pasta hasn't even really been able to both zd frost and frameship haven't really been able to be in this fight yet they're they're barely getting those ultimates that definitely can really hold their ground right now oh that life mess gets the monster oh. down so that's gonna be major that is a very solid pick to start things off. Unfortunately, the Blizzard Shattered combo is there. A beautiful sound barrier coming out at the last second. The High Noon from Sleuth finds no one. Instead, it's just Clem, the one McCree, trying to fight this one out. Very good stun right there to clean up Ionic. And just when things looked like they were uh, getting very desperate for Purdue Black Tropic, they, uh, they found a way. They found a way, and Purdue, for use, really have these game-changing ultimates but you know ZD Pasta as as a as major of a ultimate that grab can be marshmallow there's a lot of pressure coming in on marshmallow to really absorb that and potentially be a hungry diva 
Oh, a Hungry Diva indeed. Monster with the sound barrier now as we get into a straight up brawl. It's double fire strike there to get two. <laughs> Yannick and Monster both down and a boop for good measure. Clem just melted there at close range by the Zarya right click and that will do it. Three minutes still on the clock though, so nowhere near sort of a, a breathe easy territory. Oh no, certainly not. And that is like the theme that we have been seeing in this fight between Purdue Black and Purdue Puce. Uh, Purdue Black though really have these ultimates. Again, I'm looking at sub one. That wall was, was though it was strong, it just wasn't strong enough with the shiny Zarya of ZD Pasa. And they begin the attack once again. I can't even tell you what's going on there. The tree also not helping. Once more, nature stepping forward to foil humanity. But it's someone who gets oh, a kill. And speaking of foiling, Frame again. Shift does it again. Frame Shift just fire strikes his way to success. And they will finish off there. ZD Pasta loving these close range engagements on that Zarya. You know, I'm definitely questioning this route for Purdue Black that they're taking. You know, they're coming up against very. Happy to fight in a close quarter character such as Lord Feline and ZD Pasta, especially when they are shiny. And here we go again, taking that same route. Well, they're going back in one more time into the breach of the castle because they just can't quit it. They have a Diva Bomb here. Oh, it's a bit of a rotate, though. Maybe oh, they're okay. trying to play a little bit of a devious game with some of these ults they have. They can't quite seem to lure their opponents into the potential death room that I think they were hoping for, but at any point in time, Marshmallow could just send that bomb sailing in, and now it's a full fight over on the bridge to compete and reposition, and it looks like these two teams are steaming for a collision, but Sleuth, he's steaming for a high noon from the back line! Oh, they spot him out, though! Marshmallow with the hero play to prevent that from getting out of hand. Suhan still had to use the immortality field. Up comes the Diva Bomb. Woo! Oh, Marshmallow for three from down town and that will be more than enough to get this cart through and you know i was we were talking i was talking about the difference between these off tanks for both of these teams and we just saw the importance of marshmallow on that diva really being able to protect the team with that incredible dm uh coming through and then the area of effect with that bomb just really opening it up and two two minutes and 20 seconds and counting down to make it to that last point they may wall coming up right here. Sherpotic leaning around the corner there, trying to get him a little bit of room. Sub one backing up. The rest of Purdue Black here just grouped up in this little uh, gatehouse room, waiting for their opportunity to begin the festivities. And it looks like the bell has rung. So here we go again. And once more, it's a blizzard to start things off. Marshmallow, though, securing the initial kill onto Lord Feline. You don't see that very often. Marshmallow getting another one in the midst of all of this. Sherpotic is down. Clem doing all the damage. And oh no, it looks like more than the gate has just fallen. Clem gets a triple kill, and they're really running out of bodies to invest into this, and they're running out of road as well. Look at this, the pressure just coming straight up to the doors, and all these ults left to use here. An attempted teleport coming in from Lord Feline. He goes to the Death Blossom, finds nothing but death in it. Clem getting the immediate kill, sub one picking one more up. Clem here in the immortality field, happy to just passed away with the Peacekeeper, and that will be it. They touch through, and Purdue Black go up 2-0 in the series. Purdue Puce just cannot find their legs. Purdue Black really started with the, this, this aggression, and they are ending this map with that aggression. And, you know, I got to say, Sub-1 is making to potentially be that my player of the game, or player of the match, excuse me, Um, with this May play coming through you know we're definitely seeing him utilizing may to the the best potential that you could have with that wall with the area of effect with blizzard and uh, you know purdue purdue Puse is just not have not been able to really get around that 17 blizzard kills there at the end by the way so adding to the 10 from last time that is a lot of blizzard kills coming in from sub one who also just used their fists to beat someone to death at one point in time in the midst of all of that may the original ice demon living up to expectations in these matches tonight but there's still one more map to play here between purdue black and purdue puce map score does matter as tropic was saying earlier so don't go anywhere see the conclusion of this purdue versus purdue series right Right after this break. Oh, 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 
I threw away my phone in case you'd ever call. I never leave my house in case I meet you at the mall. Never talk to my friends that you friends with because I know they gonna ask why we end it. Anything to do with you, I keep it on the low. Used to wish that you would stay, now I'm wishing you would go. So I came up with a Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC. It's an intra-school matchup here between Purdue Black and Purdue Puce. Puce was the favorite color of Marie Antoinette, I just found out. And, well, I think that that has boded ill here as an omen for the side of Purdue Puce tonight, Tropic. It has not been particularly favorable for them in this little uh, rivalry game. You know, as Google gave the example, Puce, Purdue Puce might be a little Puce in the face, unfortunately. Uh -huh. but. You know Colors. what? <laughs> you know what? That can be the motivation for them to take Route 66. And that's what I'm thinking of right now, especially since Route 66 can, 66 can be kind of mind gamey in the sense that you can definitely have that close court hold to really hold that train and have plenty of time for another fight down the road. Well, welcome to the deadlock gorge. There you go. Unfortunately, the little the little go away there. Uh, not exactly a winning strategy for tourism, uh, but perhaps understandable in light of COVID uh, that this perfect little peaceful paradise here would not want to be. Uh, well, that's already messed things up there. I was going to say they don't want chaos, but it looks like chaos has come anyway. I was at BlizzCon in 2019. Was it 2019? It seems like ages ago. Uh, and oh they had goodness. a recreation of the interior of the of the Route 66 diner. By Coca-Cola, of all things. Funny enough, I was also there, and I had Yo! pictures of, uh, you know, right by my favorite uh, uh, call, uh, payphones that I always yeah. hit. You yeah. know, I did, like, a picture of hitting it. <laughs> so they, they gave me a free Coke sample. It had been all day, and not the, the, the drink kind, obviously. And I had been, I was very tired, and I was very thirsty, and they just passed that on. It was great. It was, like, awesome. I have a hat. Did you get a hat? Let's go. Yeah, I've got it as well. Not with me right now, but it is in my room. I have, I believe, worn it on broadcast before. But anyway, speaking of broadcast, Lord Feline uh, moving up behind here is Sleuth taking an unhealthy chunk of damage right there to start things off. Lord Feline stalking underneath, very cat-like in their approach. Unfortunately, they have yet to really find a target to pounce on. And, oh, getting bullied a bit on the top level is Bouncy Bear, the sub here coming in to play the Sigma. Frame shift, having a less than pleasant time up on top of the garage. Zitty Pasta doing their best to back him up, and that 100 charge would indicate that it is working to a certain extent. Unfortunately, Sleuth is down early again. Already the amplification matrix coming out here from Suha. They need to contest the cart, though. All this fighting on the top. Now Frameshift unleashing a Primal Rage. And finally, Eonic drops here. They have given him a lot of distance, though, and Sub-1 is down. The May Luck not carrying over to the Hanzo just yet. Monster has popped the Valkyrie, is sailing above, but Frameshift is on an absolute heater right now. Has gotten one main tank down. ZD Pasta jumping in to get the next. Bouncy Bear now trying to bounce those orbs around, keep his team alive. Frameshift is running for his life, but unfortunately he is down. And we really are in desperate contest situation here. I think it was Bob that got thrown on, but he's slightly off and oh a bit of a disastrous first point here i will say you know purdue black with that team composition there is a lot of pressure coming through from clem and sub one to really take those angles provide that pressure from all sides for eonic and bounty bear to really keep hold and station on that cart or at least nearby to really contest but it's really hard when frame shift has this ability to really bounce around and have the protection of zeta pasta's bubbles well, up comes a little bit of pressure there in the forms of an airy, angry frame shift and a very angry anti nade in there as well, making everything very easy for the angry monkey to get started here. Lots of anger being expressed on this side, and I can't blame them for the way things have gone. Bouncy Bear gets bounced around and bears down back to the spawn. Very unfortunate indeed, and uh, they are looking like a different team here coming out the gate. Hey. I think that the difference in scores definitely have motivated him this, to this point. And Serpotic, I have to comment on those nays. Those are, have been the initiation for Frameshift to really push in. And we saw how major that was. You know, even with Sudith having that, that immortality build, it can only do so much when they're already so low. 
Another anti egg comes sailing across the top. It's answered by a pair of danger noodles thrown straight through the middle of everything. Sub-1 does manage to secure a kill on a frame shift, but Serpotic answering immediately with the kill on the other tank. Bouncy Bear going for the grid egg flux is gunned down. And they're so confident right here. Sleuth doesn't even pop the tack visor. He just takes out both Suhanth and Sub-1 by himself. And I was just going to comment, Purdue Black needs to change, and here we are. Ionic, Bouncy Bear going back to their Reinhardt and D.Va play, and this will be, definitely be even... This will definitely be important with this vertical map terrain coming through, especially since Lord Feline and Frameshift have really been... have the synergy of really pouncing on the target, whomever they decide to target. Well, Sleuth is still holding on to attack visor here. Could use that at any time. Instead, he's setting himself up for a bit of a sneaky play here. Oh. Good pulse bomb early on from Lord Feline. Shuts Clem down. Immortality Field is out, and here comes the attack visor on the backside. It hasn't done much, but it has forced the shielding to go all sorts of sideways. Can they collect some kills off the back of that? Well, we'll get to see Monster and Subwood instead getting two kills of their own. Bouncy Bear will lose the mech, but Subwood really putting the boot in here, picking up one more. Once more, the DPS of Sub-1 really doing big work here for Purdue Black. And you know, Sub-1 going into that Reaper is definitely going to cause some trouble for Frame Shift, who does change to that Reinhardt to really go hammer time with <laughs> with, with Ionic, uh, basically. And you know, ZD Pasta has that Graviton coming up here soon. But again, Bouncy Bear. Oh, actually, Marshmallow was the one that we had prior. So we'll see if Bouncy Bear is hungry tonight as well. Yeah, Bouncy Bear looks like he could do with some eating if he can get into good space, but it's Clem who gets one with the flashbang and then finishes Twister F5 off with the gun. Clem going big here, diving off the top deck to try and secure a kill, and he will find death at the hands of ZD Pasta. Sub one there doing some very good work as well. The two DPS here just coming in clutch. I know with those changes that Purdue Black did make, we're really seeing that strong, aggressive nature come through them. You know, it doesn't seem like they're a very patient team to really hold those angles. And so I'm not surprised that our DPS did change these mid-range sort, of, uh, sort of characters. And the ultimates Ooh. of fireworks come out, Corbic. Amplification Matrix, High Noon, Death Blossom, Sound Barrier, Nano Boost, a lot used in this fight, and really no real gain on the side of Purdue Puse. They do manage to hold on to two, make it almost three ults, though, and I think that was a smart play to make that a, a sort of quasi dry run once things started getting committed. And this is where Purdue Puse really need to make their play. You know, we don't have monsters, we don't have monsters B. We will have to bait out Suda's uh, Immortality build, but there are so many different things you can bait out initially, and I'm looking for Sleuth to take that high ground, to really take away that DM as well for ZD Pasta to make a play. They have to make some sort of play here. They've still got two minutes, so, I mean, the pressure is on. It could be worse. It's still not ideal. The shield is down, though. That might have opened some things up. The attack visor coming out, but the bomb is thrown in response. A lot of kills coming the direction of Purdue Puse and a very narrow escape there for ZD. Uh, Bouncy Bear, though, does get one with the bomb, but it doesn't quite feel like enough as Sleuth takes a high ground position, sub one falling back to the spot. And we have a spawn advantage coming in from Purdue Black uh, right now. And so I'm definitely seeing, I need Sloop to make a play right now with that attack visor on that high ground. Oh, but Monster! Oh, and with got... the bloodthirsty support! We've still got a grab here as well, yeah. and the attack visor. One of these things is going to have to come out. The grab is slightly misplaced, somehow catches the intrepid monster who kind of jumps down into it. I think he was attempting to maybe get something going. I don't know quite what. And instead, it'll be two kills that go the way of Pure Dew Puse. They have two DPS ults now. They've popped the amplification matrix. Sleuth is nearly back and has the attack visor to play with. Just going to throw it here. No real choice. Really backing his opponents up towards their spawn. Lord Feline could death blossom at any time. And out comes Sub-1. And Sub-1 is sub down. And that will be it. They will complete there. And we're seeing a whole different side of Purdue Pews coming out with this aggression. You know, they definitely play their angles with, especially with that double bubble composition with Framework and ZD Pasta on that initi initial Winston and Zarya. It wasn't until the very end where Purdue Black really got their uh, their footing. And I mean, we had already expected the talk to come out, and even Purdue Pews is asking where the maze coming in. 
<laughs> frame shift frame shift making fun of ZD pasta for misspelling a word when they're a PhD student. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he doesn't study spelling, says ZD. That's fair. It just doesn't... <laughs> you know, especially with these autocorrects uh, coming out. Uh... No have you ever? Can be hard now. <laughs> it can be. Have you ever seen a? Have you ever seen a, a science like a hard sciences PhD student? Okay. They're like a Morlock. It's it's surprising that they even communicate, much less spell. Mostly correct <laughs> most of the time. It's all numbers and stuff. It's terrifying. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I loved all my hard sciences friends. Uh, anyway, we we get going here. Back on topic. Sub one on the far. Oh, a far mercy being brought out here. Tropic. Now that is an interesting choice. So far, or e mercy echo now, but still same vibe. And you know, echo can be such a versatile character. I mean, the first thing I think of is double monkeys coming through with that uh, with the juggling basically. And so I'm looking for sub one to most likely really target frame shift for that ultimate, that duplication ult. Well, they are pushing up now. Bouncy Bear trying to take a more aggressive position here and maybe escort sub one into a more suitable damage position. Suhant on the Ana now, so that is a little bit more mechanically demanding, perhaps, than the Baptiste. Anti Nade well placed right there, though. Sub one trying to follow up on it, drops in on top of the Brigida. Can't confirm any real damage on top of Twister F5, but will go up for yet another attempt. Nearly got hit by the whip shot right there, but somehow ZD Pasta is down. I think they might have killed themselves. Oh. Sleuth comes rotating in on the back side trying to get a dominant high ground position here wants to claim a support won't find it instead it's serpotic who will go down early on the most successful dps in the field currently clem sub one though competing for the title does finally find frame shift so first point not favoring either of the purdue teams tonight and you know zd pasta going down initially just really it really doesn't help the team composition coming through. You know, Frameshift really isn't able to be as aggressive as they'd like, and then Serpata coming down after that, and that just eliminates any sort of advantage with any nades coming through. But they will be able to touch here for this next week. Well, they will force oh! the fight. Unfortunately, Serpata will not be a part of said fight. Gets pulse bombed almost immediately. Nano Monkey is invested here, and I, I guess that's a wise decision, all things considered, because they'll they'll mop it up, Tropic. Kind of feel like they could have held on to that. Maybe just maybe. I think they could have, uh, but you know, Sudeth having pretty much been that main healer with Monster really focusing on supporting and powering up sub one, I'm sure that they are going to get it very quickly, especially, you know, and we potentially have the, pot <laughs> the potential for double monkeys coming through for Purdue Black. And Wisters can only really rally and protect the team so much. So we'll see how they handle that. Now, will they unleash their primal rage? It has yet to be seen. The tack visor in the middle of the air. Oh, they're forced Ooh. to use the clone just till they don't immediately die. And it will oh. take them down. They use it to orchestrate a beautiful escape there, Tropic. That was actually <laughs> really clever. I mean, it's unfortunate to lose the ult, but it was a good effort nonetheless. The pulse bomb going off right there. A nano boosted primal raging frame shift in the midst of everything. Just kind of jumping around very angrily. And there comes the other angry monkey as frame shift is met by bouncy bear's bomb and bounce right back to the spawn door sub one res back in zd pasta is down and here come the kills in favor of purdue black one after the other they add a tally and poor suhans he's just uh just pushing that card along drop it happy as can be <laughs> you know grandma on the cart somebody's got their thing <laughs> but you know we're really seeing this extra pressure coming in from sleuth you know where we have sub on a monster having this duo having the support in the air and sleuth really not having that extra dps or extra damage amplification oh but the nano mercy has to oh, get oh, no. perfect. my favorite thing <laughs> I don't know that it was uh, quite enough damage right there, but it was a valiant effort nonetheless. The Valkyrie is popped right here. He'll go actually for a oh, kill. Yes. Murder moth mode activated. Unfortunately, it won't find a death. Oh no, he, he, he annoyed the wrong Soldier 76 at that moment because the attack visor comes out and the kill feed is just red. And that's more than enough for Purdue Puse. Oh man. Definitely coming through and just so close to that payload as well. 
Uh, quite unfortunate coming in from Purdue Black, and especially since they utilize quite a bit of their ultimate set the next fight. I'm expecting this probably to be a little bit of a dry push unless Clem can get that initial pick off the bat. Yonic right up in their faces using the tickle cannon to maximum tickle. Unfortunately, it doesn't bring anyone down just yet. A little bit of restructuring how they want this attack to look. They do have two minutes to play with. Ooh, Clem getting into a bit of a uh, difficult fight there in the back line, and it will ultimately be Twister F5 who emerges victorious. Unfortunately, on the other side of the ball, Sleuth is down, and someone trying to run a little bit free now that their hardest counter is off the board. Lord Feline still putting in the chip damage with the Tracer pistols, but now it's Ionic with the Primal just juggling the tanks around, not giving them any room to breathe, trying to finish up the kills someone here to help out and they do succeed in sectioning off the tanks and bringing them down and it looks like purdue black have made a definitive issue of that fight should have been able uh, to get this all the way through you know we're seeing the difference in this team composition where purdue black ha is that is a dive team where both of their dps are really playing with ionic and bouncy bear where purdue purdue puce Lord Feline and Sleuth have more pressure since Framework and ZD Process are really looking for them to take these angles so they can really stay, be in the stationary place and hold their ground as this brawl tank uh, composition. Well, someone was floating tantalizingly there in front of the rest of the team, but we'll actually use the clone here to change around into the Sigma. The Gravitic Flux may be on the way, hasn't quite been delivered yet. Someone's instead securing a kill onto Sleuth. Clem gets one there as well. There comes the Gravitic, and that will add another one to the total. Twister F5 is down. Iotic jumping in to capitalize on the Chaos, and that is all disaster there for Purdue Pukes. And, you know, Purdue Black, again, have this mo this mobility that they're able to just go past and just push forward on the fr the shields that Purdue Pukes were putting out. I'm happy that Frameship and CD Pasta did walk to Reinhardt and D.Va to have more of that versatility since, you know, again, stationary can only go so far. Well, attack fires are coming out immediately reacted to, still managing to pick up one kill on the sub one, forces Ionic into a very unpleasant position as well. Bouncy Bear, though, quick to return the favor. Sleuth is dead. Diva Bomb going sailing up, dropping down, doesn't find anyone. Ionic is res back into the fight, so some very good mercy play right there, keeping the team in the mix. Ionic will secure the kill with the help of Clem. Suhat gets one as well, picks Serpotic out of midair. Sleuth, the only one really answering back. Lord Feline can't find any traction here with the Doomfist. Sleuth is down now, and now Frameshift coming back in on a true desperation pick, just rolling around on the ball, getting beat up there in multiple positions. Doesn't really feel like it's quite enough, though he's still contesting. He's not wanting to give it up easily. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot of choice in the matter. Lord Feline can't get back onto the point as the Doomfist. He drops in for a second. It is brought down. Sleuth gets one, but still, the kill is mostly going in favor of Purdue Black. Still, we say that the respawn advantage is helping Purdue Puse fight this one out. They're playing for overtime now, and they have burned it down past the 58 second mark, and they might just maybe start to reassert a little bit of life here. The Doomfist comes sailing in again. Nobody's touching the cart, though. There we go. Back on. And they continue to fight here as Diva Bomb comes sailing out. I don't know that they have a lot of protection from it. They don't. That's Twister F5 brought down. And finally, they will complete. But they do have a little bit more time than Purdue Black. So I guess they've got that going for them, Trump. Yeah, they definitely have at least another fight in them with that 25 seconds. But I have to comment on Monster. You know, Monster was doing so you could see the frustration coming in from Purdue Puse, trying to really target Monster, but having that ability to really move around, keep the team alive, and also the the duo coming in from Monster and Sleuth, you know, Sleuth, or excuse me, uh, Suoth, Sudoth, Suoth, sorry, Suoth, <laughs> yes, um, and those reses core deck. Those reses were so clutch in so many areas where it could have been a, it could have been exactly what Purdue Puse needed, but having that ability to res and the patience to maybe not res immediately, but in a few seconds, we're just so powerful having that mercy on the team. Oh, for sure. Monster was making some very good calls right there in terms of just how to apply those uh, reses and also when to Valk and, and whatnot, I think yeah. it was also really well timed overall in that fight, but the lineups remain largely uh, the same. Ziddy Pasta now bragging about average team <laughs> height. So that's how you know that the match is going well. What would yours be? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
who hunt is now nine twelve, which is impressive. There's uh it's an oh. interesting conversation to be had in the midst of this match as they go for the close hold, but the uh surprise is relatively spoiled right there for Purdue Pews. They must fall back, it looks like a rather unceremonious faction as the members of Purdue Black don't really give them much breathing room. Sleuth trying to play on the outside edge. Sleuth continuing to put a little bit of damage forward. Can't quite find a target. Frameshift now holding a aggressive frontline position. Pays for it when an angry monkey drops on top of them from above. That said, Lord Sle or Feline and Sleuth combining for a couple of kills, and they've broken, I think, the initial attack here, but they have to continue to hold this position. And I love the fact that Purdue Pews did choose to hold in this train car. You know, they're definitely going to be able to have a second fight if they potentially lose this. But the team composition with Lord Feline on this Reaper is just really just taking out Ionic and Bounty Bear right now. Well, Sub-1 goes for the clone there, immediately dropping in on the D.Va, trying to secure a kill. Won't quite find it. Instead, it's Serpotic who brings Monster down in the midst of the chaos and Clem dies to their own bomb. The immortality field, all they get. Fortunately, Ionic doing massive work right there. I think has a nano boost as well for a little while. Ionic getting multiple kills. Ionic basically putting the team <laughs> on their back and breaking their way through this close hold. That said though, I mean, Tropic Purdue Puce, they're gonna have another, another shot at this. They're definitely gonna have another shot with ZD Pasta having that bomb, which will be that area effect that they potentially need. We have to remember that this is overtime, and if anybody decides to get off that payload, that is game over, and that is where the point is. Oh, the nade! Yeah, that's a very good anti-nade. The Diva Bomb coming over the top as well will create a little bit of hassle, but nothing that they can't quite deal with. ZD Pasta has a Diva Bomb in the pocket tier two. If they want to maybe exchange a, a couple of nuclear missiles at the moment, they will unleash it. That's beautifully placed, and we'll get sub one. Perfect drift over there into the column. You hear the Death Blossom coming out as well, but it's Frameshift who actually secures the kill. That's Suhant down. The Res coming out from Monster, but they are still down to support. Now they're down at DPS. Clem is dead. Serpotic will secure that. The Diva Mech is lost here for ZD Pasta, but the fight's still looking to be in favor of Purdue Black as a huge shatter is hit right there. Monster is down. Someone is down. And that should just about do it. A last minute attempt by Bouncy Bear is shut down by the Dead Eye and a good hold. A great hold coming through Frameship. That. Last Shatter was so important. We saw, I chatted about how Monster was doing so much work on this Mercy. And again, we saw the work that they did. That that res in the end on sub one could have been a game changing ultimate. Uh, or yeah, could have been a game changing um, move. But having Monster down, having that Mercy flying around, I think really spelled the end of that fight coming through. I'm expecting Purdue Black to do the same thing that Purdue Pews did. Or, right now with holding in that train cart though Corbic. Ready for battle. Yeah, the aggressive Oh the May. Hold. Oh boy. Sub the one. May is coming back. They're unleashing <laughs> their their powers. They've gotta they gotta go back to the drawing board here. Uh no no choice really I think the the May was so impactful. I feel like they've really suffered not having it, but they they need it back. And yeah they're gonna go for the close hold here. So I'm looking for Purdue Pews to really be looking out for these, not not necessarily the walls, but the walls really blocking them from Serpotic's healing coming through. You know, Frameship and ZD Pasta can definitely dive in there, but once they're blocked in, that's going to be a little rough. I, I But that is going to be a great counter, having Ferret in the sky with Twister, Twister F5 on that Mercy to really divert this uh, close core hold. Well, the close court hold surprise fools no one this time either. Sleuth immediately up in the train car just doing damage. Lord Feline kind of dashing around. The immortality field getting taken down early. Ooh. Suhant killed. It's a trade with Sleuth. And I mean, in that situation, Sleuth much rather uh, be the one you want to have die right there. That said, though, Bouncy Bear and Sub One both get very clean kills. And Serpotic now feeling a little bit of pressure. Can't quite swing that corner just yet. They need a hard regroup here from the squad. Monster is down though. They might have bought themselves a little bit of space with that. ZD Pasta in a relatively bad scenario, but here comes the Winston over the top, and Ionic and Sub One are both dead. I like the fact that Sleuth did choose to go with Farah versus Echo right now, though. You know, right? Oh, 
as I say that, Clam comes through Fludge and that Pharah goes down. But again, with the res and that Mercy, it's just so important uh, having that extra help. Especially since, you know, in this battle, it's almost a two versus one with Clem having this pressure of trying to get Mercy down, trying to get beat that, uh, that, that healing power that Mercy has. Oh, but the E Corbeck! Oh, it was a very good eat there on the Pulse Bomb. Now, Sub One has the blizzard in their hand they could use it at any time they're gonna try and take down serpotic first good peel there already two casualties here though by the time the blizzard gets deployed clem does get one but the barrage immediately taking them out zd pasta is dead but look at the number of team members here for purdue puce a valiant effort by suhanth on the high ground it's just the diva now left alive bouncy bear he's bouncing all over the point he's bounced right off the point in fact and has been killed now members starting to trickle back in here for purdue black they're not leaving a lot of room here for their contest it's certainly desperation measures twister f5 is down and ooh, this is not looking particularly good for purdue puce now a number of bodies from purdue black are managing to re-establish themselves on the point and even this primal rage that's coming out from frame shift doesn't seem to make a difference however sleuth does comes in claims two kills and that i think just leaves the ball a desperation bomb goes up but the contest isn't there tropic and purdue puce will win the map and end the series 2-1 2-1 but purdue black does get that two to two uh win on this uh for their win and you know as much as as much success as sub one had throughout the night with that may when your team composition have these characters that are so easily able to hop over that wall there's only so much you can do <laughs> True that, and a good 28% damage coming out there from the Echo player on that one as well. So, still a very impressive performance, but it is Purdue Puse who finally pulls one over on their rivals. Hopefully, they can all be uh, pleasant in, to one another in the <laughs> aftermath of that land. They did seem like they are having a good time there, though, Tropic, to be fair. Oh, exactly. I can only imagine the banter coming in back and forth, especially being in person and, you know... Purdue Puse being, having that seniority of having more of the seniors on the team and that grad a student as well. Definitely want to finish off the night with that win on Route 66. This is a good way for them to end. I'm sure they're happy with it, but NECC is not quite done yet. There is one more Overwatch match to be played. Don't go anywhere. It's North Central Timberwolves Overwatch versus the Murray State Gold right after this.
falling for the wrong time No, I'm not saying you should be mine I'm just promising you good times I just want to show you good vibes Don't trust men, don't trust woman Don't trust your heart, you never should have Cause you left your heart in LA You left your mind in Paris Traded emotions in for cocaine Maybe it's right but just the wrong time Maybe love something you won't find You've been searching for a long time Now you wanna move on with your life Don't trust man, don't trust woman Don't trust your heart, you never should have your mind in Paris, traded emotions and for cocaine, cause you left your heart in LA, you left your mind in Paris, traded emotions and for cocaine.
All right, everyone, welcome back. Here to finish the night out, you got Chase Nuclear Nukem, and I'm here joined by Tropic Theory. How are you doing tonight, Tropic? Oh, man, I just came back, came from a sister v. sister school with the Purdue, so I am amped up. I am ready, especially since, you know, we're seeing North Central Timberwolves versus Murray State Gold, and neither of these teams have had that win yet, so we are going to get a win tonight, and I'm sure both of these teams are just wanting that win oh yeah 100 percent. and both of these teams as you just noted neither have been able to quite pick up a game yet this season so mm -hmm. if you look on the side of murray state they have gotten a little bit more momentum they've at least taken a couple of games however north central technical college looking to come in tonight like you said take a w put it on the roster now before we were able to start the match tonight we did a little bit of investigative journalism on our end and talked over to the coaches, gave them some shout outs and, and had some questions for them. So my first question over to Coach Blaine at North Central Technical College was, you know, we're mid seasons. What's the team focus going into this game and how does that sort of differ from the start of the season? And, you know, his response was our focus this semester is mainly consistency and coordination. We're going into the season with an entirely new lineup. And last season we had veterans and we're able to pull upon the structure that we already had. Opposite to that, the season has had plenty of ups and downs while still trying to teach newcomers, build new strategies, and try things with a whole new roster. So North Central Technical College doing a little bit of mis or a little bit of a adaptation and configuration to get ready for this upcoming game. The second question I had for him was, you know, what's something you see as a coach that your team does well? And he said, you know, he thinks that his team is really key on sportsmanship and mentality. They're really good at that. They've had a Kind of a rough, sh shaky start to the semester, but they're going to move through it with grace. Now, what do you think is going to happen on the side of Murray State Gold? What, what's going on over there? Give me, give me the line in Tropic Theory. And you know, for that same, uh, so for those same questions, we are seeing a newer bit of 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 a team. You know, for Murray State for that mid season. You know, at the very beginning, they were really focused on that team cohesion because half their team was new. It's really easy to really get back to things when we're all veterans. But when we have new people in the competitive scene, you got to get that warmed up fills. So that is exactly what their focus is as they enter this middle part of the season. That They're going to be more focused in learning what comps best work with their players, especially since they've had these these three weeks leading up to this point to really build that synergy. So I'm excited to see what that synergy has been because three weeks is quite a bit of time to really start building that, not even including the tournaments that we were able to see, but that scrim time between. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's where they're going to bring it to the table. So if we look on the side of North Central Technical College, we'll see uh, Sloth on the Winston, Kawhi Jelly on the Diva, Drag Oreo on the Symmetra, Shadow on the McCree, Mason on the Ash, and Battle Angel on the Brig. Going up against Murray State Gold, we're going to see the Winston, the Diva on her, on the Tracer, Sky on the Farah, Myretha on the Mercy, and then Yori on the Moira. And moving into the point, we're going to see what they're able to do as both comps are sort of running a dive here. And, you know, my, my eyes go right to North Central, who are going to be trying to build for that Nano Blade. And Marie Stakehold doesn't really have that protection as we typically see, like, a Zenyatta. But <laughs> they get the first kill. New, uh... Yeah, that's crazy. They The D.Va was able to dive the Winston pretty easily. And now we're seeing the Chief himself on point ready to take it for murray state but north central technical doing what they can to push them off on her tearing apart Ooh. this back line for murray state gold you know there's going to be a lot of pressure coming in from shadow on that cowboy boots coming through uh you know especially since sky has that friend with me i my wreath to really keep him above and keep them uh keep them alive but you know north central has already scored Almost 30% up this point, and Murray State is just now getting this, but they have the ultimates to really be proactive for this next fight to continue building this percentage nature. Very true, Tropical. If, uh, you know, you get that initial touch, that initial take, like North Central Technical did, they're now able to sit back, and the next fight, as you look with the ults, is uh, 
It'll be a bit of a slugfest as we see a couple of the ults come out on Murray State's side. Sky going for the ultimate, but Drag Oreo is going to get the dash in, take the kill for North Central Technical, and that is going to be an even fight so far as Kawhi Jelly gets d mechs and they are fighting to hold this point. Murray State pushing North Central Technical College off of point and claiming their dominance here on Oasis. We're building up to that 50% coming through, but we have this Nano Blade. For this next fight for North Central, I'm sure Mason will be getting this here soon, that Nano Blade. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking to, uh, to Vertical right now to really deep, to really protect the team with that area effect bomb to potentially even get Durango, uh, you know, with that Nano Blade coming through. Yeah, it, anything could happen at this point. Oh, oh and we are going to see the massive drop come from the Winston, closing out any chance for North Central Technical College to get on point. But we are going to see the Winston alt try to push in himself, defend the back of point, diving on the D.Va. Not much is coming from this, so as the tanks are really just slugging it out against each other. As I say, that vertical is going to be able to take out Ash in the back line. Chief pushing to get a pick on this D.Va, and... Murray State, they're going to hold Tropical. We're at 90% and counting, and right now we're seeing that Sky's pressure from above is really working well with the synergy coming in from Chief and Vertical to really dive in on those really low targets already. It is up to Durango to potentially touch, but the Chief not doesn't even allow that. Yeah, that, that would be it, Chief, he says. Uh, <laughs> uh, taking, taking that point, that is going to be a huge lead for Murray State Gold going into the West. Rest of oasis as we're going to transfer over to the next map we're going to see a probably a bit of changes from both teams i'd like to see a little bit more of a brawl comp from north central technical college and I, as we're hearing this in from producers right now we are getting a technical pause from north central technical college tactical sorry oh not technical <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I chatted about how Murray State, uh, you know, we're really building on having this cohesion of new players into the scene versus our veterans. And I really am seeing that synergy coming through, you know, sky from above, having that, uh, having the help from Mercy is really putting pressure uh, onto uh, North, West, North Central right now. And, you know, again, those tanks are really just happily delving in on those low targets. And we are just seeing this aggression coming from Murray State Gold right now. Yeah, 100%. Watching Chief go in with uh, the ball and ulting in the doorway, preventing North Central Technical College to get back on point uh, was huge for Murray State. It really closed out the rest of the point. It felt like they're uh, playing with a lot of momentum on their side. If they're able to get an inch, they're able to really push it out. And it just seems like the Murray State tanks right now are more so causing um, a mess for North Central Technical College rather than the other way around. North Central Technical College is having a hard time getting in and able to stay in. So as we transition into new points and new environments, I'm really eager to see how they're able to adapt. And it looks like we are going to see a battle of the pharmacies coming through with Battle Angel and Durango joining their friends on the opposite side, Sky and Myri, to, with this pharmacy from above. But the difference in tanks is really interesting. You know, we're having mm. Sloth and uh, Kawaii Jelly be having that double bubble effect. And so Sloth could potentially have more protection for tanks and even Durango for that, uh, you know, for their ultimate coming in later in the game. Yeah, I really like on Murray State's side to see the pharmacy coming out from North Central Technical. It's going to be a little bit harder playing with that Ash of Mercy around. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Drag Wario did switch over to Farah, so there will be a double pharmacy. That's 100% true. Sloth, oh, oh no, getting pooped no. by Chief. Chief said, get out of here. This is my place. You know, Chief is just playing some bowling on that top bit right there. And again, we're just seeing this dominance with this synergy coming through from, uh, you know, Murray State Gold right now. Uh, they are just, they haven't, you know, North Central hasn't really been able to get their feet under them uh, to really stand against Murray State's aggression right now. Yeah, Dragorio was able to get a pick on my wreath, but it's not going to do much. We are seeing a couple of picks here and there from North Central Technical College. But it's not causing much within the overall parameters of the fight. Is Murray State's able to push in and 
destroy the entire team before the tanks were able to really cause a mark much on Murray State. As we're going oh! in, we're going to see a massive Tracer Bomb come out onto Mason. And that's going to seal the deal in terms of the push as they're going to dive in, take out Sloth. And now they'll have a Zarya to really peel for anyone. Kawhi Jelly's going to go down in the front line. That leaves the backliners to Tim for themselves. And they're going to have to go back towards base as Murray State just being a dominant and oppressive on this point. You know, once you have that Ana go down with Mason, you know, Battle Angel really isn't able to really focus her attention on Dragorio to really give that damage boost to be neck and neck to Sky and uh, Myri, you know? And so, again, the target prioritization coming in from Murray State Gold, I'm definitely seeing this synergy that's been built for the past few weeks. Okay, but we're seeing North Central oh! Central come in. Chief is going to take out Mason immediately. Man, Mason, Mason is having a hard time on this Ana, getting picked in the beginning of most of these fights, and that's leaving North Central in a very comparable position. They don't have all the heals that they need, especially having a Mercy that's just pocketing their Ana. Murray State is posting their dominance just through their picks at the beginning of the fight. The fight's over before it even starts. You know, I'm questioning if maybe Sloth should potentially change the D.Va. You know, that'll also mm -hmm. give more of a boost to get back to point, but also help with uh, Sky in the Sky, uh, you know, just pumping out so much damage. That DM could just be so beneficial on blocking out some of that. And as I do that, Sky actually goes down, Nuclear. Oh my gosh. Dragorio is going to take out both of the Pharmacy. They are still in this fight. North Central trying to take it with 99 left. And they are going to get some picks. However, Shadow is going to get taken down by Veracle. On her, looking for the pick on Mason. Going to find it. Battle Angel looking for the res on Shadow. And North Central coming back in this fight. It's looking like they're going to take this point. And they're saying, no, no, no. Not yet. This is ours. I'm happy. I was just going to comment. Oh, what? The res comes out? And Murray St. Gold is trying to do this, but... Nuclear! It is, they are only building ultimate charge, so I'm questioning that res in the end there, but we do have this opening ultimate that could come through for Sky. Uh, so I'm looking for Shadow right now. I'm looking for Shadow and Kawaii Jelly to really keep the team safe and probably Durango, or, or sorry, uh, Drag Oreo to take out that Pharah right now, potentially even be proactive in their ultimate to, to keep them ahead. I couldn't agree more, Tropical. On honestly, with North Central Technical College, they have three, two skies, one Farah Barrage, but it could be the worth as we are gonna see Sky drop it from above on top of Battle Angel. Drag Oreo gonna turn on the Sky. Honor looking for Sloth, and it is an all out flood. Slugfest as Kawhi Jelly is trying to get on my wreath as much as possible, but gonna get taken out by the Chief, and that's gonna be all she wrote for North Central Technical College as Murray State is going to take Oasis. You know, in that last fight, I did see a little bit of panic coming through with Mercy rezzing, um, but we're seeing this patience coming through, this this cohesion with their ultimates to really make these plays. And speaking of which, the Chief, the Chief was a primal person, but one of the main, uh, you know, forces, especially with that boot coming in, in that very beginning fight. Yeah, you could call... Uh chief primal for sure because I'm, I'm getting this in right now <laughs> and he's savage knocking him off the map telling him this is my space get out of here what a play from chief and i, I like i said mid set uh it's crazy looking at the tank line of murray state gold they are being so dominant and oppressive on top of north central timberwolves overwatch team they're not able to do much when their tank is in their back line and getting the picks on the healers before they even engage and that's a uh recurring theme that we saw the entire set on oasis now map two we're going to move into eichenwald and teams play much differently when you play in different environments so we're going to hit a quick intermission and we're going to be back in just a couple minutes for eichenwald
And we're back with more NECC Overwatch action on this beautiful Thursday, October evening. My name is Chase Nuclear Nukem, and I'm joined here by Tropic Theory. We're headed into Eichenwald, map two, in this uh, three-map process we got going on here for the Challenger Cyan Division for the Overwatch match tonight. It's North Central Technical Timberwolves versus Murray State Gold. Tell me, Tropic, what are we going to see in this game, too? You know, we were just talking off on our break right now, and one of Murray Gold's goals uh, for the past few weeks have been to really find out what their co team composition is. And I'm curious if this Ball Diva Pharmacy comp is what they built to be. Because, you know, these next, the map pool that we have this week, I can ball with Route 66 right after that. Those are definitely friendly ball diva maps as well as that pharmacy and right now north central they're definitely seeing north central struggle with dealing with sky in the air and so i'm honestly looking for north central to really rather than try to pharmacy alongside sky and my wreath to really target them but you know what we're not even gonna see the pharmacy potentially nuke <laughs> no wow yeah we are gonna see a massive change in both teams this is what i was expecting this is what i love to see like i said right before we went on break we can see a massive shift in how they're going to approach these maps based on the map type right we're we're, we're moving into a more payload style map so ntc moving over sloth is going to be on the reinhardt it looks like they're going to play more of a brawl style comp with the doom fist drag Oreo coming oh. out swinging with that fist uh, and looking on the other team sky is also going to be switching over to doom fist and if you haven't noticed already we're going to have rustic wood in match um on instead of mason we got the sub out mid set we're seeing murray state push in and oh, wow Lord. ntc was not even able to hold the choke murray state is just pushing in and dominating the point immediately it's going to be a back and forth that was sloth is able to get the charge on Veracle. kawaii jelly gonna take out on her though and sky is being a menace on point swinging left and right trying to take out ntc's front line oh Sky might actually, oh, just kidding. I was totally <laughs> thinking that he might have just held that alone, but I have to comment on Battle Angel. You know, these two differences in their support lines right now. Battle Angel can definitely put a, a, a pack a punch to North Central right now with those nades. We saw how uh, how important that nade was on the Chief. You know, no mm -hmm. Chief could have tickled everybody with that, that Tesla cannon. Uh, you know, that purple just really, just, oh! Nuke. Massive Earth Shatter coming through Sloth, trying to get a play on the back of the point, swinging everywhere, taking out everyone! 17 health! His healers are keeping him alive, and he's just trying and struggling to stay alive. NTC is likely going to lose the point here as Chief has that Tesla Cannon on the back line, swinging around as Sloth still alive on point i am amazed that ntc is able to hold as long as they are this is forcing murray to back off and i love this play from ntc they're switching up and adapting to the situation they're moving off of the back of the point they're letting murray state push in thinking that they have the advantage maybe even getting a singular pick and then tc comes out like a trap spider out of the woodworks taking them out multiple times they've now had to regroup twice two minutes left on the clock they're gonna push in with oh, five alts pick. this could be huge oh man yeah first pick comes out and oh my god that purple once again nuke coming through big stuff but doesn't even stop them as chief just juggles everybody around on point and 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 that is all she wrote as Murray State finally finds that opening to really push through, man. Wow. Uh, you know, I'm really looking at both Sky and Dra uh, Dra Dragorio right now because we're seeing whomever gets that first pick is really that initiator coming through. And then the beginning, we saw Dragorio really take that initiation and really come up on top. But in the end, you know, Sky really targeted, and that is where. We had, you know, Murray State Gold have that opening come through. Yeah, Sky is able to oh! add a lot of value as we're seeing the Graviton Surge come through. On point, Kawhi Jelly setting up a massive play for NTC. Dragorio pushing in on her, responding on the side of Murray State Gold, trying to keep them in on this push. And he's going to be able to find the kill on Ooh! top of Kawhi Jelly. That was a 
valiant effort from NTC, but it looks like Murray State is going to continue their aggressive push. Wow, we are seeing both teams come out of the gate swinging on the second map. Oh man, that's exactly right. And you know, I like the idea of Kawaii Jelly really utilizing that gravitation proactively. But again, you know, Otter changing onto that Reaper was just so powerful with destroying that shield. And again, the oh! are happening and the boom! Oh! This guy getting the massive boop on top of Sloth. Sloth is out of the fight and Sky is in. The Doomfist is down on top of Shadow. And these Doomfists are rampant. Whether it be Dragorio or Sky, they are both creating a lot of value for their team. Sky, more so, obviously, as Murray State has not stopped this push. Gas, all gas, no breaks. <laughs> oh my god, exactly. I'm not... We are at a four minute payload to really get to this last bit right now with this, this organized aggression coming in from Murray State. It's just really allowing them to just continue to push forward and the Chief has that Primal Rage and the kill feed is just all red new. It's, it, it sure is. They are pushing in with everything that they have and they are not stopping. NTC just has to back up and regroup at this point. There's not much they're going to be able to do by oh, getting staggered. Oh, oh, oh. What is this Mad Lab Miracle doing? Shattering in their base. Why? What is the meaning? Oh my lord. Someone call an ambulance. This is wild. This is crazy. Murray State is not stopping. NTC was looking so strong at the beginning. We are seeing the beat come out and the retaliation on point with 3.26 meters left. Why Jelly throwing something down slot, swinging away. Vericle doing the same on point and it is an absolute slugfest to take the second point of Eichenwald here tonight. I don't know if they're gonna be able to do it. They're not, NTC is going to hold. Now, two minutes and 55 seconds left on the clock. Will Murray State be able to take it? You know, we're definitely seeing that spawn advantage coming through for NTC right now, where they're <laughs> able to have a little bit of breathing room as, as soon as they got that first kill to really come back out, really, really have that organized target focus. But Murray State Gold have these opening ults that can be game changing. Uh, oh, 100 game changing as we're seeing the ult come out from Sky. Vericle coming in with the Death Blossom. Sky, the Doom Fist is coming down, and that is sealing the deal. The DPS of Murray State are taking it for them on this push of Eichenwald. My dear lord. Wow. The aggression coming out from Murray State is electrical. Uh, you know, I am just speechless right now because just. We saw that aggression come forward with Oasis and just this new level of of patience and you know they were able to really cope past that mental shift where NTC had you know that leg up at that very beginning but Sky and you know I mentioned it before Nuke that mm -hmm. it was a fight between Drag Oreo and Sky and in that end that initial pick that Sky got Oh man, that was just the perfect opening to really utilize those ultimates. It sure was, and it looks like we're going to get a pause coming out. Is uh, they're probably, you know, tactical pause <laughs> coming out, probably uh, reevaluating what they're doing here. I now I will say, Murray State has been rolling this set. They are moving and grooving. I don't think it's over for NTC. I think NTC can pull this together. I think that they really need to take a step back. And they need to reevaluate their synergy with each other. You know, we were talking about that earlier. Both teams working on their synergy as they've had a lot of disequilibrium going into this fall season. A lot of changes. And if I look over at the sheet for uh, Murray State and NTC on the side of Murray State, oh, on the side of Murray State, they do have a lot of freshmen, four freshmen on their team going into the season. And I look up at NTC and it's the same. They both have a lot of freshmen on this roster, a lot of disequilibrium, and each team deals with that differently, right? So I think that if NTC is able to pull uh, pull back and regroup and get those two to three man groupings that they need to turn around when their healers are getting dove in, for instance, I, I really think that they can turn this set around. And I, I, I think it can be a very... Uh, oppressive push on their own end as, as they're looking now to get the offense and i like what i'm seeing on the ntc side we saw a lot of success <clears throat> with our last match with may and especially in that first choke point where i 
you can so I shouldn't say so easily, but you can definitely deviate that spam damage uh, that initially comes through to really rotate around to that right area safely for the team and then battle in that open area. But, you know, I'm looking at Marie Stay Gold and we are seeing that pharmacy come through. We're seeing a lot of spam damage with oh. Otter on that Torb. Uh, and, and you know, Chief and Vertical really trying to stay, hold, hold, their, hold their ground with these very stationary tanks. Yeah, NTC staying on the Brawl Comp. I don't know if they're going to see the success that they're going to want from this push. However, that May, Drag Oreo on the May, and Shadow on the Reaper could add a lot of value. As they're looking to push in, the wall's going to go up on the right side as they flank left. The rest of the team for Murray State is setting up, though. Like you said earlier, with them having a spam damage team, you want to get in there fast, and you want to just be able to burst them down as fast as possible. Oh. Slot going in, the wall's coming up, saving them from the Torb turret. They are looking to get the push on point. We are going to see the dash in from Slot. He's sitting at 50 health. The tank's doing everything that they can, but it's not going to be enough. Kawhi Jelly turning on my wreath, pushing on the back of the point. NTC trying to stabilize as they're taking on point. Chief doing everything he can to turn around for the rest of the team. I don't know. This could swing either way in the way that we're seeing it now. And, you know, I like the fact that Shadow immediately changed off on off from that Reaper to that Soldier because if I was Maurice in that, in that Maurice State goal team, I would say, yes, those are the DPS I want to really not counter this pharmacy in the sky. Uh, but again, you know, we're seeing so much spam damage coming through from Sky when sh they already have that ultimate to really be proactive and keep ahead in the fight. Oh, wow. The speed boost coming in and they are coming in immediately. We're seeing a retaliation from NTC as this is a organization that I've not seen from them before prior to this push. They came in speed boosted together and then played around the May Reinhardt combo. They're definitely taking this with only one left to defend from Maurice Murray State Gold. If we can see more organized and communicative plays like that from NTC, we're going to see a complete flip-flop on the set. Exactly. You know, Redwood, Russ Redwood is going to be that key player because, you know, the Chief and Vertical, those shields are stationary, you know? So if the team or comes as a group past those shields, those those haze can go down and that's where it is. And also, Kawaii Jelly on that target prior prioritization, you know, Myreef was one of the first people to go down and that is when they have that opening with Sky being without that damage, am that damage uh, amplification in the end. Yeah, Kawhi Jelly, these grabs from them has been crazy. We're seeing a massive Graviton Flux come out, but it's not going to be enough as the Coalescence from Battle Angel is going to be able to keep all of NTC alive. Murray State with the Bongos coming out up top, trying to get a pick. They're not able to find much yet as the Earth Shatter comes out. It's going to take down a couple as the barrier comes up a tad too late. We're seeing another grab come out from Kawhi Jelly, and is it going to take out enough on Murray State's side? I think so. NTC getting the push here as Rusted Wood is able to boot on her off the map. This is a really good push from NTC, and we are seeing an entirely different synergy come out from their roster. And we're definitely seeing Marisa Gold realize that this composition is not going to work with them. We're seeing the changes come through to potentially really... Uh, actually, they're not even going to hold this that last point. They're going to give it away. 440 on the clock, but this change in composition will really... Their, their target goal right now is to hold this corner and burn down time, but they got to be careful for Drag Oreo right now. Yeah, oh wow. Getting bursted, sloth, almost dying in the front line. But it's not going to quite happen. The orb is coming up. Oh, and the blizzard is coming out. Oh, Get your jackets. Huge. It's snow time as it's taken out multiple. The snowman combo with shadow on the visor is tactical and taking down all of Murray State. That is huge right now. My rest, rest, rest Redwood is the person I am looking for right now to keep them alive. And that is exactly Ooh. what they need. That, oh. Oh, they're gonna touch in time it's Barely. so close and just like we saw on the same offense not 10 15 minutes ago it's coming down to a slug fest right in front of the walls and i can walk as a massive earth shatter comes out the coalescence is going to match both teams pushing but murray state looking like they're stabilizing as they're getting not one not two but three picks ntc needs to play around each other here's Kawhi jelly goes down and it looks like they're going to have to regroup 
Wow, three minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. NTC almost sealing the deal with over a minute in the bank time more than Murray State. Oh man, that's on advantage coming in clutch for Murray State right now. But North Central has plenty of time to really have this dry push, get their ultimates to really push in. And Kawaii Jelly and Sloth are so mm. close. So if they're able to get that, be proactive. That is their opening pick, but Honor gets Ooh. Sloth! Oh yeah, on her massive pick on Sloth. And then he's turning on Shadow. This McCree said this town ain't big enough for the all of us. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wow. honestly, right now, Otter is definitely looking for that, that shield to consistently go down. And Sloth is having a little bit of trouble there since, you know, Honor, Honor is really taking these angles that are very beneficial for the team. But I like this pick that Shadow is choosing to make with Junkrat coming through, really going with that spam damage. And oh, the slot starts it off. Oh, the Earth Shatters are going to come out from both sides as they're swinging at the edge here. Oh, no, no, Sloth is not going to use this. It's just yeah. coming out from Chief. Murray State pushing them back. NTC recognizing they don't have this fight. It's not theirs to take. No reason to waste their ults. We're going to regroup mm -hmm. and push again. I actually am not sure how I feel about Shadow on Junkrat because the spam damage is going to just feed Varicle. Now, Varicle does have grab. And they might be able to play around it with on her almost having high noon. It's about that time. It's 11.55. Almost oh! 11.59 as the grab comes out from both teams. The Reinhardts are not able to get in. The Blizzard is coming through and the backfield just briefly keeps them alive. It's not going to be enough though. It's North Central dominating and eliminating all of the members of Murray State one by one. And you know, Shadow has that junk, that tire right now, and that is who I am looking at. You know, oh. I like the fact that NTC is really being aggressive, really trying to hold these spawn doors, and as you said, it is noon here! Oh, the Earth Shatter's coming up from both sides, though, is going to be massive, as the backfield oh, is huge. launched right in the middle of the fight, too. Lucio trying to stay on top, as you predicted it! Sloth and Shadow are gonna push them off, and we're gonna see NTC take it. Only a minute and 15 left on bank time, but they did exactly what they needed to. They backed up, as they've tried to do before. They reset, and they re-engaged with everything they had, and it happened to be enough. This is why I love payload tropic because you're able to see a lot more of that back and forth action on offense and defense rather than control where it's sporadic bursts of fighting right it feels like payload is a little bit more strategical in that way where you have to play around the environments as the payload moves dynamically through the map you know ntc is really coming out a whole new team for this map oh is this i think we are actually going to get another tactical pause potentially oh. um I have to comment on Drag Oreo right now. That May is just such a good pick. You have the area effect of that blizzard as well as that wall, and we are just seeing those advantages come through for the team. We we saw how the, there was a, a, a battle of the Graviton Surges, but then right after, we had Drag Oreo with that blizzard, and that was, the, that was the winning play that really gave them that momentum to push forward, and then Sloth comes through with that shatter that was team wiping oh man hey hey, hey drag Oreo, if uh you're watching this in vod review with your team uh, that uh that that blizzard was pretty cool cool <laughs> blizzard get it cool may <laughs> oh okay okay i'm done i'm done i swear um kawaii jelly also i noticed you uwu those grabs are crazy for ntc they're able to get a lot of value and get the pushes that they needed to finalize the beginning of that map now as both teams sit with 3-3 three, three, nor ntc is going to be on the offense again looking to take point they're going to get a couple of freezes early but they're not going to be able to capitalize shadow getting on top of the payload trying to get a pick and we are going to see murray state back up a little bit do the trap door trick that we saw ntc do on defense earlier you know that was a little bit of an interesting wall that ntc did choose to do uh you know that can just be such a powerful ability to utilize if the team is all in one direction but that split was a little oh, a little no. different but that is exactly what it wants to see yep and we're gonna see the reaper jump on the diva take it out immediately baby divas now in the mix we are gonna see the dash come through and sky oh. is going rampant in that back line Someone call the Ghost Rider because never mind, it's right here. Yep, yep. The, the shots are coming through. <laughs> Murray State is able to take the hold, and Sky just being the, the embodiment of death on that Reaper. 
Oh, and the stun. I'm not even sure if anybody can actually touch Nuke. Oh, there it is. Shadow comes through. They're coming together. Yes, Rustic was did a great job of grouping up everyone together. Oh, we're going to see space created by the Earth Shatter, but counter space created on the side of NTC with the Blizzard. They're going to push on the point. The picks are a little bit even as the High Noon comes out. It's that time. It is going to find Drag Oreo. Murray State only looking to take two now off of the scoreboard. Sloth doing everything that he can to stay on payload as everyone else is coming into the mix. The Diva Bomb is going to come oh. out, and that is going to be the nuclear ending to round three. You know, we saw quite a bit of success initially with that May, but I have to say, Maurice Gold really found a turnaround, really seen that front focus that NTC had and uh, you know Sky was able to just sneak around and we saw like you said destruction from the back and <laughs> that is what really tore the team up though that focus was in front of what D Dragorio was trying to wall off you know it really allowed Sky to just rip through their back line and once those supports are down it is really hard to recover Yep, especially on a payload map like this where, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know, you gotta walk a little bit, get your morning workout <laughs> in, power walk to get back to point. It's a little bit difficult when you're a uh, little grandma on a, you know, getting your cane and trying to make it all the way back to point. Yes, it does take a little bit of time. I'm really interested to see what Murray State does for their offense here, Tropic. I'm seeing the drunk rat come out from Sky, and Sky has proven, you know, captain of this roster that he is ready to take on anything in his way. And we're seeing a lot of versatility in the picks. And I'm interested to see how this Junkrat will play out. Oh, we're seeing the rest of the team switch a little bit. Chief going on to the Winston uh, with some monkey business. And Varicle staying on the Reinhardt. Sky going back to the Doomfist, actually. So they are looking to just tear apart the back line. As they have a bit of a dive support line as well. Yeah, that's really interesting, but I like the NTC support line we have, you know, Red, Red, Rust Redwood will be really beneficial with that res. We're going really heavy healing and we're also going really heavy damage for that spam, but this could also make a perfect opening for Marise Gold to go to their favorite pharmacy uh, to really rip Shadow. Uh, you know, that is going to be really hard to, to do so much damage if you have a fair in the sky. Oh, 100%. But... It looks like they're not really going to have that problem. Yeah. Drag Oreo playing on the Hanzo. And that Hanzo may be enough to shred through the front line of Murray State. Ooh. Murray State playing on the front of the point. Looking to get the pick on the Reinhardt. NTC cannot afford to lose their front line. As they need to peel for Kawhi Jelly and Slop. The Earth Shatter coming through. It's going to find as it's equal, true and true. Drag Oreo, Kawhi Jelly Ooh. knocking out players of the other team. Drag Oreo. Getting a massive play for NTC oh. on this defense. Oh wow. my god, Drag Oreo really holding, holding still. I apologize, Drag Oreo. It, you can hold your ground as. Oh man, you know what? I'm just. Uh, I, I am speechless at the moment. <laughs> that's a. Oh, that, oh let's ge face. Geometry! Geometry! As we're seeing the angles come out, get your protractor, your notebooks, your pins, because class is in session. Drag Oreo is here to teach the maths. <laughs> and that's exactly what you want from your DPS right now to get that initial pick. Yori being down is just going to. Oh, my oh, 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 God! Miracle oh, coming in as the battlefield's coming down, Murray State is playing at their own pace and the unaltered aggression comes through as they push on point. This is going to be a war that I'm not sure nor NTC is going to be able to defend against Kawhi Jelly taking out the, the chief, but I don't think it's going to be enough. All of Mary State oh. is still there. Never mind, it's still a back and forth. It's an absolute slugfest as both teams are fighting for this icon wall point. Oh my gosh, right? Sh Shadow comes through with that Riptire and that might be all they need with those healers, the support's going down. I don't know, Sky was able to take out Rustic and Sky's now taking out Shadow. Sky coming in with the menace on point and that's not what NTC was expecting. They thought they only had one person left and Ardor comes in with the Death Blossom. Murray State is gonna take it and they are going to be your Eichenwald champions in this series. Otter changed in that last minute 
and still was able to build up for that ultimate. I just can't believe that, but Sloth! This, oh, actually, this was not the shatter I was thinking of. It was actually the shatter that just happened right now. Oh my gosh. Such big plays. Swinging. If, 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 if I were to call Sloth, you know, on, a, on an average Thursday evening and, and ring and say, hey, you know, uh, how's it going tonight? What, what are you doing? The only response I'm expecting is swinging. Because he be swinging. That was a great play of the game from Sloth. And Murray State showing. <laughs> his production is saying that it was bussing. And I could not agree more. Murray State doing everything that they can to keep their lead in the series. I got to hand it to NTC, though. That was a oh, much yeah. closer game to, and the fight really came out. Drag Oreo really getting the picks that they needed for NTC. The front line doing much better. Also, got to hand it massive props to Russ Redwood throughout that series, doing a lot of work on that Lucio to get the team in and keep them alive in those fights. You know, I also have to comment that one of their strengths that their coach said on the NTC side it was their ability to really recover mentally and you know overwatch can be such a mental exhausting game sometimes especially you know when you have sky coming through from the air and then uh with some fists with that doom fist and we saw NTC's ability to really reset mentally and come forward and have that patience in the end we're definitely seeing a new team with this uh synergy i'm really seeing the synergy that has been built with ntc and i'm really excited to see what they have in store for us on route 66 after we take a small break I see the lies that take the green inside of the years that you're into me. You think I'm cool, you think you're wrong. I've seen this all before, and no, I won't take long. I see the lies that take the green inside of the years that you're into me. You think I'm cool, you think you're wrong. I've seen this all before, and no, I won't take long. And you know I sleep, and it shouldn't be who you sleep with. And welcome back. And here we are, map three, Oasis, as we got NTC versus Murray State here to finish out the night. I'm Chase Nuclear Nukem, and I'm joined here by Tropic Theory. Tropic, I gotta hear it. What are you looking for in this so or in this Route 66 map? Because I'm excited to see how NTC does. They did so much better on Eichenwald and really brought it back in. I really felt like they were mentally connecting or they maybe they were watching the broadcast but they they had to have taken a step back taken a deep breath and say all right we just got to be more adaptive in how we're playing around each other because Eichenwald was miles ahead of oasis you're completely right you know we definitely saw this patience coming through with the organized ultimates uh and also a lot like a step up step up coming in from their dps we have to give it to drag oreo really coming in clutch with that hanzo and i have to even comment that in those clutch moments is where we really saw ntc shine 
But then once we had a moment to breathe for Murray State, that is when we had that organized aggression come right out. And when I think of Route 66, my first thought goes to that holding very close in that train, uh, that first train cart. And I could certainly see Murray State Gold, if they are defending first, with how aggressive they've been, holding right there. Yeah, well... We're going to see if NTC has any tricks on this defense. We're going to see if we're going to see any Doomfists. Oh. No? No, we don't. So, get your kicks, because it's time to go to Route 66. Sloth, sitting on the Sig. We got Kawhi Jelly switching over to the Arisa. Drag Oreo back on the Hanzo. Shadow on the Kree. Rustic Redwood, or sorry, Rustic Wood on the uh, Mercy. And then Battle Angel on the... Baptiste. Sorry, Rust Redwood. I keep messing up how that looks on my screen. Um, and you know, it, go ahead. Nu Nuke, I am worried right now for NTC because we have these stationary, these stationary tanks that can really be pushed through from sky in the sky with that Pharaoh once again that we're seeing. So there is going to be a lot of pressure coming in from Drag Oreo to really be supported by Rust Redwood right now. Yeah, Oatmeal Boy sitting on the back of point, pushing the payload. Not something you often see a D.Va do, but they are back yeah. up and do it, doing the do. Um, as they're <laughs> going to hold on top of this gas station, push down really early, Sloth and Kawhi Jelly leading the charge for the rest of the NTC defense. Wow, we're going to see a lot come out from the Murray State offense, though, as they're just decimating the back line for NTC, moving to the front line, picking their teeth, and calling it a first point. And you know, this was my worry coming through. We have these two stationary shills with this brawl comp that NTC chose to do with against this very mobile tank line as well as that pressure from a sky. Uh, you can only do so much with that shield when, you know, that DPS as well as honor can really go right behind. But as I say that, Dragorio comes out clutch with that initial pick onto Chief. And this could be where things really start to even out potentially. Maybe. I don't know why NTC is repositioning in this way, though. They don't need to be up this far because Murray State was already able to take the point. They're just putting themselves in a really comparable situation if they were to get picked. We're seeing Sky getting barrotted by Drag Oreo's Storm Arrows. Not a good look, but what is a good look is this barrage coming through, picking two before Shadow sends them and says, bye, baby boo. And right now, I'm really hoping that Kawhi and Sloth do opt to change. You know, there's not so much that you can do with Orisa the ultimate uh, to really give that team that um. It would be a lot more beneficial to change to that D.Va potentially to really start also pressuring Sky with that Pharmacy in the Sky to help out Dr Dragorio and Shadow. Yeah, we are going to see the bat field come down in the background. Or sorry, the bat... Uh... And Lamp coming down in the background, trying to save the rest of NTC. Brodo is going to take out Sloth, though, and they're pushing through this front line. Murray State keeping the gas. It, it, I feel like they just opened up the door to the payload and put a brick on the gas pedal because it's not stopping. NTC doing everything they can, taking these off angles. Oh! Shadow and Drag Oreo. Once again, classes in session. They are bringing out the geometry books because they are here to get the picks for NTC and it is a good look. And again, Drag, Oreo, and Shadow really showing that clutch moment coming through. But again, Nuke, I am just worried for Kawaii Jelly and Sloth. Once again, we still have these very mobile tank line coming through. And oh, I thought that was potentially going to get somebody. No, they hid. They were Audi 5 thou. They said, no, siree. No bomb for me. Shadow and Drag, Drag Oreo taking out everyone on the Murray State backline, though, being absolute menaces. I feel like halfway through the series, they just fist bumped and something clicked because this <laughs> NTC defense is unstoppable at this point. And Drag Oreo and Shadow are hitting Flow State like no one else in this lobby right now. Oh man, and again, I think it's that mental that mental shift that they're really able to do. They were really able to play patient, come back, and really get the kills they needed. You know, really relying on Dragorio and Shadow to have that clutch moment. And Sky is just immediately deleted from the game from Dragorio again. I'm really thinking that Re Russ Redwood is really focusing more on supporting Dragorio and Shadow to... Oh, that's oh. the most 
on, on her just impaling that back line with the massive bomb and Murray State is back in this suddenly I feel like the DPS are really determining the pace of this game and swinging it in favor of either team at any point, more so than the tanks and the healers of both teams as of right now. We've not seen that throughout the rest of the series. However, in this push specifically on Route 66, all of this has come from either on her getting picks or Shadow and Drag Wario getting picks. Sky trying to add as much value as they can on on, on, on the pick, but it's not enough as we're gonna see the ults come out up top and Murray State is gonna push through to the second point. Oh Man, you know, we really saw again that organized aggression coming through from Murray State having you know Sky be that distraction while honor just really twist around getting that double pulse pulse bomb and that is exactly what really gave the momentum to Murray State to cap this next point nor NTC really opting to hold closer than I thought. I like the fact that they are backing around to that corner because that'll give them a lot more playroom for a drag Oreo to really utilize that dragon to split the team. There it is. I can see it happen, and there's the dragon coming out again. Drag Oreo has been using these dragons tactically throughout the rest of this game, really trying to push and split all of the Murray State team. Murray State opting to back up a little bit and try to get this payload up as much as possible. We are going to see the res come out from Rustic Redwood onto Battle Angel. NTC violently trying to hold this defense as Sloth is almost dead. The Bat Lamp is gonna come out, try to keep the team alive, but Oatmeal Boy is gonna chill on the sidelines, throw out a bomb, and let's see how many it gets. Oh, it is gonna take out Rust Redwood. Huge. That's huge for the Murray State team as they're gonna get Look to push here and get a couple more picks. Man, this is not looking good for NTC. That was a beautiful bomb coming in from Oatmeal Boy. If you're gonna get one person, Rut Mercy on that Red Westward on that Mercy is gonna be the person that you definitely want to get. And having that application matrix utilized from Battle Angel, that is gonna be quite unfortunate. And the Valk! Oh. Oh. oh wow, we are gonna see the Reinhardt ult on point. The dragons coming out again! As we're going to see Kawhi Jelly switch over to the ball, try to roll around on the point. But the stun's going to come out from on her. And that is going to seal the deal for Murray State Gold pushing on this Route 66. A minute and 22 left on that bank time. And I have to say that last point, we definitely saw that organized aggression coming through. And I think that Murray State Gold really really shines with this ball diva composition we saw that organized dive coming through with you know the chief and oatmeal boy really playing together and really having that target focus on those low targets that honor and sky really fell through you know we saw how their target prioritization shifted from to red rest redwood to then drag oreo those two that were pumping out so much damage, and of course, Rust Redwood being that mercy, being that prime person that you definitely want to get down. Man, and we're going to have another tactical pause coming <laughs> through right before the offense. I don't know. This is a very close Route 66. While NTC was not able to hold the line on defense, maybe as long as they wanted to, it did look a little bit better than that Eichenwald push before. So NTC showing they're able to adapt to the situation mm -hmm. every time something arises. Oasis was a, uh, was a little shaky. Then we got on Eichenwald and it was a little bit better. And honestly, this Route 66 push, while they still had a minute left, it was still a really solid hold. If they're able to get a really solid offensive push like we saw them do on Eichenwald, they might be able to turn this map in their favor. And you know, I'm also hoping that they really start to adapt with their character choices as well. I do think that they would have had a more solid hold on that first point if maybe we had different, more mobile tanks. You know, even when they had the Zarya Rhine coming through, at least they had that protection from that bubble to really protect and enable those DPS as well. We're definitely seeing a lot of pressure coming in from the DPS to really, I mean, we were, you know, those plays that are made from the DPS are really the opening for the whichever to shift the momentum that we're seeing between NTC and Murray State Gold. 
I'm telling you, the momentum shift is, uh, is is a paradigm and how this map is playing right now. The DPS on both teams are, like you're saying, causing that pace setting and that pace changing mid-set. Uh, man, I'm telling you, on her, getting these picks on this Tracer oh, has man. been massive. Same with Drag Wario on the Hanzo. I actually love it. You know, I, I got to say I'm a little bit of a Hanzo one-trick myself, so I love seeing the pick come through. We are going to see a bit of change come through, though. Is NTC running a dive comp oh. with a brick? Interesting. I don't know how that'll actually play out on offense, but between the Brig, the Ana, and the Soldier, there is a lot of healing there. If they're able to get in the backline effectively with Sloth and Kawhi Jelly, cause a little bit of disruption and put Murray State on the back foot, we could see a very uh, uh, hard to kill offense from NTC. Certainly, and you know, on the side of Marie State Gold, they have more lower healing. So, you know, I'm looking for, uh, you know, Kawaii Jelly and Slot to really target Brodo, and that would be potentially the demise of Marie State Gold and their opening they need to really collapse on the team. Wow, yeah, and they're already in as uh, they're, they're pushing through. We're gonna see the grab, or sorry, not the grab, the the Sigma try to hold on point. Yeah, the grab immediately. One minute in, here we go. No, no, no. Dra drag, uh, sorry, Drag Oreo is trying to push up, get a pick on the Mercy. It's gonna be close. It doesn't look like it's gonna be a cigar though, as they are gonna have to back up, get a different point on this flank. And again, we saw Brodo go uh, down immediately. We see this target focus coming in from NTC right now. And oh, you know, NTC has up their target focus right now, Nuke, because they are just have this momentum that is not stopping as we get that. S oh, just kidding. Wow. Oh, we got I, the payload. Yep, <laughs> oh, yep. there it is. Yes. Yep. <laughs> they, they got it. They got it. They got it. And oh. that's exactly what we like to see from NTC. They're doing mm -hmm. exactly what they're showing that they could with this comp. And I love to see that. I, it, it's like you said earlier, the versatility, the adaptability is what's going to define who is able to take this set. I got to say, these picks are a little weird. I'm not used to seeing this sort of dive comp come out from NTC, but they're really making it work and causing a lot of disruption on Murray State. Oh, and that is a Trag Oreo just bomb. casually getting due with the Tracer <laughs> Bomb. Okay, bud. <gasps> <laughs> and, and still, oh, the game hasn't even ended yet, or the fight hasn't even ended, Duke. <laughs> no, they're still going. Shadow, Shadow's now just popping a visor, and it's uh, NTC on the oppressive push here. Is Drag Oreo and Shadow are, are, are really starting to backpack this entire series. They showed it last uh, game, or last round, I guess I should say. And uh, it's, it's crazy what they can do with this Tracer and Soldier now what they were doing with that Hanzo early. And they have four four minutes on the clock to really push this, but oh. you know what, Chief has Chief, the Roadhog ultimate. Hopefully this could be it. No, but Drag Oreo comes again for the kill. Yeah, unfortunately it wasn't a whole hog, only a half hog. Didn't do as much as they wanted. NTC trying to make their push here as they have two meters left. And Drag Oreo once again, Getting around, zip sapping, and Murray State does not have their bug catcher. It's not enough to get this tracer. And you know, Murray State is really getting what they just dished out. We had these two not very mobile tanks coming through, along with that DPS that really allowed NTC to just move in with Sloth and Kawaii Jelly, and then drag Oreo just behind, getting these kills right now. So they have this momentum, and another. <laughs> oh! Got stuck in return, actually. Yeah, it is going to be a trade. Drag Oreo is able to take out the Lucio, but is going to get killed by the McCree in response. Chief in the small room trying to get a cheeky little dash. Not able to find much, though, as Sloth doing anything but lazy, trying to get in the background. Remech as on her is going to be able to take out Rust Redwood, and NTC is looking to back off and regroup before they lose any more to the numbers. And that is perfect because they have these ultimates that they can really use to be proactive. Murray State Gold just changed their composition so they know at least that they probably will not have the ultimates that they probably want. So this is going to be the mm -hmm. prime opportunity to really push in, be aggressive, and there it is. The ball rolls through. Yep, and we're going to see the Brig all come through as well. The Bat Field pop out and the Nano Boost on the point. 
but they're kind of just playing around these ultimates. They're not really aggressing with them. As I say that, Dragorio in the back line is going to take out my Wreath and on her on Kawhi Jelly. A trade for a trade oh, as they're looking to push in and end this point. Russ Redwood sitting on the back of the payload looking to reposition to add that much needed heals for the team. The Reaper trying to get in position as Sky is now on payload getting healed as much as possible. But Battle Angel is going to seal the deal as NTC with two ultimates on the door of Murray State's base. Oh man, you know, we have the spawn advantage coming through from Murray State Gold. Ooh. The bomb needs to get somebody and it gets Battle Angel. This could be what they need to hold. Yeah, Battle Angel did not want that. That was so bad for her. Unfortunately, she was trying to get around the payload. Wasn't able to get there in enough time. Hawaii Jelly pulling through. D mecking Oatmeal Boy. Then following up with the kill. On her is going to fall to the mine. And that is round two with three minutes left on the clock. Three to three for both teams. And the tension has not been higher this entire series. As NTC are showing they want to seal this out with one on the board. Nuclear, where was this dive composition earlier in the map? The straight, the force is so strong with NTC right now with this dive composition. I'm not sure if maybe they were just saving it for the end, if they just really like playing this uh, dive composition on Route 66. This is, this is such an open area, but this is exactly the aggression that I, I wanted to see. And now it's going to be very interesting with Murray Say Gold going back to their own dive composition with you know the change of de of the supports yeah the supports are going to change up a little bit they're going back to that pharah throwing the sky on the pharah and i am really eager to see how both of these dives play around each other i really feel like if you put two rats in a cage and put cheese in the middle and watch them run around and fight over the cheese and jump off the side of the cage that is exactly what we're seeing here because there's not going to be any way to determine and look at one individual part of this fight, they're going to be all over top of each other. And to your testament earlier, Tropic, I don't know who suggested <laughs> they run the Diva Ball Tracer with the, the Brig and Ana. I, I, I don't know who it was, but it's working. You know, Overwatch is all about finding chinks in the enemy's armor. And they found that chink in Murray State armor to be that dive composition, and it seems to be working for them extremely well. Oh man, it is definitely working for them. As the brawl starts right now, Nuclear with Kawhi Jelly trying to roll? Uh, <laughs> spin to win? <laughs> Try, trying to get a little bit of the spin to win, knock him off the map, and uh, seal one for the, for the environmental kills, but wasn't able to get quite anything this Pharmacy is going to be terrible for Dragorio, as Dragorio is not going to be able to get much value in the back line when this oh. map is so open. Shadow able to take out the Pharmacy on their own, though, immediately causing value for NTC on this defense. They just got to wait for a couple members to get back, and this could be a solid hold. They have 20 seconds left, and Murray State is, like you said, pulling out all stops in the aggression. Oh man, Shadow goes down and that is really Murray State's gold really opening to continue pushing right now. That is when we're going to see that organized aggression once again with Battle Angel only only one right now to really try to hold. Oh, oh thank god they go back. <laughs> yeah, zero seconds left though. Murray State is pushing. We are hearing the ball alt come out and I don't know if they're going to be able to get through the minefield. Kawaii jelly ooh coming on point pushing as much as possible <laughs> as drag oreo is able to get in the back line and try to get a pick shadow is going to take out sky's echo before they're able to add any value ultimates are coming out left and right oh, two huge. are going to take out as a massive diva bomb and then a remake tears through all of ntc murray state keeps this alive as they take this first point this could be terrible for ntc as they have three minutes on the clock but this choke is everything, and Murray State could really shift the momentum here. And you know, right now, NTC have the ultimates to be able <laughs> to do this. Although Otter just took down Shadow, that we have the other folks with those ultimates are the ones that I am looking to right now. And Murray State Gold does not have anything right now, Nuclear, so this could be exactly what they need to get that team wipe. 
Yeah, it's very true. NTC does have all the ultimates, and they are pulling them out. As Sloth is going to respond with a Diva Bomb of their own. Take out two on the side of Murray State. Looking to take out the ball. This could be it. Kawhi Jelly is taking out a few, though. Sloth adding all the value, and that is going to be it. Kawhi Jelly and Sloth really pulling it through through NTC on the defense on round four. Man, oh, or sorry, round three, I guess, technically, but on the fourth point. Now as we're switching back to Murray State, they're going to be on the defense. NTC is going to be on the offense, and NTC has three minutes on the clock. If this dive comp works how they want it to, which it did thrive a lot on offense, and they find themselves back on offense, this could be in their favor pretty heavily. They just got to get past the door and a couple of feet, a little nudge, if you will. And, you know, they have just shy of what they would have had in a normal iteration of starting the map. So plenty of True. time to really get past that. You know, getting that first point could be, in a different scenario, could be game-changing. But with having that time bank, it is 100% doable for NTC right now. And I have to also mm -hmm. give them props that right now they are doing a great job at really poking at Murray State Gold's, like almost, uh, they did really well at countering those flying characters. You know, Murray State yeah. Gold thought that they could just go in with that pharmacy, with that echo, and Shadow said, absolutely not. I got your number. <laughs> Shadow said, uh, that ain't it, Chief, and shut down <laughs> all that he could on Murray State. Completely agree with you, Tropic. As wow, Murray State really did get it, trying to get the offensive hold here, trying to uh, stuff NTC in their spawn. NTC is not going to have it though. Drag Oreo is going to take out the bat uh, lamp immediately on her, trying to get back on Kawhi Jelly, but Drag Oreo finding a kill in the back line. Chief is going to respond by taking out Rust Redwood, and NTC finds themselves in a 4v4 situation. Sorry, 4v5 situation. Wow, massive on an eight coming Huge. out. And that is going to create a lot of space for NTC, pushing Murray State back, and they are now in the danger zone on this first point, right around this first choke, not where they want to find themselves, as NTC is able to wipe. But exactly what Murray State wanted, right? They wanted to buy some mm -hmm. time because now they're able to regroup and get to the last choke before NTC is able to push it to that point. And they are actually swapping it up with Chief going on to that Winston. And also we're Ooh. seeing a spit of Sombra coming through. It seems like Kawaii Jelly is causing quite a bit of ruckus for them. But Brono goes down and that is going to be major! Yeah, that's going to be huge with the Tracer Bomb. Once again, Drag Oreo just being a menace in this backline with the Tracer. <laughs> the Evil can evil themselves. Sloth getting a remit kill. That's like the second or third this set. Sloth the Mad Lad Shadow coming in with the Tac Visor. Really shutting down Murray State. Murray State has no choice but to back up because they do not have the resources to fight this. Oh. They're going to turn and burn onto Sloth, though. That could be a really bad situation for NTC, especially if they're able to get there in time. They're going to push around the corner, but it's not going to be enough. A minute and 20 seconds left on the clock. NTC now needs mm, the aforementioned little nudge to get it to that point. And the spawn advantages are not in the favor of Marie Stay Gold right now. And they just need to kill a couple folks, a Moira and then Ball. That is all they need in that battle eagle Ooh. once again with those huge nades. And Chief trying to get the angle oh. here for the rest of the team, popping them up. Is there going to be any follow-up from Murray State? I don't think they're in position to do it. Chief is going to fall. Alati May comes out, and that is it. We're not even shutting off the lights. The Sombra doesn't have the chance. NTC is taking Route 66. Get in the car. Pack your things. We're calling it a night, and we're going home. Oatmeal Boy, take us out. Oh my gosh, NTC. You know, we definitely saw this evolution of them from each and every map's that nuclear. And in this last my map, this organized aggression that I was commenting initially for Murray State, we definitely saw the <laughs> NTC just really coming hard in the end there. Drag Oreo put, pumping out so much damage. And I have to give kudos to both Drag Oreo and Shadow for really, really countering what Murray State Gold thought was their, their, their playing card with those flying characters in the end. Yeah, Murray State Gold did win the set. However, I can't lie. 
NTC won my heart in that game three because that was nothing short of impressive coming out and playing adaptively on that comp that I've not seen very much of at all was kind of a, a niche play but they once again found the chink in Murray State's armor and was able to capitalize effectively Tropic I gotta know who's your player of the game oh man you know I have to give it to the sky you know there was Quite a bit of, I mean, honestly, it's between Sky and Drag Oreo. You know, both of those, both of those DPS were really going at it. And we had commented even early on in the series that whomever had those kills to initiate really dictated the momentum of how that fight was going. 100%. That, that is the best summary that I can give, Tropic. You're 100% right. The DPS in the set really determined the pacing and the momentum between Sky on Murray State side or Drag Oreo on NTC side. They really set the pace. And that's a testament because on Murray State side, on her was putting out the damage this set, as was Shadow on the yeah. side of NTC. But wow. We've had an impressive, what what is it now, six, seven hours of Overwatch this <laughs> evening? You should come catch us and the rest of the Overwatch crew every Thursdays here on the NECC channel. It is a great time. The casters are nothing short of energetic, fun, and caring, genuine. Love these people. It's a great time. Tropic, take us home. And you know what? Not only do we have Overwatch, but tomorrow we will actually, NECC will be kicking it off with League of Legends as well, or continuing the series of League of Legends. So do not miss that. We have to give props to our production, making the magic happen behind the scenes. Call me Shelton, as well as Michael Martinez. Couldn't do it without y'all. So just kudos and everything in between. But like my friend Nuclear said, it is that time to wind down. So thank you all for tuning in. Hope you all had a great day and we will see you with some more Overwatch next Thursday starting at 5 p.m. E